the tornado warning is now coming out. Let's go back out to Chris. Chris, your video right there, your reporting just uh, brought in the very first tornado warning of the evening. So, Chris, want to know how valuable you are and our entire team out here on the ground watching these and your reports. But, Chris, give us an update on what you're seeing. Okay. Uh, tornado just crossing the road. We are on the road just to the, it's one mile west of Tuttle, and we're about three miles south. Uh, definitely a tornado rotation was all the way to the ground. Jason, we need to go now. This is it right uh, here. Yeah. You can see it just crossing the road straight ahead of us. That's going to go to the west of the town of Tuttle if it stays on the ground, but it is about, um, they're crossing... Yeah. Three miles south of um, let's get a two box up. of uh, Highway 37. The two box up right now, if we can, because I need to keep up Chris's video, but I also got to show exactly where this is and who's in the path of the tornado warning. Again, very important. Let's put the radar up, and then we'll also keep Chris Lee's shot up on the left-hand side as well. Okay, but want to show you the latest right now with our tornado warning. Again, very first tornado warning. This is going to be for northern Grady County coming up to Mustang. This is going to be a, uh, this is going to be moving up to a very, very slowly at about 15 miles per hour. So this is right in front of Chris. Let's go back out to Chris. Chris, how does it look? Yeah, it is still on the ground. You can see the rotation. I've zoomed in on the very base of it. It's kind of gone behind the trees. Okay, Jason, we're going to go now on that road that goes to our north. We're going to try to get around these trees here. Last I saw, the tornado was still on the ground, and it, uh, as you said, north. Uh, it crossed the road, so it's got a little bit of eastward movement to it. Uh, it crossed from, from the west side of the roads, from the west, yeah, from the west side of the road to the east side of the road. Still, uh, still headed north. Uh, we did see, though, that there, there's a little bit of debris with it. It's not a real strong tornado in terms of I, the power lines are not uh, not down uh, that we have seen, and and uh, not seeing a lot of damage and things that it goes over trees and stuff. But we were, as the circulation passed over us, uh, very very gusty winds, uh, you know, blowing side to side, you know, well over, well over uh, 70, 80 miles an hour, uh, just in the periphery where we were. So uh, it is, okay, we're coming up, coming up on it. Slow down, Jason. Okay, I can see some debris flying through the air oh, just yeah. to the right side of the road. Yeah, we definitely, see, yeah, Chris, we see that, by the way. And so, again, this is a tornado doing damage right now. This, If we can put the, uh, let's go over to the radar real quick. Got to show exactly where this is and who's impacted by this. But again, uh, this is going to be right here. This is going to be just north of Bridge Creek Road. Um, this is going to be in Grady County. This is going to be just about two miles west of Bridge Creek. There it is on the left-hand side of your television screen. There is uh, where you see that red and that green couplet right there. This is our very first tornado warning of the evening. That's the tornado. Zoom on out here just a little bit, put a track up to the north, show everyone where we are, but that's a tight couplet lifting up towards Mustang. This is not moving very quickly, 15 miles per hour. Let's go back out to Chris because, Chris, this is headed right towards Tuttle. Tuttle, in your tornado shelter right now, innermost room of your house. Chris Lee, how's it look now? Well, we're between some uh, trees right now, but you can see it there. Off. It's, it's off to our right right now, um, and it is uh, it is headed. Uh, it's got a little more eastward movement to it because it's now east of the road. But, yes, it is about uh, – it's coming up on the road that will be two miles south of Highway 37, uh, the road from that, that goes right out of Tuttle. And as you know, that is a populated area. There are houses and all kinds of businesses along that road. Um, it is still on the ground, as near as I can tell. Yeah, it's we see. It's not it. got a condensation. It, it's 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 still it's all wrapped up in rain. Uh, so it, it's you just can't see it unless you're right next to it. Yeah, Chris, we right definitely and, and Chris, just a heads up. You know what we're seeing right now and uh, what you see. I mean, we can clearly see it. We can definitely see it. that's a tornado right there. So Tuttle again. This is moving from the south up to the north, 15 miles per hour. That's the, torn that's the tornado on the left-hand side of your television screen. Here's a tornado right here. That's uh, one, two miles south of Tuttle, lifting up to the north. Again, tornado warning. There's the tornado right there. Again, Chris is reporting right here is the reason why this tornado warning was issued. Chris spotted it. So uh, it just goes to show you, you know, just how important this 
this storm is right now and what our chasers on the ground are providing to all of us here at home again uh, just cannot cannot hit the message hard enough about uh, the, the, the type of storms that we have out there. They're wrapped in rain. Be very careful. I understand how Oklahoma is. You hear a tornado warning, you're in the tornado warning, you want to go out and look at it. But Chris Lee is showing you exactly what you need to know and what you need to see. And that's indeed a tornado right there. It's rain is getting basically spinning around this thing. It's wrapped in rain, but Tuttle, you're in your shelter. Bridge Creek, this will stay away from you. Now, here's what I'm watching. If this storm strengthens, there's a chance it might begin to turn to the right. So keep that in mind. Chris, you have a crystal clear shot of this tornado. Chris, how's it look from where you are right now? Yeah, it is definitely still uh, rotating very hard. It's not got the same, <laughs> again, I mean, we've got all this rain, and I, it's, it's halfway between. No, it's, it's definitely got, it's still still on the ground. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's moving a little uh, east of due north now in the mile section between a mile and two miles south of Highway uh, 37. Uh, in case we need to get up to the next road that we turn left. Um, and as you can see from the from the heavy heavy rain, it rain all the way around this thing, so it's very difficult to to say. We we went through the path where it crossed the road. The power lines flash, and and uh, and the lines arc, but the lines stayed intact. So that's kind of the good news. It, on the on the on the spectrum of tornadoes, this is a fair. This is a weak. Yeah, and so Chris, by the way, your picture's coming in, uh, your audio is coming in and out, but what Chris is saying right there is that uh, basically on the spectrum of tornadoes, at least as of right now, it's not a very strong tornado, but it's definitely a tornado. And so in knowing that as it gets darker, and so it's 7.06 right now, every single minute that goes between now and about 8.30, the, uh, the dynamics are going to increase for this tornado strength. And so this is the very early stages right now, but on the left-hand side of your television screen, that's the tornado. It's thin earlier. It was a bit thicker. That's a, that's the circulation right there. That is a tornado. That's one mile south of Rock Creek. As you go just west of Bridge Creek, there's Buck on the right-hand side of your television screen. Uh, and then here's Tuttle right here so this town this this is coming very close at this current track east side of tuttle one to two miles outside of town this is the area to watch you're in your tornado shelter right now chris how's it look now yeah it looks like it's uh, i'm not seeing the funnel i'm not seeing the cone down to the ground mm -hmm. right now um jason if we can stop up on the next hill where we have good visibility it, it's kind of back a little bit behind us um i see the rotation i see the lowering i just don't see the tornado to the ground like i did so i believe that's which obviously good news because mm -hmm. Yeah, we're uh, yeah we're watching it. So Chris, we still have your. By the way, Chris, just a heads up here. Your audio is coming in and out, but your picture is still crystal clear for where you are right now. You are up inside of the storm, Chris, and so it's still rotating. It's already produced a tornado. Uh, Chris went right through, said uh, the damage path there or where it crossed. Said the power lines flashed a little bit, but uh, they're still up. So not a very strong tornado. Now. The tornado risk is just getting started for this evening. Here's another area that we're watching that Nick Smith is looking right into right now between Amber and the first toll booth uh, that you hit when you're headed down the turnpike. That's starting to show some strengthening as well. Now, if you're living in Moore or Norman or Blanchard, this right here, if it strengthens, will turn more up to the uh, up to the east. It'll, it'll move north, north and then northeast. If it continues to strengthen, some of the high resolution data that we've been analyzing here in the Weather Center has been indicating that threat certainly being there. So we're just going to have to watch it scan by scan with this storm system right now. But there we are right there east of Amber. Amber, that's going to stay away from you, but up towards Bridge Creek, that would be a concern. So there's Buck. There is going to be Chris Lee inside this tornado warning as it's moving up to north. If we can get Buck on, I, I want to see if Buck has a bit of a different perspective with this. Uh, but we're going to check in with Buck and Jason right now uh, on this. Hey, Buck, so you're in a tornado warning, ton of rain coming down. Buck, what's your perspective on this storm? How's it look? Yeah, it's still about three or four miles south of where we're at it right now, and I do see the heavy, heavy rain, so I'm not able to see the uh, lowering in the, or the uh, area that Chris was seeing yet, but it is coming right at us. 
and we're kind of up on a high point here on a hill just to the north side uh, of Tuttle on Mustang Road looking back to our southwest. If we see anything, we'll get back to you. Okay, Buck, we're going to watch uh, We're gonna watch this one real closely on the left-hand side of your television screen. We see the picture from uh, from Chris Lee. Chris, it looks like it's, it's strengthening again or getting better organized. What's your perspective there, Chris? Yeah, it's starting to rotate again really, really hard, and that's uh, – uh, I'm looking a uh, very high angle up at the uh, at, at that, but you can see the rotation in that that funnel coming down. It does not. I mean, it is not on the ground now. I can I can verify that because I I am right here next to it. I don't see anything down to the ground, and we're in a little bit of a lull in the rain. But it had disappeared and gone up just to the wall cloud and did not have that tube sticking down just a minute ago. So it is reforming, and that circulation is coming down towards the ground. It's starting to pull the rain around it again. That's why it's starting to rain uh, harder where we're at. So it looks like it's going to touch down here again and, and, uh, and start to uh, and touch down to the ground. That's what it, it's looking like to me here. We're now about a mile south of uh, Main Street out of Tuttle, uh, two miles east of downtown. And this would, uh, it's going mostly north, but a little bit east of due north. Well, Chris, I tell you what, your reporting and your the accuracy that you are giving in this report is so important for those that are living in Tuttle right now and even looking downstream towards Mustang. Again, Chris, the, the view that you have into this is really helping. It's helping everyone right now understand just what this storm is currently doing because it's wrapped in rain, but you're right up in there, and we can definitely see that it is not on the ground. It's, it's low but it's not touching the ground. That is good. Now, it's still rotating, and it can still spin by it up. But, uh, but at this moment right now, uh, again, that's what Chris is, uh, that is what Chris is seeing. So, again, uh, you can see it right there. It looks like from a velocity standpoint, even the velocity signatures are not nearly as tight, but it can certainly spin back up. I mean, that's a, that is a thin, long tornado that is uh, stretching out of the, uh, the clouds there and uh, trying, to, uh, trying to touch down. So, this is the only tornado warning we have, although I do feel like we're probably going to see a few more this evening, um, even down by Nick Smith, where he is right now on the turnpike. That is rotating as well. But still, looking at Chris Lee's picture, you can see that lowering right now with this storm. There's Buck. There's Chris Lee moving up North Mustang. Slow-moving storm. This is uh, moving about 15 miles per hour, so it's going to take a little while right now. Not projected to come into town until right around 755. Okay, let's go, uh, let's go down towards Nick Smith. Nick Smith, give us an update on what you're seeing. Yeah, Damon, we just actually just cut through the, as you look at the, on the radar, you see the hook there. We just cut through it on I-44, and this thing is ramping up, Damon. I, we just drove literally right underneath part of it, and also to the side of it, and we're seeing rotation uh, on this left side of it, which is a little bit closer on the inside. We're seeing that actually um, increase right now. So I, I just say, you know, like you said, you're going to see this thing ramp up. It is. It is happening right now. Um, there's nothing that we've seen on the ground, and we were literally right underneath it. So uh, we are now on, on, the, on a better side so we can see everything. We'll, we'll just keep – we'll stay here. We'll let you know if we see anything else. Back to you. Okay, Nick, you are right on top of this circulation. So, again, uh, Nick, we're, uh, your reports are going to be important. So there you go. Tornado warning now coming in for Cleveland, Grady, and McLean County. Uh, there, there you go. So that is – Nick, you're reporting, there you go, brand new tornado warning issued, and this does include, let's zoom on out, let's show how much of this, uh, this polygon here, because I do believe this does include more, up to Norman. Uh, so we'll put a track on it here first. Yeah, this includes more. So here you go, uh, for, the, for more and Norman, as we were mentioning earlier, a lot of the high resolution data was indicating that this was going to move up to the northeast and then begin to turn more to the east. There you go. Let's go out to Sky 5 right now. Sky 5, what do you have? Yeah, Damon, we're looking at that same cell that Nick Smith is looking at, and we're seeing a lot of rotation right here like he was seeing from the ground. I can't tell uh, if this is, is to the ground, but you can see what looks like a funnel. That could possibly be a tornado right now. As far as tornado genesis goes, this is about as high as you can get uh, on this storm right here. It is tornado worn, but we're, what, we're what we're doing is we're looking at the ground to see if we're seeing any rotation on the ground. It does look like it's kind of dissipating a little bit, but we're seeing that through this lowering uh, 
uh, from from throughout this whole storm that, that uh, Nick Smith is also on. But you can see as we move over to the right, we're looking at this part of the storm too. There over to the right as that starts to uh, starts to spin up at times. But we're going to keep a close look on this one, Damon. Okay, definitely. Let's put the radar up. Let's keep these pictures up. And so this is going to be right on top of the turnpike. Here's the first toll booth that you hit when you're going down uh, when you're going down the turnpike here. So here's Bridge Creek. Here's Newcastle, Blanchard. You're not in this tornado warning, uh, but that would be that's the developing tornado right there. So now we're working two tornado warnings right now. This is right on top of the turnpike. There's Storm Command. There's Nick. Here's Chris. So uh, if you're in more right now, we're watching this one real closely for you right now. Newest storm track 732 for Newcastle. Uh, Briarwood Elementary at 741. That's going to be right there on Southwest 149th Street uh, in OKC. Then we go into Norman High School 742, Plaza Towers Elementary at 743. Norman, here you go. Uh, okay, so uh, Jonathan, say that again. Is, is this Mike? Derek Storm, the Nineka Storm is going to get a tornado warning. That storm right there. We're going to have three tornado warnings at once, Damon. Okay, there you go. So working now, three tornado warnings. Okay. Let's, we'll, we'll check in on this one in just a second. Let's go back up to Chris Lee, give an update for those in Tuttle on what's happening here with this Tuttle circulation. Chris Lee, uh, it looks like the circulation is going to be a few miles east of Tuttle. So Tuttle, that's good for you. Uh, let's keep a close eye on this. Chris, how's it look from your vantage point? Tornado warning it. Chris Lee, you're live on air. Yeah, what do you see? Damon, I'm not seeing, not seeing a tornado at this time. Um, kind of looking in the area we, we are just to the east of uh of tuttle and uh we're not seeing the lowering or the or the uh the tube the funnel coming down um kind of trying to figure out where where if it's reorganized to another location or if that uh that uh tornado is just uh let's just go um so not seeing the tornado right now damon we're kind of looking to see what it's uh what it's doing. Hopefully it's dissipated and uh, not going to reform. All right, we'll keep a close eye on this one again. Tuttle, you're okay. All right, let's go back down to Nick Smith. Check in with Nick Smith. Nick, this new warning, uh, Nick, just so you know, it goes through Newcastle and it's headed towards your hometown here in Moore. Nick, what do you see? Yeah, Damon, um, right now I'm just watching like the, it's it's strength like right now it's strengthening damon that that's just that, that's the thing only thing i can tell you right now it, it is it is getting stronger the rotation is is there's nothing on the ground i want to make sure that i everyone knows that from my vantage point right here sky five is on it as well i do not see anything on the ground but damon that thing well it, it's actually starting to it looks like we're starting to get a funnel here damon and uh we are we're, we're trying to stay a little bit of away from this thing because Right now, um, I'll do that. man, there's just a lot out here on I-44. We're trying to stay safe at the same time, but um, this thing, I can't confirm that it's on the ground, okay. but Damon, it, it, it's, it's rapidly, rapidly rotating. I'm seeing the rain curtain starting to wrap around it as well. So, oh, tell you what, hey, so Nick, many little areas. Nick uh, yeah. we're gonna come back to you in just a second. So, Let me go up to Sky 5 real quick. Chase Rutledge, up in the air, you have a bit of a different pers perspective. How's it look, Chase? Yeah, Damon, I think we're seeing the same rotation that Nick Smith is seeing from the ground. We're not seeing anything on the ground yet, though, so that's good news, but we're definitely keeping a close eye on this one. And, and as far as Tornado Genesis goes on a scale from one to five on this one, I would give this one about a three. So it's uh, it's definitely got the recipe for something that could cause a funnel right here, but you can see it's starting to lower just a little bit more. The, the rapid rising motion isn't there, but I'm just getting an, an emergency alert there for a tornado warning, so... Uh, you're probably getting that as well Damon yeah absolutely so okay let's show on the radar exactly what this looks like right now this is the view from Nick Smith let's go back over to the radar and again we want to keep the radar up at all times and then we'll put the squeeze back up here as well but that's the area of rotation our crews are out like I'm telling you right now every single tornado warning we have it surrounded let's go back up to Nick Smith Nick what do you see yeah Damon I'm still watching this right now and um, we uh, right now, we're seeing that I-44 is shut down at the spur, right? Right after you come out past the spur and not, not allowing any vehicles to go past, uh, right past the spur, uh, you'd be driving right into what you're seeing on my shot right now. So, uh, again, 
there's little times where we're seeing little appendages come down, but we're not seeing anything um, too crazy right at this second. But we're staying here. He'll actually take the spur, get off, the, get off just a little bit so we can watch this thing as it comes towards Newcastle, as it comes towards uh, – um, yeah, as it comes up towards the southwest side of the metro. Back to you. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on this one. Let's look at Sky 5 real quick. Sky 5 is giving us a bit of a different perspective, looking right into the heart of this storm. And so Sky 5, you can see it right here on the top left-hand side of your television screen. Uh, and then Amber... That's going to be from Chris Lee, or that's going to be from Nick, I do believe. But look at the big picture right now. Here's where it's headed. So right now, that's going to be right on top of the toll booth or the turnpike. It's headed up towards more north side of Norman. Now, heads up, Norman, if it strengthens, then it's going to begin to turn more to the right. And that would put more of Norman, or that would put Norman more so in, in the path. Uh, this is the other tornado warning that we have. This is south of Nineka. Derek is on that. It's called the Derek right now. Derek, what do you see? Yeah, Michael. So we're uh, we're just to the east of Aguan, just to the northeast of Aguan, just south of Nineka. Um, we have really, really good and strong lift on this storm right now, but the actual rotation isn't as strong as you would want to see if you were looking for a tornado. So that's good news right now at the moment. But with the amount of lift that we have on the storm, uh, it wouldn't take very much for this thing to spin up a tornado. So we got to take our tornado precautions right now in Nineka and really Alex, too, as it continues to move off to the east-northeast. Back to you. Absolutely. So, okay, let's go back up to, let's check in real quick with the uh, northern tornado warning we have. Uh, this, okay, wait. He has a funnel. Michael, okay, we'll check in with Michael. Michael, what do you have? Okay, we're just a couple miles southwest of the spur and damage. You can see a funnel right now on my shot. It is being lit by the sun. It's actually white right now. Um, we also have some pretty rapid rotation right in front of us here, right on top of the turnpike right here with this wall cloud. So really two different areas of rotation, but the main one is just a little bit east of the turnpike. They do have it blocked. They're not allowing traffic up here. They they did let us go because they know what we're doing, but uh, the fire department does have it blocked. But there is a pretty substantial funnel right there, right to my east. Kyle, let's go work a little bit further north. Let's get a little better contrast. We're going to keep taking our 360 cam. Let's Damon, the good five. thing is that this is, um, it is a little bit east of the turnpike, so it's not hitting vehicles on the turnpike. But if you live anywhere northwest of Blanchard, and there are homes out in here, in fact, quite a few of them, uh, south of Bridge Creek, you need, to, you need to take your tornado precautions right now. Yeah, absolutely. So, Michael, just so you know, we're getting a different perspective. Your, your reporting, your pictures on the ground look uh, are really helping us out. And we also have Sky 5, and you can see that lowering right there. That is what this is right here. So, Blanchard, this is going to stay, uh, this tornado warning, by the way, is going to stay just uh, north of you. Now, different story down to the south. Moving up to the northeast, keeping a real close eye on this, and that circulation continues. So, Sky 5, Storm Command, there's Nick Smith. Not a lot of hail with this, but it is, it is currently rotating. By the way, let's, let's zoom on out. Let's show the metro view right now because I know there's a lot of rain that's coming in right now into OKC. It's Right now, it, it sounds like it's just mostly rain, not hearing any hail out of this. Uh, but we'll continue to watch again. It's a severe thunderstorm warning for OKC. Uh, otherwise, again, the dominant storm... Uh, that we have ongoing right now is going to be this that is coming in to South OKC, uh, Newcastle, east of Bridge Creek, towards Moore, and even as we go into Norman. This right here is a storm that we are watching. Again, it's moving very slowly. It's not a very fast-moving storm, so you have time. Uh, you have time. Uh, Moore, you don't need to be in your tornado shelters yet. You have time, and we'll let you know because uh, it's going to take a while to come in, so we'll let you know. Uh, when that moment is, is necessary. But right now, this tornado warning, that's the circulation right there. That's the uh, that's a couplet. At this current track, though, if it keeps going this way, it will come right into Moore, west side of Moore, out towards, uh, uh, out towards uh, Westmore High School, and then coming in towards uh, Central Moore, and then onto the east side. So, uh, and then eventually would make its way up towards Stanley Draper. So, here we are, Newcastle, 735. Plaza Towers Elementary and Moore, 746. The Warren Theater here in Moore, 747. Norman North High School, 748. You're on the uh, fringe there of the warning. Uh, Heritage Trails Elementary School there on Bryant and 19th. We're looking at 749 Highland East Junior High on 4th Street and Moore. That's going to be at 749. Let's check back in with uh, let's, who?
Okay, let's check in with uh, Sky 5 if we can. Sky 5, definitely see a pronounced lowering in front of you. Chase, give us an update on what you're seeing. Yeah, that's right, Damon. And there have been a number of these throughout this part of the storm that I know uh, Michael Armstrong is making his way up here. Chris Lee is on this. Nick Smith is on this. And we're watching it, too. Now, this is quite a bit, uh, has some altitude above the ground, so it's not very close to the ground. But we've seen uh, a number of uh, lowerings in this cell that have come really close to the ground. And this is one of them. We're going to try to turn around and kind of head back to the north. But this one that we were just taking a look at is kind of getting rain wrapped right now. Once we get a little bit further north, Damon, I think we'll be able to see some more. Back to you. And that's going to be a problem that we're going to have with these storms tonight, by the way. So they're, they will be rain wrapped. You can definitely see it. Here's a lot of rain. Doesn't mean they're going to be invisible. Doesn't mean we're not going to be able to see them. Just that there will be a lot of rain that's going to be coming in and out. Um, okay, let me check back in with Nick Smith. Yeah, Nick Smith. Give us an update on what you're seeing, Nick. Yeah, Damon, so uh, we are on highway uh, here in on 62 we're watching uh it's just there's just a few little areas that uh have rotation but we're just looking for it to tighten up in a spot um there, it does look like there's some little appendages hanging down but nothing that right now is uh, that i can see that is uh you know nothing's 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 looking too ominous right now okay, okay. so um we're going to get off on 62 we'll, once we get a better view of this thing um i'll let you know what we see back to you okay so what nick and what uh what nick what michael and what sky five are reporting right now with this storm it is not on the ground so as a 726 the storm is rotating it's not on the ground keep that in mind however again minute by minute that goes by here we're going to watch the lower level winds pick up and that's going to allow the storm to rotate a bit more as it continues to move to the east. And so this warning, again, it extends uh, from basically, there it is right there, it extends from uh, essentially Bridge Creek, north of Blanchard, through Newcastle, coming into Moore, west side of Moore right now, uh, and then eventually making its way up at this current track, it will go up towards around Stanley Draper. Uh, so we're gonna, we're, we, are, we are all over this storm, on the ground, up in the air, but as of right now, these pictures, they tell it. They, they tell it. They tell us a bunch right now about what the current setup is. And that is, we have a lowering. We have rotation inside the storm, but it's not on the ground. So wanna wanna emphasize that. However, these tornado warnings and knowing what our atmosphere is capable of doing, we're taking these seriously because we know that things will continue to increase as we uh, as we watch this. Jonathan, highlight in the area that's rotating right now. That velocity couple at South of Bridge Creek. What do you see? Well, well, Damon, there's an area of circulation in there. I've circled it in blue there. It is really rain wrap, but there's a definite hook echo. The, these are not classic supercells. Um, they're all kind of daisy chained together. It reminds me a little bit of the 19th back in April where it was really messy. Storms all hooked up with each other, and we just have these embedded circulations. So very significant. Um, we're watching it real closely. The, we're 7 o'clock here, the low-level jet stream wind starting to pick up a little bit, watching that closely, and also the, the overall setup for what we have in OKC. We have southeast winds, and we haven't had really any storms come into OKC, so these storms have really good inflow into them. We'll have to see how they interact. For example, Derek Storm has a significant hook on it. He's right there. We'll just have to see how they all kind of hooked together. Does Derek Storm, you know, suppress uh, the Bridge Creek Storm coming into Norman? I think obviously that circulation that Chris Lee was on, the tornado that, that he had, that circulation had really weakened. I think it got trashed from what we call the forward flank or the rain and hail from the storm that Sky 5, Nick and Storm Commander on. Yeah, and so looking right now at all this high resolution data that we've been analyzing into the Weather Center, and listen, it comes in every 15 minutes. I want to tell you what it says about this storm over the next 30 to 45 minutes is that it's still going to continue to rotate as it moves up to northeast. There's a chance the rotation may decrease a bit with this as the southern storm, the Ninikos storm that Derek Klein is on, as that rotation increases. Something to keep in mind. Now, just want to say right now that hasn't happened yet so but that's what a lot of the high resolution data is kind of telling us as the storm comes into more more we're watching this i'm watching this real closely for you i'll let you know what's uh what's coming in but right now again this storm is still rotating uh this is not a tornado on the ground but it has been producing quite a few lowerings from time to time and again that's going to be right on top of the toll booth uh, again, that you uh, that you hit either the last one as you're coming into OKC or the first one down there. It's still rotating, and I think that the tornado could certainly develop any time with this. It's still definitely increasing right on top of Storm Command. Let's go out to Michael. 
right now. Mike, it looks like rotation in the last couple of scans has picked up. And Jonathan, can you do that real quick? Can you yeah, do that? I think, I think in the last scan, it spun up a little harder. Yeah, I think right, so too. Right over Michael. Right over Michael. Let's go out to Michael. Michael, we were just uh, we're watching this. Looks like the, the rotation is increasing. Michael, what do you see? Yeah, I, I would say visually that that I would confirm that as well as I'm looking behind me. I'm right on, um, right on the spur. So I'm right on Highway Nine. And let me tell you, you guys can probably see where I'm at, but I'm right near 2980 is the county road, and then Sand Rock Road. So we're that's kind of the intersection where we're at. Um, and so we're, this is going to be coming in toward Newcastle, especially for anybody who lives uh, in southwest of Newcastle, right by where 62 and Highway 9 link up, two miles west of there, and it is moving to the northeast. We want to be very, very precise with this so anybody who lives in this area knows exactly where I'm talking about. That's why we do this. That's why we get out here and track them on the ground. We're right next to them, and so we want to be very precise. So if you live two miles west, of the Highway 62, Highway 9 Junction, you need to be preparing for a tornado. Now, as of right now, what we have, I have rotation in the cloud base. There are rain curtains wrapping. What I don't see is a condensation funnel to the ground at this point. Kyle, I want you to go ahead and go now. We're going to go another mile up. Okay, uh, Michael, so, uh, and you're right. Th this precision, being as precise as possible, means everything to us here about exactly who's in the path and who is not. So. Again, Blanchard, now this storm is north of you. Now, Blanchard, we're still watching for the cell down towards Ninica. On the left-hand side of your television screen, rotation is increasing inside this storm. We're watching it. Nothing on the ground yet, but we're still watching it. Tornado warning continues. Here's the track right here, and we're intended. It's still headed towards Moore, so we're going to keep a real close eye on this one. Again, from Briarwood to Westmore, Plaza Towers to downtown Moore, Broadmoor Elementary School to Heritage Trails Elementary School there. Uh, on the east side of Moore, right off of 19th Street. Watching this cell, let's check in with Derek Klein real quick. Derek Klein, keeping a close eye on this cell, what do you see? Yeah, Damon, so this storm continues to kind of cycle back and forth. Um, still very, very strong. In fact, I think the updraft is probably getting a little bit stronger based off of lightning activity that we're seeing around here. Uh, right now, just to the north of Alex, or northwest of Alex, uh, and just really about to cross Highway 19 here any minute now, but uh, no tornado right now. There is a lot of lift and some rotation, uh, but no tornado right now. We're continuing to watch it closely, and I think, uh, again, it keeps cycling. So as it cycles, it has to reorganize again, um, and if it stops cycling and one of the rotation or mesocyclones takes over, I think that's when we'll see a tornado. So we'll continue to watch this storm really closely. Uh, we're really just kind of battling right up underneath it. And uh, so if anything happens, we'll be the first to let you know. Back to you. Okay, Derek, uh, let's go back up to this. This circulation's increasing where we have Sky 5, Storm Command, and Nick Smith. Let me check in with Nick. So, Nick, just a heads up. Uh, the circulation is, has picked up a bit here with this cell in the last couple of scans. Nick, what do you see from where you are? Yeah, Damon, so... Uh, visually, that's what I'm, we're seeing here. Uh, we're seeing a lot of moisture feeding into it um, right now. And at the same time, we're seeing those same uh, curtains that were wrapping around that Michael was seeing. Um, Damon, there is a little bit of area. Let me let me pan this over just a little bit. This th this thing just is, continues to move and evolve in, sh in its shape. And, man, I, we're, I'm seeing a lot of, lot of lift into it right now. Um, Damon, this thing, I, I, it's getting a lot of good moisture pulling back into it. So I think this thing is, once again, it's about to strengthen again. Um, I don't know if that means it's going to produce a tornado. Nothing is on the ground right now. I want to stress that, though, from my vantage point, there's nothing on the ground. But this could produce something at any moment. Back to you. You're exactly right. And so that's why you're there. That's why Storm Command is here. That's why Sky 5 is here. We're watching. Let's go out to, uh, let's see here. Let's go out to Sky, let's go out to Sky 5. Sky 5, Chase Rutledge, what are you seeing? Yeah, Damon, this is that same thing that, uh, that Nick Smith was just talking about. We're seeing a lot of rapid rising motion right here into this cell. This could produce a tornado at any moment. That's, there's no wonder that the sirens are going off in the Moore area. You're seeing this. We're looking for the rotation, and we're looking for that tornado genesis. We're not seeing it yet. We're not seeing it uh, uh, coupling up, but you, but you can see right there it's starting to develop. Damon, this could turn into a tornado any moment now. We're looking at the ground to try to see if there's anything being picked up on the ground, but uh, you tell me, Damon, this this looks pretty classic. It certainly does. It certainly does. Let's put Sky 5 up here if we can. Uh, this Because I think that, that that storm is rotating. That, that, this, is, this is really starting to pick up. I mean, you can see 
the clouds just getting pulled up into this. This whole thing is spinning right now. I mean, you can see it. This is this is trying. This is probably the strongest the storm has been. Um, and this is going. This is this is really this is really trying to do it again. This is going to be uh, the storm that is going to be east of Blanchard, uh, west of Norman. Let's put this. Let's put the. Uh, Let's put the radar up and we'll do a two box with this right now so we can show everyone where this is. Again, that is what we're watching. Okay, so here we are. This, this is going to be, uh, so uh, Jonathan, zoom out just a little bit here so we can show exactly where Blanchard and Newcastle are in comparison to this. Okay, so there's Blanchard. Uh, here's Newcastle. Newcastle moving up to the northeast about 20, 25 miles per hour. Newcastle, you need to be going into your tornado shelter, the innermost room of your house with this storm coming in right now. Again, it's not moving very quickly, but looking at the winds inside of the storm, it's strengthening. It is definitely strengthening right now. So uh, once again, we're east of Bridge Creek, north of Blanchard. That's where the tornado is developing. Sky 5 giving you a bit of a unique view of this, looking up in the air, down on it. I'm telling you right now, when you look at this right now visually, this right here tells, get, tells us so much, and that's you can just see these clouds spinning up in the air. So once again, Sky 5 looking right into this. This is the same tornado warning, and the track hasn't changed much, so it's still, it's still on track for Newcastle, and then coming into more, Newcastle and more. More, you're still a ways away from this. This is not moving very quickly, so you're still okay not to go into your tornado shelter. We're, we'll tell you when it's time to, because if you go into your tornado shelter now, you might be there for a long time. And, and I know, uh, uh, I know uh, just how that can, uh, you know, how that can make you feel. So um, let's go out to Storm Command right now, Michael. You're right where this hook is. Michael, give us an update on what you're seeing. Michael, we have you live on air, Michael. What are you seeing? Okay, yeah, Damon, uh, man, this thing is really, really hanging low. This is exactly what Chase is looking at. I can see him on the other side of the wall cloud. We've got it kind of in between us, and there is, uh, there is, there is rising motion. There is rotation, and it's kind of ragged right in there, kind of keeping an eye on both the left side and the right side. I want to be, again, that's what it, I'm, I'm describing it, but what I think is even more important is to know that this is really moving in very close to Golf Course Road, Golf course, ro uh, golf course Road and 2990. Th those are the two roads right now here. And on the southwest side, it's, it's one mile west of Castle. Okay, full west now of the six of the um, sorry 76 Highway 9 Junction right here, where it goes down to Blanchard, mm -hmm. and that's that's the most. That's the most concerning thing because there there are quite a few homes out in this area. One good thing is I'm not seeing damage. Uh, these tornadoes right now, with the way these storms are evolving, they they are, oh hang on they are they don't seem to be particularly intense right now in terms of the strength of the velocity. But that is really starting to crank up right now. We are really seeing the motion. Kyle, let's go forward a little bit more. We're going to get off here at the Blanchard okay. exit. Hey, Michael, so just heads up, a uh, brand new tornado warning was just issued, by the way, for this, and it's kind of changed the track. So let's zoom on out and show where the track is. And so uh, it's taking into account a more of a right turn, which would mean more of a strengthening turn. So the newest tornado warning that we have here um, is going to, let's go to Nick. Nick, what do you have? Right here. Yeah, I'm on Highway 9, a few miles just to the south of of where the 62 square is, and I'm looking back to my uh, southwest. I'm seeing a tornado right here, right now. You see it in the shot? It is on, it, I saw it actually on yeah, the ground. Right I can see you, just moving around. Yeah, we definitely see it. Yeah, Nick, we definitely see it. We have this uh, on the ground. Let's, let's give you a view of this from up in the air with Sky 5. On the left-hand side, that's what it looks like from Nick Smith. Uh, now that's what it looks like from Sky 5. You can definitely see the lowering here. We're looking at this. So this new tornado warning does come into Norman now. So, Norman, you're in this tornado warning now. That's an update as it's strengthening. You can it's, see, you can, it's, it's, it's Damon. It, yeah. Yeah, no, no the yeah. velocity couplet's going up, and that's going to, it might get a lot stronger here. Watch it. Yeah, it definitely will. Let me go back out to Nick Smith. Hey, Nick Smith, real quick. What's it look like from your vantage point on the ground? Yeah, uh, Damon, it is still on the ground. I'm seeing you doing damage, and there's, there's little, I see little, uh, like a little drill bit down there. It, it's in the rain. It is in the rain right now. It's ragged. But it is in the rain, and I can see it fully condensed down. It it, it loses some of the, the contrast. We lose some of that. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely. Give me just a second, Damon. I'm looking. Yeah, we definitely see it. Um, so, 
Yeah, it's definitely strengthening right now. Um, here, let me let me pan over. But it, th this thing is on the ground. I can see it from our vantage point. Um, it is. It looks like it's moving a little bit more. Let me see which way. It's moving more to the east. We can definitely see it's moving yeah, more it's to, the to the east. east. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, it is. It is. You're right, Damon. And that's going to pull it closer into Norman if it keeps strengthening, which is why in Norman, this newest tornado warning update that was just issued uh, is now including you. When tornadoes are strengthening, they're going to move more to the right. So at this current track, <clears throat> this very well could go right in between downtown Newcastle and here is Riverwind Casino, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to probably stay just north of Highway 9. Say just north of Highway 9 here, but that's gonna, if you're in Norman, again, if you're in Norman, we're watching this real closely. More to Norman at this current track and the newest the newest timeline here, uh, it is getting pulled a little bit more to the east here. So that's Newcastle uh, in the next nine minutes, Sooner Mall, 801, uh, Southmore High School, 803. We go to Norman High School here at 805, OU at 807, downtown Norman at 808. Uh, we still have Heritage Trails Elementary School here. Up in Moore, you're on the northern fringe of this warning, uh, but you're still included in this. Hollywood Corners, Highland East Junior High, Timber Creek Elementary School, and then uh, Rock Creek Belmar and Veterans Park there at 4th Street and Bryant and Moore at about 811 with this. The storm is still strengthening. Moving to the east, Jonathan, you're analyzing the radar scan by scan. Jonathan, what's standing out to you about well, this? Well, right now? I, so the mesocyclone, so what we're looking at isn't necessarily a circulation on the ground. I have the radar beam aimed at the engine of the storm. Mesocyclone means engine. Circulation, this is the strongest I've seen it. Watch it kind of ramp up. I don't know if you're hearing me yell in the background. It's, it's ramping up, it's ramping up. And I told Sky 5, Chase, get ready. It's going to cycle. It's going to produce a tornado. We saw that from Sky 5, saw that from Nick. And so what's going to happen is as the storm moves, I think we're going to just gonna we're gonna see that we're gonna see it kind of cycle right now obviously I don't I'm not sure if it's confirmed on the ground right now what may be a problem wait Michael, Michael has a tornado the problem this is gonna be a rain wrap tornado it's gonna be really hard to see Damon do we want to go out to Michael here yeah let's quick? go out to Michael there right is, now yeah. yeah Michael we have you on Michael what do you have yeah you can see the tornado spinning right behind me that's my 360 camera <laughs> this is highway 76 and Highway 9, we're right, oh my gosh, look oh, wow. at that, guys. We're taking some bigger. serious wind here, too. Yeah, it's getting, it is getting bigger. Uh, yeah, you yeah, can we see it right here, right behind us. This is it. This is what's headed towards Norman right now. Norman. Go ahead and go, Kyle. Okay, we're watching this real closely. And again, I want to emphasize, look, our storm chasers, are, they're safe out there. Um, they are professionals, but their accuracy and their precision is so important to you. And so... Believe me when I tell you that they, uh, we're all concerned about this storm, okay? We really are. It's continuing to move to the east. Low-level winds are strengthening. So, Norman, this was headed your way. Okay, uh, let's, let's keep Michael's shot up. Let me go back over to the radar, show you exactly where this is. This is it right here, the bend on Highway 9. Uh, so, this is moving to the east. So, and at this current track at about 20 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour, it's headed into Norman in the next 30 minutes. Michael, let me go back out to you. Michael, how's it look? Well, pretty big bowl-shaped lowering now. So what we're uh, what what I have is I have rotating rain curtains, and you can see them in my shot. They're moving. You can see where it's moving left to right. Well, on the back where the dark cloud is back behind that, that's moving right to left. That's right where the tornado is. It's right on the top, right on the top of 76 and Highway 9, the the Blanchard exit. Okay, and it is it is lifting. To, it's it's going a, almost due east, but maybe just a little north of east, okay? So it's going to be moving toward the south side of Newcastle. Newcastle, you need to be in your tornado shelter right now. Okay, so just a heads up. Um, let's pull on out if we can real quick. Just want to show everyone in comparison uh, or where we, where we are with these storms in comparison to where you live. I, I, I know we've been zoomed in on this area, but OKC and Edmond, these storms are moving to the east, and so we'll watch it right now. I'd say, Edmund, you're doing okay. Norman, Moore, we're still watching it, and even this cell down here, down by Alec, east of Ninica. This is the zone. Oh, and here's another one that looks yeah, like it's developing down by Rush Springs. It's <coughs> just for me, I'm saying Tail and Charlie, it's really hooking up, but <coughs> Damon, Sky 5's got a tornado right now. It's rain wrap. Yeah, let's go Big Sky tone. 5 right now. Hey, Sky 5, uh, Chase Rutledge, what do you see from your vantage point, Chase? Yeah, Damon, this is that same uh, area where uh, 
and Michael Armstrong was just talking about, and you can see we watched this one develop, so you can see that laminar shape of this tornado and, uh, and its wedge. It's probably on the ground. We're looking for power flashes now. We're looking for any kind of debris that's getting kicked up, but we're also having to look through some pretty heavy rain that you can see there, so, uh, but we're able to zoom up. in, but I, I don't know if Michael's got a better shot of it from the ground, but this is just crossing over what uh, what I think is Highway uh, 76, probably in between Highway 76 and I-44, just to the uh, just to the west of Newcastle. But this is a large wedge, a large funnel that uh, I, 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 I don't know if it's on the ground or not, but it does look like it might be lifting a little bit. But that let's definitely had some rotation and definitely had some structure, Damon. Let's go full with Sky Five. Let's go full with Sky Five if we can. Let's go full with Sky 5 if we can. So here it is right here. You can definitely see this whole thing is just rotating right now as it continues to lower again. Uh, showed you earlier the tornado from Sky 5 uh, going full here, but you can just see the rain just getting wrapped around this thing. This whole thing is just rotating right now and it's continuing to lower. And you can see little appendages around it, but this is, this is still the dominant area of circulation right here uh, coming in from Sky 5. Uh, let's go back out to Chase. Chase, what do you see? Yeah, Damon, I mean, just as you were talking about it, you saw it lower even more. Now, I don't, I, you know, I can't tell if there's anything uh, moving on the ground. We're still looking for power flashes. It's starting to move into an area that's kind of populated with some homes and some other uh, businesses down through there. So we're going to look for power flashes, but I can't tell if it's on the ground or not, Damon. Okay, well, we're watching, and we can tell you right now. So here, here's what you need to know uh, for everyone at home that's watching right now. Based off of what we are seeing coming into the Weather Center right now, all the data, this storm is still the dominant storm um, as it continues to move up to the northeast. Right now, we're working also a brand new tornado warning down by Rush Springs. We'll get to that in just a second, but I'm still concerned about this. Uh, this, by the way, headed towards Alec and Bradley. Let's go back into Norman, um, get an update here. So that's the area circulation coming up towards Newcastle. Again, more, you're still doing okay. Uh, we'll let you know when it's time to go into your shelter, but given just a slow movement, um, again, I know how it feels to be in a tornado shelter, and so uh, we'll let you know the time you have to go. Same thing for Norman, which Norman, by the way, that time is coming up as this continues to move to the east here and gets stronger and stronger. So the exact location of where this tornado and where the circulation is going to be, it's right here at the bend on Highway 9. Not finding much in the form of debris, which is good, by the way. This is our debris, uh, our debris tracker, but this storm is still rotating. And I'm telling you right now, we have this storm covered, so you will know everything that's coming in. I understand how important accuracy is to you, and that is what our chasers are here to deliver you. Everything you need to know. Everything you need to know and nothing you don't. So here you go right here. Uh, right at the bend, moving to the east. Let's check in with field meteorologist Michael Armstrong and Storm Command as the storm continues to move to the east, northeast. Still has Norman, still has more in its path. Michael, what do you see? Well, right now it's a little more ragged. I don't see the, the big bowl shape or the funnel any longer, but there's still spin right here uh, coming in right on the south side of Newcastle, and it's getting ready. To, it's not over the river yet, but it will be here very soon. We're, we're kind of... Uh, we're, I'm looking to the north, Damon. I'm trying to see if there's anything kind of coming in toward Newcastle. I don't see anything right now. Sky 5 probably has a better perspective, to be honest, um, or at least he did have. We're getting ready to move north here with it. Uh, he's got a huge wall cloud, and I can still see the rain curtain spinning. It is on the south side of Newcastle right now. It absolutely is. And so, yes, we, we have this covered both from the south to east and then up in the air watching it. There's Chris. There's Buck. Uh, here's Storm Command, there's uh, Nick, and here's Sky 5. Again, it, the, the circulation is kind of spread out a little bit. That's exactly what we want to see. We hope it continues to do that. But until it's basically kind of spread out for good, tornado warning continues. And so, and it will until 8.15 at least uh, for Cleveland County, McLean County here, moving to the east. Tornado would still be southwest of Newcastle. Really hasn't moved a whole lot, which what that tells us is that this storm is slowing down, and that, that's an indication the storm is strengthening right now. So this storm continues to move to the east. Uh, let's zoom on out. Let's check in with Derek Klein, by the way, down on real quick. Norman, more. We're going to come back to this in just a second, but we have other tornado warnings that we need to address. Let's go down towards uh, Rush Springs real quick. Check in with Derek Klein. 
Get an update on his storm for those that are going to be out by Bradley and Alec and down by Rush Springs. Derek, what do you see right now? Yeah, Damon. So we're uh, the storm near Alex is really it's it's really struggled. So it, it it has lift, but the rotation around it hasn't really been able to tighten up at all. Um, so you'll see real slow rotation, but only lift. And I think that's why they went ahead and canceled the tornado warning. Now there is a tornado warning that was just issued near Rush Springs. So we're headed in that direction. We're only about 10 or 15 miles from that storm as well. So we've been eyeing both of those, and so now it's time to to shift to the storm back to our southwest. So we should be there in about 20 minutes or so, and we'll let you know what we see when we get there. Back to you. Hey, Derek, uh, we'll, we'll check back in with you in just a second. Again, Derek tracking this storm. And so uh, from Rush Springs to Alec, Derek is all over the storm. Again, we have all these tornado warnings around us. Go back up to Norman and back up to Moore and give those an update uh, in Cleveland County and McLean County what's happening right now. Again, uh, these tornado warnings, they're serious. And so if you're living in Oklahoma County, this will likely stay mostly south if there's any part of oklahoma county that this this is uh very well could head up towards it would be in the southeastern corner so right now still watching the circulation it continues very close to newcastle i would say probably about five ten minutes ago it was stronger than what we're seeing right now but uh, it's still spinning here so at this current track moving to the east newcastle right about now norman health plex here at 810 norman north high school 816 uh, and then we're getting into more. So here we are, Hollywood Corners, Heritage Trails Elementary School, Highland East Junior High, right around 820. Again, right around 820. More High School at 821. And then we get down towards uh, Pepperwell Oaks neighborhood there, right at uh, 149th and Sooner Road, right about 827. And then towards Stanley Draper at 830. So meteorologist Taylor Cox running the radar right here. Taylor, we're watching this one real closely as it continues to move to the east. Sky 5 and Storm Command right into it. Um, and then Nick Smith as well, who's going to be just east. Let me check in with Nick Smith if I can. Uh, Nick, give us an update on what you're seeing from where you are in Norman. Yeah, Damon. So we went ahead and repositioned. Um, I know that um, Sky 5 and Michael are in Newcastle. They're right there with it. I'm coming to Norman because I want to make sure that we know exactly where this thing is as it comes on the, uh, like up to the Norman, the, the northern Norman and the southern part of Moore, like just kind of where, where it decides to go in that area. I want to be right there so I can give you exactly where this thing is as it comes across and if it's on the ground or not. I want to make sure that people know exactly where it's at. So we're going we're gonna to be on Robinson Street and 48th just on the west side. And we're going to be looking down as it looks down over the, um, the floodplains there, and we're going to be looking at this thing as it comes uh, this way. The sirens are going off in Norman. I'm seeing a lot of cars. Like It looks like a lot of people are heading home right now, so that's a good thing. Back to you, Damon. Okay, and, uh, and so, again, Nick, you know, you're, you're keeping a close eye on this with this storm coming again. Tornado warning still remains in effect for this storm, although, can confirm, doesn't look like it's nearly as strong as what we saw even a few minutes ago. So that's a step in the right direction, but the tornado threat still continues with this. It's not zero, but it's still it's still rotating, but it doesn't look like it's on the ground like what we showed you live on air just a few moments ago. Let's check back in with Storm Command and Newcastle. Michael, it feels like the storm is not really moving a whole lot. Michael, what are you seeing? Uh, it's moving slowly. It is It is on the move. It's just not moving very fast. You're right. So this is, I have a funnel right now. This is looking to, to my east, Damon. This is in Newcastle, okay? Let me turn my wiper off just to actually make that a little bit easier for you to see so the uh, contrast will stop adjusting there. Now you can see the funnel, okay? So we're in Newcastle right now. And, uh, man, this is uh, – it's still pretty dicey right here as it's getting ready to cross the river. We are right – near, um, we're pretty close to City Hall right here in Newcastle. I know you can see our location on radar. So we're just south kind of of downtown, and we're looking uh, straight east, actually, Damon, right down uh, Fox Lane. That's, that's kind of over right in that area where that funnel is hanging very low. Now, what I don't see is, you know, I'm not seeing any power flashes. I'm not seeing debris on the ground or anything like that but it is still a very pronounced lowering. And you can see that very clearly there in my shot on my 360 camera. You know, Michael, we can definitely see it there. And so again, Michael giving a very specific street by street uh, kind of track on where this is, where it is moving. Again, I know accuracy matters, you know, and, and facts matter here. And so we wanna make sure that everything that you're being told is exactly what's happening here. And that's what our crews are out on the ground doing right now. 
telling you what is happening, what is actually happening right now. And again, circulation likely to be wrapped up in rain. It's been bouncing back and forth. The intensity, the strength has been going back and forth as well. So you can definitely still see this lowering. Looking at Sky 5 gives you a bit of a different perspective, a bit of a clearer perspective as well. If we can go Sky 5 right behind me, and we'll show you exactly what it looks like from up in the air with Chase Rutledge. Again, you can see the rain. I mean, there's a lot of rain that's just coming down uh, right on, uh, basically right on McLean and Grady County here. By the way, flood advisory thrown in, in the mix with all of this as well. So uh, just be careful, a little bit of high water here and there. But uh, again, looking right now, it's rotating. But nothing, at least for the at this moment, looks like it's touching the ground. But that can still change, especially as the winds, uh, the low-level winds continue to increase. Jonathan, you're watching the radar. Uh, what do you see right now? Well, velocity is a great way to show everybody where the where the circulation is. Again, Michael is literally under the wall cloud. You can see on the left-hand side. That's a view from Sky Five. Chase is just mm. one, two, three miles west of Sooner Mall. You know, just kind of over the river looking back to the west and so we're hitting it from every different angle so this is the doppler part the wind part the velocity part this is what it looks like on uh, what we call reflectivity and it, it it does not look like a classic supercell with a big hook echo it, i don't see that the circulation is rain wrapped this is what we call a high precipitation based supercell it is a little bit harder for our chasers but you can see literally michael and uh, his driver, our chief photographer, Kyle Ham, very great at what they do, and they would never put themselves in a situation where they felt uh, it was too dangerous, but they're right there. And Chris Lee, Buck King, Nick Smith, I mean, we have it covered. Our uh, Johnson Control camera, Norman, we're looking right at it. Now, I will say this, as we look back down the, down the south, Damon, we'll have to see how the storm um, the Middleburg or Dibble storm, how it interacts. And I'm gonna use a technical term. So we have this storm, and typically when you have storms lined up, it seems like if you were to bet on a storm, maybe the southern storm, because it has the most inflow. The question is how much separation do we have from our Newcastle storm versus the Dibble storm? Uh, mm -hmm. You'll hear me say like they're daisy chained chain together. That's kind of like what we saw uh, on the 19th of April. They were balanced, they're all hooked up, and we had three supercells. So it's one, two, and the third one is west of, of Alec. So we're just gonna have to watch this. They can change really quick. Um, for example, the Dibble storm, if I hit it with velocity, it doesn't look very good, but I can tell you there's a hook in there. It's not tornado worn. It has a severe thunderstorm warning, but that is inside a tornado watch and that can change. But I'm very worried, concerned, what is this storm gonna do here in the next couple of hours, or next hour at least? Mm -hmm. um, the top of the storm is lowered a little bit and the hails come down a little bit, but we haven't seen a lot of hail with it, have we? No, we really haven't. Yeah. I mean, there's, I, I know that the instability was incredibly high today, that the threat for hail was definitely going to be there, but at least we're, we're, we're keeping the hail threat low. Now, this area still continues and watching where this is gonna cross over the river, northwest side of Norman. Uh, as you make your way west of the Norman Healthplex, south of Southmore High School, there's Buck, there's Chris, there's Nick, there's Sky 5, and there's Storm Command. You cannot get any closer to the storm, and you cannot have the storm more surrounded than the way we have it right now. I mean, it's one, two, three, four, five, five chasers right now, four on the ground, one up in the air, giving you all the information that you need, all the facts, all the accuracy that you need to know what this storm is doing, because I understand. I get it. Look, I live in Moore. I know how it feels when the sirens are going off, when tornado warnings, uh, when the tornado warnings are issued, when you feel like you have to run into the shelter. And so this is still moving up to the northeast. And so we're here to make sure that you, you have all, all the facts on this storm. It's still rotating. It's still there. It's going to go back and forth. It may cycle back up. So again, this tornado warning is still warranted. Headed towards Healthplex here at 817. Broadmoor Elementary School there at 824. Norman North High School same time, Hollywood Corners at 826. Heritage Trail El Elementary School right there at 4th and Bryant. It's going to be at 828. Highland East Junior High right along 4th Street, 828 as well. Then we get the Timber Creek Elementary School. Uh, Belmar Golf Club there right on Sooner at 830. Veterans Park in Moore, Turtle Lake, 831. And then uh, and then as we go out to uh, uh, out towards Pepperwell Oaks and Franklin, uh, the town of Franklin there at 847. Let's check in with Sky 5 right now. Sky 5, you're looking into the storm right now. Sky 5, what do you see, Chase?
Yeah, Damon, we are, uh, we're over Rock Creek, uh, just, just over Rock Creek on the west side of Norman, looking straight to the west, and you can see a lot of rain moving into this area, and, and, and your predictions as far as where this storm is headed is right on. Uh, but we're not seeing any lowerings right now. That's good news. We're not seeing a lot as far as rotations go, but you can see if there is anything in there, there's a lot of rain to try to see through. But right now, uh, I don't think this, the, uh, this storm is tornado warned right now, but as we've seen, as it's been moving from uh, the southwest into the Norman area, that could change at any moment, Damon, and we're going we're gonna to keep an eye on it. We, we know you will there, Chase, up in the air. So tornado warning remains uh, in effect. Right now it's 8 o'clock, another 15 minutes. Again, the circulation, it's not nearly as tight. It's not nearly as strong. So uh, tornado warning, not over yet, but want to give you a minute-by-minute -minute update on what the latest radar scan is saying. And again, the, the circulation is trending in the right direction. This is the way we want it to go. And so, again, for those of you that are in more. Now, this storm, by the way, still rotating southwest of Dibble. Can you watch this one real closely? It's a severe thunderstorm warning and then tornado warning uh, down west of Alec. Derek Klein is on that storm right now. So we're currently working uh, two tornado warnings, one severe thunderstorm warning, and it's basically all east of I-44, east of the Turnpike. And these storms are going to continue to make their way to the east. So as of right now, again, two tornado warnings uh, and a severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 830, that from McLean County. Let's check in with uh, Storm Command right now. Michael Armstrong watching this storm real closely. Michael, Michael, what stands out to you right now with this cell? Well, I, what, for one thing, the initial tornado, uh, it dissipated. So then you had a surge of wind that has come out east of it, out of Newcastle. You can see this really well on the terminal Doppler, by the way, Damon. So right now it has crossed the river, and where the center of that circulation is is right along Tecumseh, and the north-south road is going to be 72nd Avenue northwest. It is not as strong as the rotation was earlier when it was producing the tornado there west and southwest of Newcastle. However, uh, it could spin up again. And so that's what we're concerned about because this storm has a history of producing tornadoes. Anytime a storm shows you it's capable of producing a tornado, you never take your eyes off of it. And that's exactly why we have it surrounded Chris Lee, Nick Smith, myself, Sky 5. This storm is not going to make it anywhere without us knowing what's going on with it. Buck King here as well. So our all of our crews, you guys are tracking on radar precisely, and we're gonna we're gonna walk all of you through this here in the metro. Listen, I know we've been through a lot of tornadoes. It's been a, a tough spring, like back on April 19th. But here's the thing. We we're we're gonna let you know exactly where it is. Don't panic. Have a plan and put it into action once you're under the tornado warning. That includes more in Norman right now. And, and now Dibble as well. So we have a new tornado warning, by the way, that's being written up. And so we're about to see another tornado warning. So that'll make three tornado warnings right now. So, uh, so we're going to watch this cell right here. Again, down by Dibble. Down by Dibble as well. So as of right now, again, this tornado warning that for Cleveland County it still continues. We're gonna watch it. Here's our new circulation, by the way, that we're keeping a close eye on. That's gonna be southwest of Dibble. Dibble, your alarms are about to go off. The siren's about to go off. Dibble, uh, this one's beginning to strengthen as well. So we're gonna have to watch this one real closely as it moves up to northeast. And it is headed towards coal. Again, coal. I know, I know, I know. Uh, so anyway, southwest of Dibble, that's gonna be the new tornado warning right there. It's about to be written up as we speak. So. When that comes out, we'll, we'll jump back down to this. Uh, let's check in with Derek Klein, by the way. That's going to be on the, uh, what we call Tail and Charlie uh, with this cell right now. Derek, you've been watching this storm closely. How's, this, how's it look to you, Derek? Yeah, Damon. So there is, a, again, kind of like the Dibble storm that we were just on just a little bit ago. It does have some lift. Um, the rotation is fairly weak. Now, what we did find that's interesting is there's actually two areas or almost two supercells that are stacked together right here now. Not for sure what that will do to the storm, but I'm going to use my 360 cam so you can see this is looking to my west, um, just to the north of Rush Springs. That is an area of rotation. You can see the scud hanging down. I'm going to pivot the 360 camera back to my east, and there's another area of, of rotation, another updraft, another area that's spinning as well. So we're just going to set right here in between the two of them. We're going to watch back and forth, and if any of them decide to intensify, we'll have both of them in our eyesight. We'll let you know exactly what we see. Back to you. Okay, so if you're down towards uh, Alex, uh, Alec, Derek Klein's watching this one closer for you. Okay, 
let's go back up into Cleveland County on the radar. So, by the way, we've been talking a lot about the, the overall tornado threat. Also, we do have a, a flood threat that's going to be increasing as well. A short-term flood threat, but given how slow these storms are moving, how much rain's coming out of them as well, be aware that we're probably going to get some flood advisories coming out here pretty soon. Overall, you can see here Jonathan's kind of highlighting, uh, or he is highlighting exactly where the rotation is, right on top of the river, right on top of the Canadian River. It's just not nearly as tight. It's not nearly as strong. It's still rotating. So listen up. Tornado warning still remains. However, as we've been saying, this is trending in the right direction. We just got to keep watching the trend over and over and over. But at this moment, again, this tornado warning goes about another 10 minutes. Norman Healthplex, 817. Norman North High School, 824. Hollywood Corners here at 827. Timber Creek Elementary School, this could be just north of, of uh, Hollywood Corners here by about two miles. 831, that's on Bryant. Uh, or I'm sorry, Sunny Lane. Uh, 832, Belmar. Turtle Lake, neighborhood addition there at South at uh, 149th. Uh, that's going to be about 834 Pepperwell Oaks, uh, just east of there at 838, and then Stanley Draper at 853 with this current this current track. Again, this current track moving up to northeast. Tornado warning remains, although overall the circulation, the couplet continues to come down. Brand new tornado warning. Here it is right here. It's just been highlighted, so this does. Now, this one does include Norman, so Norman, this might get a little confusing. So let's simplify this for you there in Norman. Norman, you have two tornado warnings. If your phone just went off, is for this cell that's going to be west of Dibble. So you are technically included in two tornado warnings right now, Norman, but the newest alert that you just got on your phone is gonna be for this cell that's gonna be down by Dibble. So at that track, that's moving up towards Dibble at 817, Cole at 832, Goldsby, or Washington 841, Goldsby at 849. Then we get to OU at 902, downtown Norman, just a few minutes after at 9.04. That's where you can see the hook right. You can see the inflow coming in. Uh, this will be right over State Highway 76. And so here's Cole. By the way, here's Dibble. Dibble, you would be going into the innermost room of your house, your tornado shelter with this one uh, coming in. Again, these storms, these have produced some very well-pronounced lowerings, even uh, w some tornadoes that may not last very long. However, they do last long enough to be on the ground, and you can definitely see them. So we, we're watching this one closely as it continues to move up to northeast. And again, I know Cole, you all had to deal with this a couple weeks ago, and we're hoping that none of us have to deal with this again for tonight. Uh, but Cole, you are under another tornado warning again with this storm projected to move in in the next 25 minutes, moving uh, about 25 miles per hour with this cell right here. Jonathan, we've been watching these areas of embedded circulations within, with this entire line. This looks like it's a bit more dominant now than what we have up in uh, Cleveland County. Yeah, right I'm not trying to downplay the Norman storm by any measure, okay? Michael is there, Sky 5 is there. That storm is, I feel as if, it, uh, if I had to put on a scale like one to five, or channel five, makes sense, right? So on a scale one to five, I put like at a two, maybe a two and a half, it's right there, we're watching it. But the storm to the south, the Dilble storm, it's forward flank. So imagine these storms are, are they're just spewing moisture up in the atmosphere. Thousands of feet. These storms go up to 40, 50,000 feet. And that rain has to fall when it does. Uh, the, what we call this the forward flank or the anvil, and I'll just draw that part here. So imagine the updraft is where I circled the arrows here. That's where all the moisture is being pulled up, and then it comes out, and that big anvil, that's going to be a, a canopy of rain. You're going to have hail in there, even though we haven't seen a lot of hail so far. I, I'm, I'm thinking that this middle storm, the Dibble middle storm, might be impacting might be impacting the Norman storm. Again, I'm not downplaying. I'm just looking at the meso analysis, what I think, and then what I'm seeing on radar. What I'm seeing on radar is that the middle storm, the Dibble storm, does have a slightly stronger circulation. Now that one, on a scale of one to five, I put like a 2.5 to three. I mean, I'm trying to give you as much precision as I, as I can give you. Watching that one has good inflow into it. And like Derek said, it's like, hey, these things have all hooked up. They daisy chain together. Sometimes they're balanced. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they crush each other. It's literally like a living uh, beast and they change and they fluctuate. So you just have to kind of watch it scan by scan. But Damon, I mean, we literally have three tornado warnings one now including from Moore to Norman, the next one from Cole to Dibble, and the next one that's going to be coming into Alec and Bradley. Yeah, and right now with the latest outlook that we have coming in right now, basically, uh, if you're west of I-44, 
your severe weather is basically now done for the rest of the evening here. But if you're east of I-44, which Dibble you are, Norman you are, Moore you are, a lot of us are, uh, then the risk is still there for you. So we're tracking this one closely. Coming in, again, updated storm track. Here we are, Dibble Cole, Washington, 812 to 836. Coming in, Norman, right around 9 o'clock. Let's get an update for those up in Cleveland County. Uh, let everyone know what's happening because this tornado warning is set to expire in the next five minutes. Now, by the way, a ton of rain coming in with this, too, by the way. It is, it's going to rain. This storm is still circulating. And so you can see it right on top of the Canadian River here. Uh, here's Storm Command. Uh, there's Nick Smith. Here's Norman Healthplex. So we're coming up towards uh, southwest of 34th Street and more. Moving to the east, so this is 4th Street right here, but at this current track right now, again, this is still going to produce, again, a ton of rain as it's coming in, and it will cross over uh, much of much of the, uh, of the city of Moore, but it is, it is considerably less, there's, there's, it's considerably weaker when it comes to circulation than what we had earlier. Still there, but this warning still remains. Again, right now it's 810. So we're not giving you the all clear yet. On the other side, again, watch out. There's a lot of rain that's coming in with this, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down for a bit here and more down to Norman. But right now, the circulation, it's right on top of the Canadian River, uh, making its way over the river and now about to come into the west side of Moore. As a matter of fact, there's Nick, there's Storm Command. Let's check in right now with Michael on this. Michael, give us an update on what you're seeing. Yeah, Damon, we're right ahead of the lowered area right now. It's going to be tracking down Franklin Road. Uh, it, it is a little, it's, it's not as tight as what it was, definitely, on the velocities. It's actually approaching the terminal Doppler weather radar, so it's got, like, I mean, it has got a really, really good sample of this low-level velocity field in and around the lowered area. So that, that's what the lowering looks like right in front of me. It's a very, I mean, it's very pronounced. Um, what we don't see, though, that, that is not a tornado, folks. I know it looks, like, really ominous there. That is not a tornado right there. However, this is where the low, all of the winds are converging together and wrapping around together. So if, if there is a tornado, it's going to come right down Franklin Road uh, if, from the way it looks right now. Now, I mean, these things change and evolve as they move along. But right now it's going to be uh, near Franklin and 60th Avenue Northwest moving over toward 48th. Okay, so you're still on the west side of I-35 here with this right now, with this, again, this, this warning right now against 811. We'll see how this tornado warning is going to uh, be impacted because at 815, it's, it's set to expire. It is still rotating as it moves to the east. Again, we're watching it now. More. Here's more. Here's Norman. There's Nick. There's Buck. As a matter of fact, let me check in with Nick Smith right now. Nick, we see you just on the north side of Flood Avenue here right on I-35. Nick, how are things right now on the south, on the north side of Norman, south side of Moore? Yeah, so Damon, right now we are on Indian Hills Road. Um, we just went across the railroad tracks off. Uh, we're on the east side of I-35 now. We're going to get over on um, Franklin Road, and we're going to try to just stay out in front of this thing. Uh, what I am noticing, Damon, is um, back behind us. I'm looking back into. The, we're seeing a little a bit funnel, more. Funnel, we have funnel. some huge. Halfway down. We have some, oh, oh. Okay, hey Nick, we'll come back to you in just a second. Let's go out to Derek Klein. Derek, we see your stream here, Derek. Give us an update on what you're seeing. Uh, halfway, three quarters of the way to the ground, Damon. And uh, this is going to be really close to the town of Alec, okay? So this, uh, we're looking from the south to the north. You can see the funnel halfway to the ground here. We're going to try to get up on top of this hill. Uh, we may stop here, but this is definitely halfway, at least halfway to the ground. Uh, the uh, okay, so Derek. Two different rotations. Yeah, so Derek, by the way, your, 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 your picture is good. Derek, your picture is good. Um, we're watching this right here, so your audio kind of comes and goes every now and then. But this is what Derek is watching right now. Again, this is this is a funnel, by the way, down by Bradley Alex. So watching it, uh, it was a little bit lower, just about 30 seconds ago. Let's show this on the radar. Let's go up to the. Let's go back to the radar real quick. So what Derek is watching, it's this inflow right here, south of Ninica. There's Alec. That's what Derek is watching right there, southwest of Alec and west of Bradley. Um, so. Okay, hey, Derek, let's go back out to you again. Derek, uh, how's it look now? You're a little bit higher. Yeah, it, it's definitely still rotating. It's probably not quite as strong as it was, but there's still kind of intermittent funnels underneath there. A uh, really nice bowl shape. I can see the rain sheet, so I think if it were to touch down, down even, even with the rain sheets, we'd be able to see. There's another good funnel now right in the center of it again, probably about halfway down again here. So um, it continues to try to cycle and spin up. And, and it really it kicked the other rotation out, and that's when it really started to take off. We noticed it really started to hang lower. 
um, start to smoothen out and create that bowl shape underneath it. I haven't seen it touch the ground, but it's gotten really close a couple times. It wouldn't be surprised if it did uh, briefly touch the ground. It would have been weak, though, if, if it did. But, uh, again, that funnel, that last one is lifted now. Um, but you can still see really, really good rotation under there, really, really nice scud. The little fingers um, that you would see funnels come out of are, are dangling underneath. Continued. It's again really close to Alec right now. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit south of Alec. All right. We're, we'll we'll keep a close eye on that one. Hey, uh, Jonathan, let's go back up into Cleveland County real quick. We'll jump back down and talk to Derek in just a moment. Just want to get an update uh, on what's about to happen here in Cleveland County. Again, this tornado warning is set to expire. This one that includes more uh, is set to expire in the next 10 seconds here. So right now, it, there's still rotation. I mean, it is still rotating. Although it looks like it might be getting a surge of stronger winds that are kind of wrapping in with this. Right now, the, the tightest couplet, it's still right on top of the river, the Canadian River here. Uh, let me go back out to Michael, if I can. Michael, uh, give us an update on what you're seeing right now with this area of circulation now crossing over the Canadian River. Okay, well, Damon, it's right in front of us. Uh, you can see it right there. We're basically at the same location, so we're at Franklin and 60th Avenue Northwest, okay? So you can see the lowered area, the cloud. I mean, it. this is this area is spinning right in here, and you can see the motion. Look at that. You see the motion in the cloud right to left? You can tell really well because you can see the power lines there, and that gives you a frame of reference. So I zoomed in a little bit. That is flowing from north to south. Meanwhile, you've got inflow coming in from the other side. So that you can see just, just how low it is right there, Damon. I mean, it is just hovering right on top of Franklin and Northwest 60th. This, this seems to be trying, it, it, what happens, Damon, is the tornadoes kind of form on the north end of this surge of wind that's coming out over 48th. So you might be getting some wind over at 48th and Tecumseh, but what is happening is the area of circulation, and if something were to spin up, is about a mile northwest of that. And this storm seems to be picking up in strength again from what it was when it crossed the river. Oh, here's the, here's the news information. So tornado warning has expired from this, but it looks like a surge of strong winds is coming in with this. So severe thunderstorm warning now for this storm with the mention of a tornado, possible tornado, but this is a severe thunderstorm warning. And we're definitely getting at least a surge of some strong winds are now starting to get pulled into this. And so this is a, now about to cross over the Canadian River where the strongest winds are going to be located. So here's Briarwood. Here's going to be Southmore High School. We're going to be on the west side of I-35. There's still an area, a, a kind of a circulation couplet right now. It's not very strong, but there's definitely some strong winds that are getting ready to blow uh, just north of Rock Creek. And so there's Briarwood. Uh, here's going to be uh, uh, here's going to be Southmore High School. There's Norman Healthplex here. We're on the west side of I-35. Uh, so again, severe thunderstorm warning. That one's coming out. Now, tornado warning remains with this cell. By the way, there's Chris Lee south of Goldsby. Still finding circulation very close to Dibble. That's moving up to the northeast, headed towards Cole at 8.35, uh, and then making its way towards Sooner Mall, 9.02, downtown Norman, 9.09. Uh, let me check back in with Chris Lee, if I can, see what Chris Lee. Chris Lee, uh, you're on another tornado warning now. Chris Lee, give us an update on what you're seeing. Yeah, not seeing a whole lot of rotation with this storm yet. We're just kind of moving in. And again, you know, we have to be very close because these things are, are wrapped in rain. We're headed towards the coal area, as you may recall. Uh, just gate. a few weeks ago, had a tornado come through here. So uh, I'm sure these people are very nervous, just the, the thought of the possibility of a tornado. But uh, we are uh, we're headed west. And uh, we'll be uh, coming into the town of Cole very shortly. Give you an update if we see anything specific. But not seeing anything uh, anywhere, right. uh, or not seeing any guys tornado right now. Okay, so a bit of a change here. So new tornado warning was just issued. Originally, it was going to be a severe thunderstorm warning for Norman. Now we're going back to a tornado warning. And there it is. So we're basically back in it. Uh, we were hoping that this was going to weaken, but Michael, Michael has a funnel. Michael, out to you we go, Michael. Give us an update. Okay, Damon. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, I can see it a little bit better now. Now I've got the lowering. I'm trying to see if that. Uh, yeah, it is a funnel. Okay, this is a funnel. It's at Northwest 60th and Franklin. It's moving due east. You can. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but we do have the the sirens, outdoor warning sirens, are sounding here in Northwest Norman. You can definitely cl clearly see the funnel right there. I mean, it. What I don't see is anything. I'm going to zoom in actually for just a second, Damon. I'm going to zoom in on the ground, see if I can see anything spinning on the ground right in there in the rain, um, right underneath that funnel. 
there, there are rotating rain curtains. I can see them visually. But what, you see them right there, Damon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we definitely see them. Um, so the storm, again, there's a, there's, a t there's a small little area of circulation that's right now going to be now east of the Canadian River. Michael, what, what, what are you seeing now? Oh, our winds are, our winds are really increasing. Look at, look at the ground right here. It's pulling rain into it rapidly. Kyle, let's turn around and go east. Uh, we have a tornado right now on Franklin. Um, it, may be, it may be just south of Franklin, actually, maybe a half a mile. Um, the wind is really, really cranking right now, Damon, across this field right here. Uh, we're going we're gonna to pull in behind it. We're going to go right down Franklin and watch it from behind now. But it is going right down Franklin and is going to be approaching 48th Avenue very, very shortly. The, oh, the couple that's really tightened up, too, on radar. It, 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 is, it definitely, it, is definitely right here. It really has. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's put the Norman camera up if we can, by the way. Jonathan, you said you've seen a, a, a right there on look at the circulation it's rapid yeah it's picking up um so by the way johnson control cam so here it is right here that's it right here so okay so we're looking west by the way uh over the norman health plex so this will be flood and then here's i-35 right here so we're looking we're looking out to the west setting sun you can definitely see that lowering coming in with this uh, again this is it from uh from our Johnson Controls camera again, right along, uh, right there, just runs parallel flood and I-35. Okay, let me show exactly where this is on the radar. Let's put the radar back up behind me. We'll go street by street, zoom in real tight, right here. As a matter of fact, let's zoom in. So this is right on Franklin. So here's the Norman Healthplex, by the way. Southmore High School's up here. Uh, this is gonna be just west, so um, let's see here. You're gonna have a bunch of auto dealerships right here, Nissan, Toyota. Uh, this is gonna be just south of Hayday. Uh, so there's Southmore right there. Southwest 164. This is right on Franklin Road on the west side of I-35. Let's go out to Buck. Buck, out to you. We go, Buck. What do you see? Hey, Damon. We're on Northwest 12th uh, between Franklin and Indian Hills Road. And in my shot is the storm that Michael's looking at. But as I pan the 360 camera over here, watch you in the area of rotation here to the north about two miles of where Michael is. And we've seen some lowerings out of it, and it's definitely rotating. So we have a great shot of both of these uh, different uh, areas of rotation. We're going to stay right here, and if we see anything on the ground, we'll let you know. Okay, yeah, definitely has a, a kind of a bit of a, uh, a unique loop with this as the storm is kind of picking back up its rotation as the, uh, as the low-level winds are beginning to feed into this. And so it's, it's turning more east. So looking at Franklin, eventually moving right over I-35 uh, as you make your way uh, down eventually towards on the east side towards the train tracks here. But again, right now we are south of Southmore High School. Here's Southmore High School. Here's Norman Healthplex. Uh, there's Storm Command. Uh, let's go out to Nick Smith. Let's go out to Nick. Nick, circulation about one mile, if even that, to your west. Nick, what do you see? Yeah, Damon, we are, uh, we're trying to get to Tumsa right now. We're, we were watching the thing that uh, we're, um, what Buck was watching, and we're actually trying to get back to the south right now. So we're going to get to Tecumseh, and we're probably going to keep on going past Tecumseh. Uh, our winds had increased a little bit, um, but we're still, we don't see it because the, it's raining so hard. Back to you. Okay, definitely. And so this is going to stay, uh, some of these neighborhoods that are out here. So this is uh, right now uh, south of Talavera. Uh, the neighborhood there, Talavera, south of Southmore High School, still watching this, moving to the east slowly. Here's Broadmoor Elementary School, the old Broadmoor Golf Course right here. Here's I-35 to give, a per give perspective as to where we are. There's the Norman Healthplex. That's the circulation. We are about a mile, if even that, south of Southmore High School. Let me check back in with Storm Command. Michael, how's it look now? Michael, how's it looking now? Are you trying to? Okay, sorry, I couldn't hear you. I was trying to hear you there. Um, yeah, so uh, it looks like traffic is stopping on I-35. A lot of wind right here. And we are going down uh, right into. So we were coming down toward Tecumseh right now, right at the Helplex. So we'll tell you, you know, if we start seeing any damage, uh, people are stopped here on I-35 right now as we come up toward the Helplex. You can see it right there in my shot. Um, yeah, things are starting to clear out a little bit. So let me let me look visually in the sky right now. Um, it, it seems like, Damon, and you might be able to look at this on radar as well, it seemed like it kind of spun up real quick.
and now it's the velocities have, are not as tight as they were. It's still spinning, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't seem like it's as tight. Maybe Jonathan can offer some expertise on that as well. Yeah, we're looking. So definitely there's a surge of strong winds that's coming out of this. So putting in perspective exactly where we are, because we are hyper, hyper local on this one. So again, here's Briarwood Elementary, Southmore High School, uh, very large neighborhood, Talavera. That's going to be right there on the west side of I-35. And then strong winds that are surging out towards the Norman Healthplex. Uh, Bart Connor, uh, gymnastics right here. And then here you have, there's going to be on, this will be on the north side of Max Westheimer Airport, surging out towards Hollywood Corners. So Hollywood Corners right here is going to be uh, right there at that corner uh, that where Buck is located. And then strong winds kind of surging up to the northeast. So here's Broadmoor Elementary School. Here's Heritage Trails Elementary School. What I'm watching right here is for a, a small area of circulation that is trying to spin up right here, just south of Broadmoor Elementary School. Again, there's Broadmoor. Uh, here's Heritage Trails Elementary. Uh, you're going to have a Best Buy, large, uh, very busy commercial district right here. This is 19th Street, by the way, which then becomes 149th coming, into, uh, uh, coming back into Oklahoma City. Here's Belmar. You're going to have Royal Bavaria right here. Strong winds and a bunch of neighborhoods that are going to be located. Funnel. Jonathan, you have a yeah, funnel. Uh, Damon, here's what's going on. So there's two areas of circulation. The RFD, those arrows, that's, that's where the RFD cut in. And there's a new mesocyclone. The old one is the circle on the left. The circle on the right, one mile northwest from Buck King, that's a new circulation. That's a new wall cloud. I have it on the Johnson Control Cam. You have a little tiny funnel hanging off the left side of the wall cloud there. Yeah. So new circulation. Michael asked for my opinion. That's my opinion. Circulation was on the left. New cir circulation formed. That's new circulation is going to be one, two miles north of Michael. It's going to be one mile northwest of Buck King. So one mile northwest of Hollywood Corners. Mm -hmm. And again, well-defined wall cloud there. And on the back side, there, there, at times, there's a little funnel poking down there. So new circulation. The storm has cycled. That's the area we're going to have to watch. So that's going to be two miles west of the Belmar Golf Club that's going to be kind of coming down southeast 34th mm -hmm. and uh, it's about two miles west of Sooner Road. That's the new circulation. Clear as day, this happens. You get old circulations pulled in, new circulations form as the RFD cut comes around, boom, you get the new tornado warning. Yeah, so that's what we're watching right now. So again, highlighting being specific. Again, here's Broadmoor um, and then you're going to have uh, here's Hollywood Corners, which, by the way, if you, if, you, if you live in this area, you know exactly where Hollywood Corners is. Uh, here's Belmar in Royal Bavaria, Sooner Road. Uh, here's going to be 19th Street, Broadway. And then you're going to have, uh, this is going to stay south. Right now, we are south of Heritage Trails Elementary School. Uh, but this is, this is surging to the east. And so there's going to be some strong winds with this as well as it continues to make its way towards the east. And it's headed very close to Moore Norman Tech. Again, headed very close to Moore Norman Tech. Let's check in with... Chris Lee, okay, real quick, Chris Lee, a uh, couple seconds, and we'll come back out to you. Chris, what do you see coming in the coal right now? What do you see coming in the coal? Yeah, I am just to the east of coal, looking to my southwest. This is, a, this is a lowering to the south of coal, seeing quite a bit of rotation. have not seen anything come to the ground, but every once in a while it starts to wrap the rain all the way around uh, this, this circulation area, which is what it did when it produced a tornado earlier. So this is the rotation area. It's going to go to the east of coal, south and east of coal. It's moving very slowly to the northeast, okay. but we're watching it here from Highway 74B, All right, and uh, we'll let you know. Okay. We'll keep a close eye with you on Chris. And Chris is right in Cole. He'll let us know. Let's go back up into Moore, back up into Norman right here. Get an update once again with what we're seeing now coming in. Again, tornado warning still remains in effect. And so right now the circulation continues kind of a, it's going to be south, just very close to Broadmoor Elementary School. Um, very close to Broadmoor. Definitely some strong winds are about to surge right over Sooner Road. You can see a little area of a lowering right here, a, a rotation couplet. Okay, this could be right on top of Belmar and coming right up towards Royal Bavaria. This is south of Turtle Lake. South of Turtle Lake, uh, you're going to have uh, Bella Maria right here. There's going to be an on-go right here. You have a uh, Sonic right here. So this is going to be making its way just south of that. South of that, here's 4th. Here's 19th. I mean, we're getting real close into this. And again, we're very close to Timber Creek Elementary School right about now. Turtle Lake, Pepperwell Oaks, and then headed towards Stanley Draper. Let me check back in with Buck. 
Buck, the circulation's right in front of you. Buck, what do you see? Yeah, Damon, we're looking right at it. It's not real organized right now. It's definitely have a lowering uh, near the ground, um, but we've not seen anything come out of it yet, and we are right here beside it. I mean, we're within a mile of it probably, so we have a great view of it. We're going to stick right here, keep our eyes on it, and get back to you if we see anything. Okay, so we see exactly uh, where you are, Buck. Again, you're going to be very close to Belmar. Here's Timber Creek Elementary. There's Broadmoor, Turtle Lake. Again, for those that are familiar with this area, you have Turtle Lake, you have Bella Maria neighborhood right here. This is now coming out of more, coming back into OKC. This is technically, uh, this area right here technically becomes back into OKC as we're now on the far eastern side of Moore. So if you're out by Heritage Trails or uh, out towards Highland East, this is going to be staying south and east of you. Flood advisory just issued as well for this. Just add that to the list of everything else that we have ongoing with a lot of heavy rain that's now uh, making its way through here. But tornado warning still remains for basically just very close to Belmar. Again, it's not it's not a very tight couplet, but it's definitely there and uh, definitely getting some strong winds are surging out with this as well. Once again, coming into uh, right up the Sooner Road and uh, coming very close. Again, there's Timber Creek Elementary School. Timber Creek Elementary School. And then you're going to have, um, again, Royal Bavaria Restaurant. Again, I know this is an area that doesn't have a lot of commercial district, a lot of commercial spots, but for those that are in this area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So again, you're close to Belmar and Timber Creek Elementary uh, coming right up towards Pepperwell Oaks. That's going to be on the east side of Sooner and right at Southeast 100 and 49th Street. Again, left-hand side of your television screen. We're looking, we're looking, but there's Buck. There's Storm Command. Let me go back out to Michael. Michael, you and Buck are looking right into the heart of these strong winds in this area of rotation. What do you see, Michael? Great. Okay. Hang on. Okay, yeah, we're good, Kyle. Okay, we're looking, we're going straight north here, Damon. So we have a lot of forward areas here just south. Uh, yeah, you're calling it out on exactly where the, the intersections are. Where I'm seeing where the rotation is is going to be uh, 34th. Uh, let's see, it's going to be very close to 34th and Eastern. And that's where exactly where my camera's pointed right there. What I would tell you is that it's very ragged. If, as I look, just look with my 360 camera, Damon, you can see that there's a lot of lowered areas all along here. One good thing about it is, even though it does have the tornado warning and you need to, everybody needs to take their tornado precautions and stay there, is there's not, you know, a singular funnel. There's not any, I don't see any power flashes or anything like that right now at this moment. But any time it looks like that, man, it could develop at any moment. It really could. It, it absolutely could. So uh, once again, for those that are going to be anywhere from Belmar up towards Southeast 149th, so again, a couple co commercial spots there. You have a Tinker Federal Credit Union, Ongo Gas Station. Uh, you have a Sonic right here, right at uh, Southeast 149th and Sooner. Watching the circulation coming in. Michael's showing these pictures. Buck is showing the pictures as well. Uh, this is a tornado warning, but nothing is on the ground. Now, it doesn't mean nothing can spin up uh, in the next couple seconds, but still, we're watching it. Now, by the way, really concerned uh, not only about the, the tornadoes that we're still watching, but also the, uh, the flood threat that's really ramping up as well. Let me check in with Chris Lee real quick. Chris Lee, what do you see coming in the cold right now? We see a circulation couplet on the radar. What do you see visually? Yeah, we're still watching this uh, this lowering, and it's definitely getting uh, wrapped up into the rain. We're, we have a pretty good view of it, and we can see that it is rotating and coming towards the ground. Don't see anything on the ground at this point, but uh, very definitely concerned. This is the area of rotation. We're, what, we're just a little bit east of the town of Cole, and it's just to the south of the highway. Um, so this is going to go to the east of Cole. Can't tell. I starting to lose a little bit of definition. It, it's getting very close to the ground, Damon. It really is. Uh, I mean, we can definitely see that, Chris. I mean, your pictures right here are really helping us out, helping us all out, helping Oklahoma out, and definitely helping out those in coal about what's headed in this direction. Definitely lowering. Uh, we'll continue to watch it closely. We'll go back over to more. We'll check back in with Cole here in just a second. Let's go back up into Cleveland County uh, at this current track again, getting close to Norman, but it's still down by Cole. But if you're in Cleveland County right now, again, I know this, the sirens are sounding, tornado warning until 9 o'clock for another 27 minutes. Definitely getting some strong winds that are surging out, by the way, east of I-35. I'm sorry, east of, east of I-35 and east of Sooner Road as well. Uh, headed out towards Franklin, which you have right here, Robin Hill School. Right now, any area of circulation, this is going to be very close to, uh, there's a Markham's, uh, going to be located here just right across from Belmar, 
And uh, this is going to be just located just south of the Sonic there. That's going to be on the east side of Sooner Road. Uh, again, that's where we're finding some of these strong winds are now really starting to get uh, pulled into this. And that's going to surge out towards Franklin and down towards Robin Hill School. They're right at the corner of Franklin. So Franklin, 849, Lake Stanley Draper, 854, Stella. 929 Dale in McLeod. We're going out towards 1030 with this right here. Um, again, right now, Michael and Buck, they have been reporting, giving us a lot of valuable information, really helping to make sure that you have all of the uh, all the facts right now. And uh, that's what we're watching right now. Okay, let me go back down to uh, down to coal. Like we're gonna be jumping back and forth. More, we'll come back to you in just a second, but we are concerned about coal. Now let me go out to Chris Lee. Chris, what do you see? Yeah, it definitely is is very close to the ground. We can see rotation. Um, don't see anything coming to the ground yet. This is to the south of Highway 74B. Uh, we're just about one mile east of the town of Cole. Uh, very rural out here, but um, we can see. Like I said, just it's very definitely rotating, and and it, at times it's come fairly close to the ground. Right now, we don't see anything on the ground. Uh, but it is kind of, you see the little funnels coming, pointing towards the ground at times. And then sometimes the rain will wrap all the way around it. And that's what it did when it uh, tornadoed earlier that, that we saw the tornado. It, it uh, the rain, the circulation caused the rain to wrap all the way around it. Uh, you can kind of see it doing that. The rain is to the right side of the screen, that darker part. But now there's two area, two two funnels, but I, the main rotation seems to be that one is, is on the center of the screen. Yeah, we definitely we're definitely we're definitely keeping a very close eye on that for Cole. I tell you what, Cole, look, I understand. I understand the concerns you have right now, based off of what you've had to experience in the last couple of weeks. So, Cole, I I understand what how you're feeling right now. Right now, this is south, south of Cole, but Chris Lee is watching it. We still see that rotating couplet at this current track. Cole now 8:58 Goldsby, uh, OU National Weather Center there at 9:10. It's about another 40 minutes from now, so we'll continue to watch this. Um, Jonathan, how's it looking back up, by the way, up in Cleveland County? Uh, we were watching some strong winds earlier wrapping in, uh, wrapping around east of Sooner. Uh, what stands out to you now? Yeah, that's a great question there, Damon. So, um, well, Michael's in the right spot, I'll tell you that much. I, I think the, the RFD, which is a, an acronym for roof flank downdraft winds, I think the winds have kind of spun around through this area right here where I'm drawing the, the can we take, yeah, take a full, the arrows. There may be some circulation between Buck and between Storm Command there. That's gonna be east of I-35, between I-35 and uh, Sooner Road there near uh, Heritage Trails Elementary School and then Broad, uh, Broadmoor Elementary School. So we'll have to watch that closely. Um, it's, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it, oh, is Chris Lee's? Okay. We probably just need to go back down to Chrisley. I, I think this nothing indicative right now of the Norman <coughs> storm, the more Norman storm, Damon, that says to me it's screaming tornado right now. Yeah. So I, on the rotation side, it's a two out of five for me. Yeah, and, and I would say based off of what we see right now, again, north side of, of Moore up into northern Cleveland County, a lot of rain coming down, by the way. Um, but nothing really says, look, you need to be jumping into your tornado shelter right now with that stuff. Really, the circulation is, has really improved in a pretty big way. Let's go back out to Chris Lee, out by Cole. Chris, what do you have? Yeah, that funnel has come very, very close to the ground. It may, may be, I don't see the condensation all the way to the ground, but you can see it, it's gotten very close to the ground. Don't see any debris or anything like that. But that is much closer to the ground than it was when we spoke just a few minutes ago. Uh, it is now, um, it's now just a little bit, it, it's just to the south of, of 74B, um, within probably a quarter mile of where we are, just due south, we're about a mile east of, of the town of Cole. We've kind of been sitting here on a bridge uh, for uh, for the last 30 minutes while watching it get closer. Uh, it is going to go to our south, but you can see the, the shape of it. It just appears to me that if, if it's not on the ground, it's very close to the ground. I, I can't see any debris coming up, but you can see condensation almost to the ground and very rapid rotation in there. I know we're starting to lose a little bit of light, but um, I, it looks very close to being a tornado on the ground. It's definitely, I mean, Chris, when you, when you, when you pan out like that, we can definitely see it, Chris. Oh, that's close, Chris. Chris, that's, that's real close. Yeah, I, 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 I think it's on the ground. I think you just can't see it behind those trees or whatever, or, or and a lot of times it's not picking up enough debris to, to show 
if there's not anything but trees or, or open field over there. But, yeah, I would think looking at that chain, oh, yes? uh, I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit. You can see yeah. that, yeah, it's definitely all the way to the ground now. Yeah, that's definitely a tornado. That is definitely a tornado. Look at that right here. Okay, so this is coming in from Chris Lee. It's coming from Chris Lee. Again, you can see it's white. It's, it's, it's white. And so given the kind of the daylight situation we're in right now, but that's it right now. Hey, Chris, just a heads up. From what we see here in the TV station, if you can zoom out just a little bit, kind of gives us a better perspective of it because we can contrast it with, with, uh, with what's surrounding it. But there it is right there. That's, Chris, that's definitely, that is definitely uh, on the ground, Chris. And so, and I know, and I know Cole, it, it, uh, Cole, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I feel for you, Cole. You got to get back in your tornado shelter, Cole. Uh, please go into your tornado shelter right now with this storm for the innermost room of your house. It's very close. It's very close to Cole. Too close for comfort. Let's do a uh, let's do a two box because it looks like this is going to be on the east side of Cole. If you're just on the east side of Cole, um, then this is this is where this tornado is. Again, I want to put the radar back up here. We'll keep Chris Lee's shot up there, but that that's definitely there. There. So there's Cole. And so back a couple weeks ago, when we had the tornado that came through. It came in like this. So it came in on the west and the north side of Cole. Here we are now on the east side of Cole. So Cole, if you're if you're in downtown Cole, you're okay. But if you're on the east side of Cole, there it is right there. You can see on the left hand side of your television screen. Uh, coming in from Chris Lee, that right there, that's a tornado. And that same storm, by the way, here's Norman on the top of your television screen. On the south side of Norman, here's Goldsby. Heading in your direction. That thing's on the ground. Chris, uh, what do you see? You see any power flashes? Very definitely on the ground. No, I'm not seeing any power flashes. Uh, there are not, uh, um, I don't know it's crossed any power lines, but it definitely uh, definitely is on the ground now. Uh, it's moving, uh, it's probably now a couple of miles east of, of coal, moving away from coal, um, and it will be going north of Washington, I believe. Yeah, and so we, we definitely see this. So, by the way, again, if you're east of Cole, you're in your tornado shelter right now. Uh, Norman, this was headed in your direction, too, by the way. So uh, I want you to be aware of that. But, again, this is, this, this is the second tornado that Chris has seen today. The first tornado uh, was what prompted the tornado warning for Tuttle. We have it in our shot, too, Sabrina. Okay, uh, Nick, we hear you live on KOCO 5 now. Chris, or, uh, Chris and Nick are both on this storm. So we'll go out to Nick right now. Nick, what do you see? Yeah, Damon, we got a we got a look at it as we exited on uh, off the interstate. We got a little look at this at the tornado. We saw it. it's got that white little white shape to it. Um, and uh, man, oh, we're we're gonna hit the chaser convergence now. Uh, there's a lot of people still out here. Um, but I, I I'm trying to we're trying to acclimate ourselves. It looks like it's gonna be. It's gonna. It looks like it's gonna come up a little towards uh, the. Looks like Goldsby area. And yep, there it is. Hold on, let me get it back in the shot just for you. There it is. Yeah, can you you can see it with 360 cam, right yeah. there. You yeah, there. It's yeah, we the can ground. definitely see it. We can definitely see it. So it's right here. By the way, again, I know we're losing a bit of daylight, <clears throat> but there it is right there. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Jonathan, take it over just for a second. What do you see on the radar? Uh, you bet. Yeah, well, Damon, absolutely. We're losing daylight, low contrast. Chris Lee, Nick Smith, they're on the storm. They have it covered from two different perspectives. So Nick is to the east, so he's, he might get a little bit of contrast with it. Uh, Chris Lee is right there. Um, circulation, we're watching a radar really ramped up, and that's what we're getting out of the mesocyclone is that big laminar funnel. It looked like a truncated cigar cone. Now it looks a little bit more uh, like an elephant trunk. Not really wide at the ground, not really wide at the ground, but uh, watching it really closely. Damon, also just want to let you know, we need to probably revisit the Norman storm just a little bit here in a couple minutes and check in with Michael because circulation could be coming up a little bit with that. Uh, but again, and so that must be, is that Nick Smith? Yeah, yep, that's Nick on remote 14. So Nick has it, and then and then uh, Chris Lee's a lot closer to it. He's yeah, we definitely, get, getting kind of different perspectives from it. Chris is really close, Nick a bit farther out, but we can definitely see. Uh, we can definitely see, I mean, that thing's coming down. Let's go back out to Chris Lee. Chris, what do you see? Yeah, I've gone to IR mode on the camera, and I can see it a lot better. It's, it's really hard to see. Honestly, with my eyes, if I, if I didn't have the infrared, I don't know that I would see it, notice even what it is. But it's, a, it's about to cross the road. This is 74B, and you can see it's going to cross the road uh, a little bit in front of us. We're going to have to hold up here. But we're about three miles, um, yeah, three miles east of Cole, and it is crossing the highway right now. Uh, 74B Highway. Okay, we're going to keep a close eye on this. Uh, we do need to go back into Cleveland County because brand new tornado warning has just been issued 
And so again, this coming from Chris and Nick Smith, giving you a bit of a different perspective. Um, so brand new tornado warning, by the way, has just been issued. And so uh, this could be, it's, by the way, it's gonna be for that Southern cell. Um, so we'll get back to that one, but I do wanna at least get an update real quick for those that are in Cleveland County, out towards Franklin. Uh, big mass of storms coming in right now and now moving out towards Stanley Draper. Let me check in with Storm Command real quick. Michael, what do you see from where you are? Well, Damon, it really looks like at this point, this the one that's over nor, uh, more has really, the, the velocities of it's become very disorganized. Uh, if anything forms with it, this, it's going to be over south of Stanley Draper and probably uh, moving over more toward far northeastern Cleveland County. But it, there is nothing really that looks, I mean, I know it still has a tornado warning, but there's just nothing really tight, and we haven't seen anything visually. Might check with Buck. Buck might yeah. have just a, we, we saw him just a moment ago. You might check with him and see we, if he's got a little different perspective, but I'm just not seeing anything that would indicate to me that there's tornado okay. right at this moment. Okay, okay. You just want to give a quick update for those in Cleveland County. Okay, we'll go back down to Cole, back down to Norman. This new tornado warning does extend, by the way, into Pottawatomie County. Let's check back in with Chris Lee. Chris, you're right on top of the circulation. Chris, what do you see? Yeah, the tornado has lifted. You can see the funnel. The needle funnel is still up there. Uh, I'm looking off to my north uh, west from the from the highway, uh, but that is you can still see the funnel. But it it seems to be retreating up into the clouds. So I don't believe it is. Um, I don't believe it's on the ground. Now, I'm, I'm certain it's not on the ground right now. It crossed the road, did not see any damage. Uh, Jason, do you see anything, any kind of trees or anything like that? No, we didn't see any kind of damage. So uh, hopefully not much damage with this, at least at the road. Usually if there's if there's power lines or, or anything, fences, thing, trees, things like that that will get in the way, then uh, that uh, we'll see that. But I didn't. I honestly did not see any of that. Uh, when we went through the path where it crossed the road. So either it was up off the ground or doing very little damage at that point. Okay, well, we're keeping a close eye. And again, uh, out, out here, Cole, up towards Goldsby, feels like we're doing it all over again right now. At least this tornado, as of right now, it's uh, it's hasn't been as large as what we had a couple weeks ago, but it is headed towards the south side of Norman, down towards OU. This is it, Goldsby. You're in your tornado shelter right now, innermost room of your house. This is coming very close, very close to town. And again, we have Chris Lee right here. We have Nick Smith right here, uh, keeping a real close eye on this storm once again as it continues to make its way up to the north. So tornado warning up for more uh, on the west side of uh, Stanley Draper it is much weaker now. But this storm is still is still uh, now the dominant one. It feels like with this as it's moving up towards Goldsby and eventually down towards the south side of Norman out by, uh, out by OU. So once again, circulation couplet, very well defined, very well defined on the radar. And uh, it's, it's gonna cross over I-35 here in just a few minutes. Again, here's I-35 right here. Here's Goldsby, we're about four miles or so west of I-35. And Chris Lee's right on it, and Nick Smith is right on this as well. Both of them uh, giving us a, a, wonder, a, a, a fantastic view of this storm to help you know exactly what's coming in your direction. What's coming towards you, Goldsby, it's what you see here on the left-hand side of your television screen. And our storm chasers, they have night vision, so they're switching their cameras over, giving you an even more detailed view of what's coming in as the sun is now setting, now that it's almost 9 o'clock. So once again, there's Chris, there's Nick Smith. Let me check in with Nick Smith if I can, because Nick, you're looking right into this cell. Nick, give us an update on what you're seeing. Yeah, Damon, we are heading back to I-35. So we saw the, the tornado, you saw that just live just a few minutes ago, and then we saw it lift like what Chris said. But uh, we saw that uh, a little bit of it started, it, 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 it pulled back up, and I saw actually the, the wall cloud drop down a little bit again, and then we saw a big power flash underneath it. I don't know if that was a gust of wind coming out of it or if the tornado was back on the ground. We just couldn't see it. But uh, I would treat this thing like it's on the ground. I mean, that, that's, that's the way I'd do it. Just because we just we literally got off the interstate and saw it, and you could see it just clear as day with our 360 cam with that night vision technology. It's unbelievable. Blessed to have it, and we're able to capture that. Oh, it's back on the ground. Back out to Chris Lee. Chris, we just heard you yeah, say it's on the ground. What do you see? Yeah, you can't see it because it's behind the tree right now. But as soon as we move, see there it is. My shot. It's on the ground. Oh yeah. 
Okay. Uh, here, he'll he'll get that. There it is, right there. So again, using night vision, uh, using night vision. There it is, right there. Oh, that that's it, right there. So um, this is from Chris. This is from Nick. We're on the east side of Cole, headed up towards Goldsby. Again, Goldsby in your innermost room of your house, into your tornado shelter. Uh, here it is, right here. It's going to be this storm. It looks like it's been kind of coming down and going back up, going down and going back up. Looks like it's it's back up. Let's go back out to Chris. Chris, what what do you see right now, Chris? It does look like it's back up, and I I knew when you know when Nick was saying that about seeing the power flash. What what will happen is the rotation that is very tight in that in that funnel will kind of widen out, and then it, it, it'll it'll the circulation will be very strong at at the base for for a few minutes. Uh, it's it appears to be to have done that now, and you don't have that cone. Uh, that that funnel all the way to the ground you do have kind of that uh, that lowered area and that whole thing is rotating we've been watching that so it, it's been producing tornadoes out of that area uh that's that's what we've been watching all night long okay so heads up for those in noble and goldsby headed in your direction goldsby especially in your shelter innermost room of your house with this storm again here's the circulation we are about a mile about a mile southwest of Goldsby. This is very close, by the way, of crossing. It will cross over I-35 south of the Riverwind Casino. Uh, but here's the circulation right here. So here's Goldsby, I-35. That's the circulation on the left-hand side of your television screen. Using our night vision, there's definitely a lot. It looks like there's a lot of areas of rotation within this. Uh, Multi-vortex, absolutely. Here it is spinning right now. And this is going to be just north of State Highway 74B, right coming up towards State Highway 74, and that's a debris right there. We are picking up debris. See that blue? You gotta, it, it, takes, it, it takes a little bit of radar here, but when you pair up the velocity and that blue, that's debris. So we are definitely getting debris in this storm, headed towards Goldsby. Goldsby, tornado shelter, innermost room right now. On the left-hand side of your television screen, we know there's debris getting picked up within this because uh, we can see it with our debris tracker. Let me go out to Nick Smith. Nick has a bit of a different perspective of this. Nick, we have debris. We're, we're picking it up uh, with our radar, with our technology. Nick, what do you see? Absolutely, Damon. We are actually, we're just, man, we're not far from it right here. We're just on I-35, and we are just trying to get back on the other side right now. Yeah. I follow this thing. It comes into the south side of Norman and into the old See those power flashes? Um, I don't see it actually on the ground right now, but I'm not going to trust that um, just because of what I saw a minute ago. Um, it, it looked like it had, um, we didn't see the condensation funnel back down. It, it had gone back up, and then all of a sudden we saw those power flashes. So we're going to actually we're gonna keep on going. We're going to get up here and get, and get in a good position to be able to see this thing as it gets a little bit closer. Back to you, Dan. Okay, we're going to come back to you in a second. Let's put the radar back up. We'll, do, we'll put the radar back up because this is really starting to ramp up. This is getting stronger and stronger. Uh, very well, it could be one of the stronger couplets that we have seen so far. As we told you, right around sunset, those low-level winds are just rushing into this. And so this is now beginning to rotate. Once again, Goldsby, Noble, South Norman in your shelter. Yes, I know, South Norman. We had a tornado back at the end of February. We're watching this one real closely, even as you make your way. Uh, out towards Thunderbird as well. This current track, it will make its way up towards Lake Thunderbird and uh, very well could get very close to Highway 9, if not just stay south, but we're going to watch it. But that's the tornado. There's Goldsby. Goldsby, you have to be in your shelter, the innermost room of your house with the storm moving in. Uh, we have definitely been seeing some well-defined lowerings. Tornadoes have been skipping across the ground, but our radar, our technology here is indeed picking up on on debris. Uh, it is picking up debris with this cell right here about to come around the Goldsby. Not moving very quickly, but it is still moving. Let me go back out to Chris Lee. Chris Lee, what do you see? Yeah, it looks like we have another funnel coming down here in, in the center. We're starting to get wraparound rain here where we are, indicating that the circulation is getting stronger. You can see the clouds kind of moving around there in the rotation there. Uh, don't see a funnel on the ground right now. Uh, there have been times when it's been wrapped in rain and, and, and almost impossible to see. And you can see the rain uh, coming by us here. But uh, right now, I don't, I'm looking right at area of rotation, and I, I feel 
fairly certain I would see it if it were on the ground right now. And I, it, while it's rotating and, and could drop one very quickly, I don't see one on the ground right at this moment. But you can see the rotation right there in the center of the screen. That's, uh, that's uh, just a mile or two to the east of, uh, of uh, I'm sorry, to the west of I-35, a little bit south of Goldsby, but headed towards the Goldsby area for sure. Okay, let's put the radar back up. Here we are right here. Here's Goldsby. It, it's slowed down. It is really, really slowed down. Cole, by the way, you're good, okay? Cole, the threat's not over for you for the rest of the evening, uh, or at least for this storm, um, as this is now moving up to northeast. But, Nick, this is about one mile Oh, there's an update. There's, look how slow it moved, by the way. It didn't move very fast. But there's Nick. There's Chris Lee. I mean, we have this storm. We're looking right into it, both from the north and down to the south. That's your circulation. And so it's coming up very close to the tree farm there on the west side of uh, Goldsby, right along 290th Street. This is going to be just south of the Riverwind Casino. The Riverwind Casino is going to be right behind our banner right here. But this is I-35. Here's the Canadian River. Here's OU, National Weather Center and uh, watching the circulation at this current track. Uh, it's headed towards Goldsby. We'll likely cross the river, may stay just barely south of Norman. Uh, or I should be saying, saying just barely south of OU. Uh, but we're gonna watch it scan by scan. So on the left-hand side of your television screen, again, our crews, our chasers, using their night vision, able to look at this storm and a bit of a different perspective. Right now, circulation, we're seeing that up in the, up in the cloud, the storm has produced. Uh, a few tornadoes already jumping across the jumping across the ground, but right now that's the circulation. So tornado warning continues for this storm as it's moving to the east. Jonathan, by the way, let's uh, we got a brand new tornado warning that was just issued that we got to go up into Cleveland County, uh, into Oklahoma County as well, <clears throat> get an update on that. Uh, and so that's going to include Nawala, McLeod. That's the same storm, by the way, that went through uh, that went through more. And so this tornado warning was extended until 9:15. It does include. Southeastern Oklahoma County. There is Buck. There is Shane. <clears throat> Shane's going to be on the east side of Stanley Draper. There's there's Buck on the north side right now. Um, do we have uh, is Buck available to talk? Let's go out to Buck right now, uh, and then we'll go to Shane. So Buck first. Buck, you're on the west side of Stanley Draper. What do you see right now, Buck? Uh, Damon, that's the cell that we were watching to the uh, north that had the rotation has kind of fallen apart. <laughs> this is what is left of it. We're looking due north. Um, on Stanley Draper Drive and 104th Street, it's it's really kind of it's it's real ragged. It's really broken up. It's okay. Uh, so this is what it's looking like right now. Is Shane available to talk to? Uh, do we have Shane available to talk to? Let me talk to Shane. Okay, let's go out to Shane. Shane's gonna be on the east side of Stanley Draper in this tornado warning that's gonna be for northeastern Cleveland County, southeastern Oklahoma County. Uh, Shane, what do you see? Well, Damon, we've been out here on the east side. These storms, as they've been moving through the southern part of the metro, we haven't even seen any uh, hail or anything like that. At one time, we thought we saw a little bit of hail. It was hard to tell, but it had already passed. So we're out here uh, right in front of it. So if these guys can't keep up with it, we're going to be the ones that intercept it. But uh, as of right now, just mostly out here in this area is is uh, rain. However, the storm sirens are sounding out here. So those that have storm sirens close to their house, you can hear the storm sirens sounding. So you may want to be ready to take shelter and be prepared. Damon, back to you. Okay, we'll watch it closely. Let's go back over to the radar right now. Just kind of show everyone what's happening. So, And there's a lot ongoing right now uh, back of the radar. So again, this tornado warning, we have it surrounded with Buck and we have it surrounded with, uh, with Shane. They'll keep a close eye on this. Watching this cell down by Rosedale. Watching that sell out by Alec. This one is, it's, it's definitely showing some rotation southeast of Rosedale. We'll continue to watch it closely. Brand new tornado warning was just issued. There you go. Uh, for, for Garvin County uh, and then um, making its way towards Pottawatomie County. So there you go. Tornado warning with that cell. That's going to be west of Byers. We'll continue to watch it. Let's go back up to Goldsby. Let's go back up to Goldsby here. For those that are in Norman, this is the storm that we're watching for you right now. Uh, we have it surrounded. There's Storm Command. There's Nick. There's Chris Lee. It's crossing right over I-35 as we speak. Uh, or it's getting very close. Getting very close. There's your circulation couplet. Definitely is a slow. 
It is a slow moving storm. It's coming right over Goldsby. Goldsby, you uh, need to be in your shelter, innermost room. Let's check in with Chris Lee right now. Chris, we're watching the circulation come right into uh, Goldsby. Two areas, by the way, one over Goldsby, one right on the Canadian River. Yeah, that'll be the new one right there. Let's check in with Chris. Chris, what do you see right now coming into Goldsby? Yeah, we're just now coming into Goldsby. Sirens are going off here. Uh, a lot of cars pulled off. Uh, I know the interstate has been closed down. They're trying to, you know, not let anybody drive into the tornado. We're losing our, our daylight, and that's, that's the problem. I, I, don't, I don't see anything right now on the ground and haven't for the last, uh, just the last few minutes. Uh, but I don't have the definition that I had. I mean, we're kind of right hey, reaching the, the, the uh, edge of what our, our, our cameras are capable of. Uh, and uh, right now, I just do not see anything on the ground. Uh, we're kind of transitioning and looking for power flashes, but not seeing anything in the, of that either. But give you a little shot here. This is, uh, you see the lights lined up over there. That's I-35. Uh, the trucks are all lined up uh, and nobody's going anywhere along there as the, tr the this tornado or the circulation passes across uh, I-35 just north of Goldsby, Damon. Okay, so we're watching it for Goldsby, watching it for Noble as well. There's Noble, and so we're keeping a real close eye on this one as it continues to move to the east, as it looks like a new area of circulation is now picking up on the east side of I-35, getting ready to cross right over the Canadian River. Let's check in with Storm Command. Michael watching... No storm, okay. We'll check back in with Michael in just a little bit. There, there's Nick, by the way. Um, so watching this tornado warning continue to move to the east. Let's go out to Nick. Nick, what do you see right now? Yeah, Damon, we are on I, um, Highway 9 East. Um, we're coming up. Um, I think this is McGee Avenue or McGee Drive. And uh, we're gonna, we're having, we have blinding rain right now. Let me spin the 360 camera back off to the south. Um, we, man, we had a close call, Damon. I'm not going to lie. We were, people were stopping under the overpass, and I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to get on a soapbox, but I'm just saying it, it, it about caused us to get in a bad spot with that tornado. So it's just so dangerous, and, I mean, I, it, it scares me for the people that are still there. Back to you. Okay, we'll watch it uh, and, be, and be safe out there again with this. So, again, we're watching two areas of spin right now. Here we are, Goldsby, new area of rotation now picking up as we go towards Noble. So Noble needs to be in the innermost room of your house. By the way, a ton of rain coming down in Norman right now. Uh, I have to watch out for some flooding with this as well as this continues to move to the east. So uh, still finding a, an area spin. It's not very tight, but it's still there for Goldsby. And then also as you go down towards Noble. Um, so we're going to continue to watch this. We are still working multiple tornado warnings that we need to uh, watch. Let's go back up into Oklahoma County and up into northeastern Cleveland County. This could be up by Stanley Draper just to get those that are going to be uh, out towards Nawala, towards Stella. This tornado warning remains, although as of right now, the, I mean, we're so close to the radar, but uh, right now the rotation doesn't appear to be all that strong. There's still some areas of spin with this uh, making its way just very close to Stanley Draper. Uh, but otherwise, it looks like this is... Oh, yeah? I, I think it's outflow dominant. Yeah, I can see it right here. So you can see all the winds are have busted out. So the RFD winds have come through here. There's a little circulation right about there but it doesn't look real strong. I'm gonna switch back, so that's velocity. Mm -hmm. Here's a reflectivity, and yeah. you can even see it in the reflectivity field. So could there be a little little hiccup right in there where that circle is? Absolutely, but on a scale like one mm -hmm. to five, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give it a two and a half, a two, two and a half on that. Uh, it's not as big of a concern as what I'm really concerned about what's gonna happen east of Goldsby and Noble. Noble, listen to me. The area of circulation, there's, there, there was two areas of circulation. I'm going to back up the radar here a little bit so you can see it. When it was back near Goldsby, this, was, this is what Chris Lee had, and that was a tornado. That got pulled in, right? So that got pulled in here, and it's, it's dead. It's gone. New circulation's right there. That's new, this is how it happens every time. You get a new circulation on the southeast side of the storm, and that's where you're going to have the new tornado warning. So, Damon, I'm really concerned about that second circle I've highlighted right there. That's going to be the new area circulation. That would be the new tornado. Nick's on Highway 9. Storm Command's right there. They'll see it cross Highway 9 here in a couple miles. Okay, and yeah, definitely we'll be checking with them in just a bit. By the way, um, so... It definitely looks like at least up towards Oklahoma County, southeastern Oklahoma County, northeastern Cleveland County, things are trending down when it comes to tornado. Still ongoing. This one still is, is, is concerning for those of us in Noble. 
watching this one for Noble. Again, here we are right now. Here's 77. This is uh, now east of I-35 in between Goldsby and Noble, about to cross right over the Canadian River. So we'll be watching this one. Uh, let's, let's, let's. It's very tough traffic, yeah. But I'm telling you, that hook in Noble is, I think, potentially, maybe going to, it's ramping up. Yeah, it's, it is ramping up. it's turning up. It's not as tight as, it, as circulation back near Goldsby, but it's trending up. There's nothing in front of it to stop it, to cut off the inflow to it. Yeah, that's definitely, that, and, and this is what we're doing. So we got to analyze this live on air. By the way, uh, we'll come back to this noble in just a second. Uh, we'll put a track on here Denver, 935, Lake Thunderbird, 936, Little Axe and Stella, 946. Let's go down to this tornado warning real quick. Just give those an update in southern Pottawatomie County uh, and going in towards uh, Seminole County. What we're seeing right now. And so there's definitely an area of rotation at southeast of Rosedale. That's a tornado warning. Uh, Wynette, Asher, keeping a close eye. It's all by itself, by the way. Has some has some inflow into it. Uh, it's definitely there. Um, so northwest of Byers. This is moving up northeast. This will stay north of Stratford. But uh, Asher, Wynette, watching this real closely. It's moving up to the northeast. And again, we're just uh, we're working a handful of tornado warnings right now. There's definitely rotation with that. That's southeast of Rosedale, right along the Canadian River. Right now, tornado warning, we have one that's not looking all that impressive at all out towards Cleveland County, uh, northeastern Cleveland County, southeastern Oklahoma County. This one's still concerning. Uh, Cleveland County, here we are again, coming in the Noble right now. Again, coming in the Noble, there's Storm Command, there's Nick, there's uh, Chris, there's Shane watching this storm as it continues to move up to northeast, headed towards Denver, Little Axe, Lake Thunderbird, Stella, and as you go down towards Pink as well. So at this moment, we are working three tornado warnings that we have ongoing right now. One that is going to include uh, going in now to southern Pottawatomie County, two that are currently in uh, Cleveland County, coming into Oklahoma County, uh, although that one's trending down. This one's still the strongest one that we have right here. Noble, their storm command. Uh, we'll see if Michael, if we can talk to Michael in just a bit here uh, because he's coming up on this right up to the Highway 77 exit. And so that continues to be ongoing. Is Michael available? Let's go out to Michael right now. Michael, watching this area of rotation that's now coming up on the north side of Noble. Michael, what do you see from Storm Command? Yeah, we're we're headed south straight down into Noble. We have rain, Damon. I, I, I'm going to give you, I'll be able to give you a better update here. May, probably, I mean, it doesn't take, what, five minutes to get to Noble from where we're at. So while I, I see it on radar, and I just told Kyle, I was like, there's probably a tornado in Noble right now. So it's, it's unnerving for us because we want to be there and we want to confirm that. But right now, radar tells us that there is a tornado in Noble. You have to be in your shelter right now. Totally agree. I absolutely agree. Yeah, if you're in Noble, uh, you're in your shelter right now. Innermost room of your house or you're in your, uh, you're in your tornado shelter. That circulation is picking up. Let's put the radar back here. We'll put Michael shot there on the left-hand side of your television screen here. But here's Michael going into Noble right now. I mean, he's looking right into this. So we'll have to watch it, but this is crossing right over 77. So here's downtown Noble. We're just north of it by just a little bit here. Power flashes. We'll go out to Michael. Michael had power flashes. What do you see? Yeah, we just have a tornado right in front of us. The, the, the cone was lit up. And uh, all the power went out. Well, I do have a little bit of power over to my left, Damon. We do, we have a tornado right in front of us right now. This is uh, in Noble, and it is on 177. It's on Main Street. Yeah, yeah, 177 there. Or sorry, uh, oh, yeah. 77 going down into Noble. Yeah, oh Michael. Oh my gosh, we, Michael. Um, we, it's in it's in Noble right now. It's in Noble. It's right on top of Noble right now. We definitely see it. Uh, it's picking up, and, and that circulation couplet, it's right in front of you, Michael. It's right on top of the highway. Again, north side of Noble, uh, in your shelter, innermost room. Michael reporting power flashes. Michael, what, what's this? Uh, what are these? Is this a, uh, are you coming up on damage, Michael? What do you see? No, that, that's just police just letting people know don't drive into the tornado. Okay. Okay. So uh, we're watching this again. Uh, heavy police presence right here. Again, the tornado went right in front of Michael. Let's see more power flashes. Uh, or maybe that was a little bit, a little bit, a little reflection there. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's put the radar up. Let's keep Michael shot on the left hand side of your television screen. Want to show exactly where the tornado is. Uh, again, right where the tornado is. It's right here. We're just a couple yards north of downtown Noble. Michael, what do you see? Yeah, more power flashes. It, it's on the ground. It's on the ground in Noble. Yeah. No, we do. We I, I can definitely see that. We see your location right here. Here's a tornado. Again, in your north side of Noble. 
Tornado shelter in her most room. That is the tornado. Michael's looking right at it. Uh, it's moving to the east. Power flashes. That means that it's, uh, it's, it's hitting stuff right now and it's taking out power lines. Michael, you have a, a very good visual into this. Michael, what do you see? Well, uh, as of right now, we had to move East Damon because this tornado, would, it, I have to give it a little bit more breathing room. It's not like it was in the daytime, and it's coming toward us. So we have to get out ahead of it a little bit. I know you don't see it. Here, I'm going to bring my 360 camera back around just for a minute because we've got a lot of trees up here right now. It's kind of lightning here as I'm driving down the road. I'll be watching for a place where we can pull over and get a view of it. But just, uh, just know there's a tornado ongoing in Noble right now. Uh, we, we know our crews are out there being uh, uh, being safe, but again, we're we're watching. That is a tornado. It's on the north side of Noble. It's on the north side of Noble, moving to the east northeast, headed up towards Cedar Lane, and it's about to cross right over Eighth Street, headed towards Forty Eighth Street, north of Etowah Road. This is going to stay south of Norman, but that's the tornado in Noble right now, moving up to the northeast. Once again, north side of Noble, you're in your tornado shelter, innermost room. If you're on the south side of Noble, you're, uh, you're okay, just barely, but this is staying just north of you, headed up right towards Michael. Uh, Michael, any update? What are you seeing? Yeah, we're going to turn around right here. We're going to back up. We don't have anybody around here. We're going to back up and find a little place to pull over so we can get a view. We have a lot of trees around us, Damon, so this gets very dicey at night in the trees we've done this before you know, like over here with Ottawa when back on april 19th when the cold tornado happened going back kyle you're going to see the place to turn in right here to your right and uh, this will give us the possibility of giving getting a view of the tornado damon but at this point just just know oh 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 man may have been more power flash keep going kyle keep going pull up further Okay, Michael, so uh, we, we give me just a minute. Give me just a minute and then come back to me once I get a view. Yeah, we'll let you uh, we'll let you guys do what you got to do. And so and uh, Sabrina, she's she'll be talking to you here in just a second. Uh, but that's the tornado moving very slowly. This thing has slowed <clears throat> down quite a bit. It's now east of 77. Here it is on top of 8th Street, north side of 8th Street. This is Norman. So Norman, you're OK with this. Uh, this staying south of you. There's Chris. There's Nick. That's the tornado. Uh, this, this, this is going to be, gosh, it almost feels, yeah, it feels like it's just slowed down. So this is south of Walmart, areas that were impacted by the tornadoes at the end of February. This is staying south of you. Uh, but that's the tornado right there on the north side of Noble by just a couple yards. I mean, we, we're still inside the city limits of Noble here, moving up to the northeast. And uh, at this current track, here's Lake Thunderbird on the top right-hand side of your television screen. We're getting real close, but it's slow movement. Uh, it is taking it is taking its time. Let's hope that this is like all the other tornadoes out there that they just don't last that long. Uh, but we got we we can't make that call yet. Especially these low level winds are now just kind of feeding this and and allowing this threat to continue. So once again, Noble in your tornado shelter, innermost room of your house, north side, northeast side of Noble. If you're on the south side of Noble, west side of Noble, you're in a better spot now. So the the circulation's out east of you, and if you're out by Goldsby, you're in a better spot as well. Uh, real quick, Jonathan, let's just zoom out, kind of show everyone what's happening right now uh, because uh, we are working. Technically, I know there are three tornado warnings ongoing, although the one that's up in northeastern Cleveland County, that's going to that's gonna drop here in about two minutes. Um, we have this in Rosedale, northeast of Rosedale, headed up towards Winnet. Definitely can see inflow on this right on top of the Canadian River. Moving up towards Avoca of Asher, uh, Asher, and then Maud. We'll continue to watch that. Let's go back up to Noble, south of Norman, get an update on this storm, uh, this tornado warning that, <clears throat> that continues. And so uh, if you're in Norman, this is staying south of you. If you're in Moore, you're okay <clears throat> for the rest of the night here. Uh, but right now, Noble, real concern. How's Michael doing? Michael okay? Okay, let's go back out to Michael. Michael, uh, what are you seeing right now, Michael? Well, we've got a lot of lightning flash. I'm trying to distinguish uh, between, I mean, there was no question we had the power flash when it was hitting in Noble. Uh, we're one mile now northeast of Noble, looking back to the southwest. Oh, man, if it is, it's going to be it's going to be right in here, just to our south. Um, we're keeping an eye peeled for the tornado right now, Damon. Um, we can hear outdoor warning sirens going off. It's, it's coming in just to our south right here so hard with all these trees but we have to stop here for a minute to see um, what kind of a view we have but 
Kyle, I think we're going to have to go ahead and back up and go east because it's going to surge in on top of us if we don't. We've got to give it a little bit more breathing room here, Damon. A little bit dicey at night, no doubt. So we'll do our best here on tracking it. But once you get east of I-35, it's a totally different ball game. Trees, hills, it's a, it's a nightmare to try to chase at night. It, it absolutely is. So, yeah, so you, all of our chasers out here, again, your safety is number one. You do what you got to do. Um, your reports are, are important, but your safety is more important to us. So, uh, Chris, Nick, Storm Command, we see you. Buck and Shane, we see you as well. Derek, down to the south. Uh, your safety is number one. So, right now, again, Noble moving up to northeast. By the way, here's another inflow that's kind of setting up uh, that we were just talking about uh, right over like Thunderbird. Uh, Jonathan, how's the circulation look yeah. with this? Yeah. It, it's not real well defined on radar. You're talking about this thing right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's. As I was just talking to Sabrina. So Chris Lee's coming down Highway 9, about four miles east of him and two miles north between Denver and Lake Thunderbird. There's another, remember the night of the, the 19th? And we had, like, they just hooked up. We yeah. have, like, this daisy chain, and they just get balanced, and you have these eddies. These are not classic supercells. They're, like, yeah. two supercells dancing together, and then you have areas of circulation, and we just have, just have to pick them out. Michael's right there in Noble. Perfect spot. Chris Lee's going to see this next circulation coming up uh, west of Little Axe. Okay, yeah, and hopefully we don't get uh, deviant motion out of these like we did on the 19th because that's where these storms just kind of move in very weird, unique directions. But at, as of right now, uh, moving up to the northeast, <clears throat> very slowly too, by the way, not very fast, 15 miles per hour. Uh, not very fast moving storms here. So there's Chris, there's Nick. There is Michael. Right now, area of rotation that we have here is going to be on the far north side of Noble, uh, up towards 8th Street. So, by the way, there's OU. Uh, we're going to be south of OU, south of, let's see, there's a, uh, uh, there's a on, uh, on queue. Um, and then you have areas that were impacted by the tornado uh, back at the end of February here. Um, and, again, even if you, there's a, a Buffalo Wild Wings um, and a bunch of kind of just busy, uh, busy commercial area right here. So we're south of that. Power flashes from Michael. Let's go back out to Michael. Michael, what do you see? Yeah, uh, Damon, so we're starting to get a view of the lowered area now. I'm looking for a condensation funnel again. There, There is a funnel, okay? it's I don't see it actually in contact with the ground, but here's the thing. We've seen this time and time again today where you don't have to have a full condensation funnel all the way to the ground to have a tornado. I mean, that's just we, that's that's tornado chasing 101, right? You don't have to always have a condensation funnel on the ground in order to have d damaging spinning winds underneath the tornado. That's what a tornado is. And so it, it is very, very uh, dicey out here tonight because this, this circulation spun up east of the tornado that crossed near Goldsby uh, from coal over to Goldsby. Now you can see there's another huge lowering with this circulation, and we know it's already hit Noble. So the odds of it spinning up again because of what it's already done are pretty high. It's probably going to produce another tornado, to be honest. And, and Michael, I, I definitely agree with you on that one. The, the tornado is still continues, and it's, it will continue. It will continue for a while. Some of the higher resolution data that I'm just looking at over here shows that we may see more development down by Lawton that would come up in this direction that would impact us after this tornado watch is set to expire at 11 o'clock. So we may be in this for, for a while here, but there's Storm Command, there's Nick, uh, there's your circulation right there, northeast of Noble. Uh, tornado warning remains Noble. This is now lifting northeast of you. So uh, downtown Noble, this is now east of you. You're in, a, you're in a, a better spot now. But if you're up towards Lake Thunderbird, Denver, uh, right along Highway 9 here, as you make way south of the dam, I got to watch this one. I got to watch this one real closely. And, and we're, there's, there's absolutely no reason to believe that this still will not keep going as it goes to the east here. So it's still spinning. Uh, we're probably going to have to watch, again, areas of circulation that will come and go. On the other side of everything, by the way, there's a lot of rain. That's coming in. You see all the rain that's extending all the way down towards Dibble. That's going to basically just kind of run right over the same area. So also a flood threat that we're going to watch as we go into this evening. Jonathan, let's go down into Pottawatomie County, southern Pottawatomie County. Get an update, by the way, on this other tornado warning that we have. That's going to be down by Byers, uh, making its way towards Asher. Just want to get an update. Very close to Wynette, by the way. Uh, not as strong. Yeah, it's But it's still strong. a supercell. Yeah, it's not as strong. So, by the way, we're, we're currently working now two tornado warnings ongoing, two tornado warnings 
uh, ongoing. So it looks like the one that was up in northeastern Cleveland County, north of Draper, that's been allowed to expire. Uh, is Sky 5 coming up on, on day? Is that just weather related? There was a, a semi okay. at, the, at the Fort Smith Junction, I-40, I-35, and a semi was hanging over the flyover ramp. Uh -huh. And so that's what, that's what he's looking at right now. And that's okay. in the upper left-hand corner. So it, we could talk to him. He's back in the metro. He could tell you which is that eastbound or westbound. But okay. yeah, that... There, there, and now his shot just went dead. Okay, you know, well, well, we'll we'll go back. Well, just just making sure uh, with all the tornadoes that we have had uh, and all the warnings we have had coming up on some damage, we're going to probably find some of this here. So there you go. Okay, uh, OKC. By the way, if you are checking in for Oklahoma City, things are much quieter now. We're still watching for the potential for more storms as we go into the overnight that would develop down by Wichita Falls and Lawton and stay south of I-44. So we may not be done with the storms just quite yet, but this is still definitely a inflow coming into this cell northeast of Noble. From a reflectivity standpoint, you can definitely see there's a there's a ball in here and definitely you can see an inflow notch coming in just right over Highway 9. Don't like this one bit. Stay just south of State Highway 9, southeast of, uh, of OU. Uh, but that's it right there. That's inflow coming into this right now, east of East of 77, uh, east of 77, feels like it's really slowed down. Let me go back out to Michael. Michael still seeing a well-defined, at least inflow notch on this storm that you're on. Michael, what do you see? Well, uh, check that out. I mean, you can see in my night vision. I mean, it almost makes it look like daytime. That's the walk lot, Damon. And I don't see a tornado uh, right now, but there are a lot of lowered areas and there's a cone kind of hanging a little bit right down in the middle of it. I'm going to zoom in right there. So this is the wall cloud right now um, with that circulation that produced the tornado in gold in uh, Noble. Sorry. And as of right now, well, I mean, it's starting to look like a funnel there a little bit right there in the shot. Um, it's still spinning, but it I'll tell you on radar, it doesn't look as impressive, but uh, what we've seen is these circulations will kind of spin up and then they'll go away and then they'll spin up again and then they'll go away and they just kind of bounce along like that. Yeah, it definitely feels like just with all the tornadoes that we have seen that I feel like we've seen a good half a dozen at least, they don't last very long. They come down and they go back up. So a bit of a different type of tornadic environment that we have in here this evening where uh, nothing seems to at least as of right now, since we've been doing this coverage now for about three hours, has stayed on the ground for that long. However, still got to watch it. Still got to watch it closely with this cell moving up to the northeast. So again, this picture coming in from Michael, using night vision, able to see these lowerings real well with this moving up to the northeast. So again, we have Michael, we have Nick, Sky 5, and by the way, is up in Oklahoma City. Uh, flood threat continues to also be a threat, too, that we're watching. But there's definitely some strong winds that are surging out with this. And so, going to have to watch for these, these strong winds. Right now, this warning is set to go at 9.30. Uh, at 9:30. Um, we'll go out to, who has, Mark? Okay. Okay, we'll go out to Mark in just a little bit. Let me know when he's available. Uh, he's, he's available right now. Okay, let's go out to Mark Frickland. Mark, you're in Noble. You say you have damage. What are you seeing? Uh, this is uh, like a side road in downtown Noble, but the, the uh, power poles are leaning pretty far over the road, and I can see a lot of debris, like sheet metal, stuck in the lines that are kind of laying on the ground. But uh, we've got law enforcement down there blocking the road. But this is just off of 77, off of the main road, about a quarter of a mile to the west. Okay, um, so Mark, we're working on getting your shot up, um, and, and I, I believe we do have it. Do we have a shot? Remote 16. He'll be Mark will be on remote 16. Damage in Noble. Again, Mark Franklin. Here's his. There's his location right there. He's going to be in Noble right now. So, yeah, Michael. Oh, okay. okay. Let's go back out to Michael. Michael looks like your storm is now starting to produce a tornado again. Another funnel. What do you see, Michael? Well, it, it certainly looks like it. I mean, it is very, very <laughs> low. Right in that same area I was telling you about just a second ago, and now it's starting to look and more and more like a funnel. And now, keep in mind. There are some trees right there, and they're pointed upward, so you, you can see that in the shot. But look how low that is, Damon. I mean, I, I oh, man, I can't tell if that's going to be on the ground or not right now at this point, but it is getting really close. Also, I want to mention, I think a tornado is uh, basically about to hit Winnet, potentially. That circulation really tightening up near Winnet, moving up toward Asher. Uh, so really two different two different areas I'm concerned about. One over here. Uh, that's just to, just northeast of Noble now, and the other one near Winnet, um, almost on top of Winnet. 
Yeah, we're going to go down to one. Now. This is what we're watching right here. We are watching two areas of circulation, two tornado warnings right now. The only two tornado warnings in the state. They're happening very close to one another. So again, Winnet, you're still in your shelter right now with that cell. That's headed up to the northeast. So once again, Winnet in your tornado shelter right now with this storm. And then once again, also watching this cell that's northeast of Noble. Noble, um, keeping a close eye on that one as well. Uh, so with these two these two warnings right now, looking at the radar standpoint, now we got to watch this out by Dibble too, by the way. Derek is out there. Uh, it's not, oh man, found my call again. Uh, it's, it's not tornado worn, but looking at how it looks from this radar standpoint, you see a kind of an inflow coming into this kind of coming into this right here. So we'll watch that. Cole, we hope not again, uh, but this feels like it's going back over the same area that the previous tornado warning that we had. This one right here was about an hour ago out by Cole, out towards Goldsby. Still watching this. There's Nick. There's Chris on the east side of Thunderbird. The storm is still showing rotating. It's still spinning. Tornado warning absolutely still needs to be, uh, still needs to be ongoing. Now, this is set to expire, by the way, in five minutes. We'll see uh, the new warning, see how that one looks. Uh, but current track to the northeast, community of Denver at 943, Lake Thunderbird 944. We go in the Little Axe at 956, Pink 1017. Okay, so new tornado warning coming for Dibble, coming in for Dibble. So here we go once again. So Noble, we may not be done yet. We'll, we'll watch this new tornado warning that's being, uh, that's being typed up as we speak. We have Derek Klein right into it as well, uh, right into it as well. Uh, real quick, we have Mark back up. We have his picture up. Can we get an update from Mark uh, again on the damage that he's seeing in front of him? I, I see his stream coming in right now. Uh, let's check in with Mark Fricklin. Mark, how's the damage? What's the damage situation right now in Noble? Okay, well, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, go. Yeah, so we're seeing uh, some houses over here. There looks like they're searching to see if anybody's hurt but you can if you've seen my camera shot i'm not sure you got it or not but law enforcement's around and there's there's uh the powers out kind of on this the north side of town so there's police uh, directing traffic through there and uh this is the extent would see we haven't been a whole lot of moving around yet just this is the first place we found that's okay. been damaged but there may be more. Uh, okay, well, Mark, uh, we'll check you. in. Mark, we'll check back in with you in just a second. Uh, Wynette, you need to be back in your, you need to be in your tornado shelter, by the way. Wynette, uh, with this storm, it's, it's coming right on top. So this is Wynette at 926, Asher 947, uh, Avoca at 948 with that cell right there. Okay, here's a brand new tornado warning that we now have. This is going to be for Dibble, east of Dibble, uh, a bit here, but uh, coming up close to coal. Here's Washington. Here's your inflow into this. I'll kind of watch this one real closely, but you can definitely see the inflow coming into this. Derek Klein's coming up on the back, back side of this, coming into Dibble. This new warning is just moments ago. This warning goes now until 1015. So Washington at 941 and heads up Noble. We're probably not in the clear yet. <clears throat> probably not in the clear yet with this storm, uh, with another storm coming in. So uh, we're, we're, we're really watching it. I, I would like it if these storms would just kind of basically fizzle out, but Mother Nature has given us all sorts of things tonight here. So right now, from Dibble to Cole, here's your area of rotation. Not very tight on radar, but it is rotating. And knowing what all these other storms have been doing tonight, uh, where you get these tornadoes that they produce, and then these storms that produce tornadoes, then they let up for a bit, and they come back down, and then they come back up. So we're probably going to watch this next tornado kind of skip along the countryside here. And uh, current track will stay in between Cole. Uh, Washington, Goldsby, it very well will probably go right in between. Back over I-35, but looks like it's coming back up towards Noble. So Noble, we're not done yet. Uh, we are not done yet with the storms here. Um, hopefully it's the last one. Uh, let's check, if, if, is Derek Klein available? Uh, we'll get Derek on the phone here in just a second because uh, he's going to be inside this tornado warning uh, coming up on this. But, okay, okay, yeah, we're good. Okay, uh, out the Derek we go right now. So Derek, Another storm. You've been on these storms since they've developed, but Derek, we get these tornadoes that they produce, then they kind of let up, they produce, they kind of let up. Uh, what do you see right now from your vantage point, Derek? Yeah, we're definitely noticing that this storm is intensified. You can definitely see it on radar, and that kind of has been the trend. They, they form down by Rush Springs, they get a little bit intense, and they kind of weaken until they get close to I-35, and then they, they take back off again. So, uh, and this has been probably, what, the fifth or sixth one that's done this. So. Uh, we're right here in position just to the south of the rotation, so we're uh, just to the east of Dibble right now. 
And uh, so we're going to get around the hook so that way we can see up into where the, the storm core would be uh, to see if there is any tornado or anything right now. But as of right now, we don't see any power flashes, just uh, heavy rain right now. But we'll get ourselves in position to where we can see what's going on. Back to you. Okay, so here we are right now. So let's go back over to the radar. So we're working uh, a, a couple of new tornado warnings. We have, so we have new tornado warning that goes up towards the Grand Casino, Pottawatomie County. Then another new tornado warning that goes up towards Seminole as well. These are new tornado warnings just issued uh, that will take us past the 10 o'clock hour here. So uh, here we go, basically two areas of circulation with this one. The Noble, we're calling it the Noble Cell, and then out by Dibble. And then another new area of circulation, uh, or the same area of circulation for Winnet. But this warning has now been extended going up to the town of Seminole. You can definitely see inflow with this cell moving up northeast. So we're, we're still working, uh, still working two, uh, two, three storms, I should be saying, three storms. So this one, that one, and then down to the southeast. This one's still going. And so if you're in Pottawatomie County, the most important storm for you, if you're in from Pink, up towards McLeod, Dale, Shawnee, it's this one right now. This is going to be the next one to make its way in. We're hoping this one can fizzle out. Let's check in with Michael Armstrong and Storm Command. Michael, brand new tornado warning has just been issued that takes it back up into Pottawatomie County. What do you see, Michael? Yeah, I think we had a new mesocyclone that's formed and a new wall cloud, and that's the one I was showing you just a minute ago. And so right now we're at the intersection of Highway 9, and we are at 84th Avenue Southeast. So we're right here just on the southwest side of Lake Thunderbird, Damon. And uh, that's a really pronounced lowering in my shot right now. Um, it is, we're right ahead of it. Um, I, there may be even a funnel under there, Damon. I mean, I, it looks like it, uh, but I've got a tree in the way right now. Kyle, can you inch forward about uh, 50 yards? Well, I'm, I'm gonna see if this is hanging down low enough yeah, there's just too many trees right in there. Okay, well, that's good. Hang on right there. Hang on right there. Yeah, and when you get to this side of the state, chasing takes on a little bit of a different uh, a different perspective here with all these trees. So you got to wait for the lightning to, to, to kind of light up the sky here. But you are watching right now KOCU 5 News at 10 o'clock. The main story continues to be these ongoing tornado warnings that we have for south of Oklahoma City, but this one we're still watching. It's very close to Michael, by the way. Here's State Highway 9 as it bends back up around Lake Thunderbird. So here's Alameda. Uh, here's going to be State Highway 9. Area circulation, inflow, current track. It's going to it's gonna uh, go up on the south side of Lake Thunderbird, make its way around the dam here. Here's Nick Smith. Uh, what's... Okay, so, we'll, so we have Nick. Uh, we have Storm Command watching this right now, and eventually at this current track, it's going to run very close to Little Axe Pink and then coming up into western Pottawatomie County. You hate to say it, areas that were impacted by our last tornadoes uh, that we had that impacted coal up the Shawnee are in line once again uh, or very close. Shawnee, watching this warning closely for you coming in the Shawnee. But right now, here we are coming up on the south side of Thunderbird. And this warning goes until 10:15. It's another 45 minutes with this cell right here. Extended storm track, Denver to pink, 943 to 1013, Bethel Acres, 1034, Dale, 1042, Shawnee, right around 11 o'clock. Jonathan, we're watching all these lots, lots of areas on the radar that are still, we're still watching, but you hate it when you have to list out these towns and these communities that were impacted just a couple weeks ago by tornadoes, Jonathan. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit concerned about, uh, number one, and Michael's right there, Nick's right with him. That has a pretty strong hook on it. Um, on the velocity couplet, Michael's right there, a little bit concerned that as it starts to cycle. I mean, I just, there's a couple different ways that I look at a storm. I do a lot of things on the side that we don't show on air, but that, that looks like a big hook. So again, here's the hook. There's like a ball. Here's all the warm, drier air that's rain-free pulling in and it's rotating. That's what makes the hook echo. Then the moisture wraps back around and right in the middle, right where Michael's at, in the ball of the hook, uh, that's where the circulation is. And that is one of the strongest hooks I think we've seen yet tonight. Now, does that mean that there's gonna be a big tornado in there? Not necessarily, it just says the circulation looks really strong. So I'm watching that area. Also a little bit concerned about the storm that uh, is uh, east of Dibble. Uh, circulation, uh, Michael has power flashes. Uh, so Derek is there. Yeah. Um, circulation maybe not as strong, but Derek, expert chaser right there, if he sees anything, we're gonna know 
but going back again to the Noble Storm, really worried about this, Damon. Yeah, and so, uh, and by the way, Noble, 30 minutes is when the next circulation comes. Let's go back out to Michael. Michael, you're live on air, Michael. What do you see? 90, 96th <coughs> Avenue, Southeast, and Highway 9, confirmed tornado. Power flash is huge, lowering right now here with this, Damon. Um, so I would, I would just go ahead and, you know, plan on a tornado just on the, uh, well, right on Highway 9, just south of Lake Thunderbird. And again, another situation where there's a bunch of homes out here, a uh, bunch of people live in, in here in Cleveland County along Highway 9 out around Lake Thunderbird. Very dangerous situation here at night. Huge lowering. Yeah, and, and Michael, what we see with our velocity right now, we're pairing it right up. I see you, I see Nick, I see Chris Lee, and I see this area, the circulation couplet. And so this is gonna be on the south side, uh, just south of Thunderbird, as you make your way around the bend. Uh, and so, but we're watching it real close. Let's go. We'll keep Michael shot up on the left-hand side. Let's put the radar back over here. I can show exactly where it is. So this is this is Highway 9. This is Thunderbird. Here's a bend around the dam. Uh, but there's Storm Command, and there's there's Nick. And so we're watching this again. Michael's reporting power flashes, confirmed tornado with this uh, with this storm moving to the east. So once again, if you're on the south side of Thunderbird, south, south side of Thunderbird, you need to be in your tornado shelter. We're still waiting to, for the update debris. See, we're picking it up. A uh, lot of trees out here. So uh, we're hoping that the only damage we get out here are trees. But as Michael or as Jonathan was just mentioning, this is a well-defined hook. I mean, this is a well-defined hook echo that you see right here. Inflow rushing over Thunderbird, moving up to northeast. Look, if you're living in Pottawatomie County, if you're living in Pink, Bethel Acres, Shawnee, this is the storm that we're watching real closely for you. Again, watching it real, real closely because this is going to be the one that's going to impact you next. We're hoping that this this will fizzle out, but we know what it's doing right now. It's on the ground, and it's it's uh, it's at least hitting power lines, as Michael has been telling us with power flashes. By the way, let's zoom on out. Got a couple storms we got to we got to work. And by the way, uh, attention for those of you in Noble as ongoing uh, rescue efforts. Uh, and, and surveying damage uh, has already uh, is ongoing right now. There's another tornado warning storm that's going to be just west of you. So you have about 30 minutes before you got to wrap it up. Maybe even faster than that. I'd, I'd say 20 minutes. Uh, watching this area, by the way, this tornado uh, warn cell northeast of Winnet. That's moving up towards Romulus, Maud, Seminole. This warning comes right up to you at this current track. It may stay just south of Seminole, but come towards Maud and Bowlegs. So we'll watch this one right now. Avoca at 9:47, Maud at 10:20, Wolf at 10:32. With that cell moving up to northeast. Jonathan, let's go out to uh, Dibble. Uh, let's check in on the Dibble storm. By the way, here it is right here. Um, <clears throat> how's rotation tracker look on this one? By the way, it's it's, it's rotating. It's not very tight. Um, but it's basically rolling over the same areas that were impacted by tornado warning cells earlier. So knowing this. This is coming right back in the Noble. Here's Noble right here. So, uh, again, Noble, have about 20 minutes, Noble. Let's go out to Derek Klein. Derek Klein, uh, these tornado warren cells are basically kind of training right over themselves, uh, going over the same areas, it feels like. What do you see, Derek? Yeah, Damon. So, right now, the, the lightning is really intense on this storm. We've gotten out in front of it here. Uh, we're going to try to work ourselves across for cell so we can get across the river here and stay out in front of this storm. Uh, but definitely, it, it has, it looks like it might have two areas of rotation. Of us here, um, just to the just to the west of Purcell, and then one to the north of us. So we're kind of watching to see if those will organize into one, and then I think that's when the storm would have a chance to, to produce tornadoes again. So uh, so we're going to continue to watch it. A little bit unorganized right now, but uh, we're going to continue to watch it and let you know if it intensifies. Back to you. And uh, and for all the KOCO5 crews that are right now uh, down in Noble, so Mark uh, especially, um, just I want our crews to know that this storm is coming back in. So. You have about 20 minutes for this coming in the Noble, but I am concerned. So uh, I see Mark is, he's moving back north. And so, um, again, our crews, they'll come back in to Noble um, and give you all the information once the tornado threat's over. But again, I always want to emphasize safety is number one for everyone that is working here at KOCO. So once again, Nick Smith, Storm Command, Chris Lee watching this storm. So we're right on the south side of Lake Thunderbird, moving right along the highway. And almost as it makes it a bend up to the north, it's crossing over the highway, but it's it's coming very close. As a matter of fact, let me go out to Nick Smith. I, I, I want to go out to Nick because Nick and Michael both watching this. Nick, for what feels like I can't even I don't even know how many times you've been you've been right in front of a tornado. It feels like today, but here you are once again, Nick. What are you seeing? 
Uh, right now, Damon, we're, our, our view is a little obstructed. We're right here by um, – by one of the Thunderbirds where Marina, if you know where, um, oh, it's uh, clear, like where Clear Bay is, and in the North Dam area, we're over in that area right now, and we're trying to get on the other side of these trees so that we can see. It's it's really hard out here, but um, there's a couple spots out here that you can see a little bit. So we're going to try to get a little bit further to, um, a little bit further to the east and up up to the north a little bit to look back at the storm. We did get to see a little bit of it. We saw some of those power flashes that Michael was talking about, and uh, and Damon, there's just a lot of people out on the road. And there's people that are driving into it. It's really scary for some of the stuff that's going on out here right now. Back to you. Okay. So, and uh, and and uh, we'll we'll be keeping in close contact with you. So, uh, tornado warning continues. Cleveland, Oklahoma, Potawatomi County. This is the same tornado warning that Nick has been reporting on. That Michael's reporting on confirmed tornado. Not moving very quickly. Moving about 15 miles per hour, uh, making its way up towards Little Axe. Let's go back out to Michael. Michael, give us an update. What do you see? Yeah. Okay, Damon. Uh, I know Nick was trying to re trying to reposition. We have a really good view right now of the storm. A huge lowering right now with this storm. Now, what I I can't see a tornado, but what I'm just trying to tell you is sometimes even just settling for a view of the wall cloud is about the best we can do over here. Once you get over by Lake Thunderbird, you have all the trees, you have all the hills. Very very difficult spotting at night. But what I can confirm is there's still a huge wall cloud with this storm and you know there there's the rotation's not real tight with it but at this point you just have to plan that there's a tornado coming to you up toward pink right now okay that's that's the direction of the motion of this storm it's going to skirt along the south side of lake thunderbird very close to highway nine if not not on highway nine it's going to be just a little bit north of it um, right on the southeast side of Lake Thunderbird, and it's going to move right up toward Pink. Yeah, and so watch this again. If you're uh, eastern Cleveland County, going into western Pottawatomie County, watching this. <clears throat> now, technically, this warning does include extreme southeastern Oklahoma County. It's current track. This is going to stay south of that. By the way, uh, let's go down to Pottawatomie and Seminole, get an update on what we have as our Winnet storm. So getting uh, circulation with this between Winnet and Avoca, Asher, right there, moving up to the northeast. Uh, this one is going to come pretty close to Seminole, but this storm, this is definitely concerning as well. This, this tornado warning goes until 10:15, about another 30 minutes, 35 minutes. So this one still continues for a while. So Seminole, uh, if there's any storm that you need to be at least watching closely, what we're watching right now, uh, we're keeping a close eye on this for you, Seminole. Right now, this is still northeast of Winnet. Still definitely has a, uh, a well-pronounced uh, influence. Jonathan, how's debris look, a debris tracker look with this? A lot of trees, uh, uh, so that's eh, a little messy. Um, doesn't really, uh, I, I need to see right there. Got my finger on it. Uh, let's see if we got a, uh, any debris. No, I don't think doesn't they correspond like to each other. I don't think we, they overlay. Yeah, it, it takes it takes some analyzing live on air to see exactly what we have. <coughs> a signature. Yeah, the low confidence tornado debris signature. Yeah, so okay, we'll watch this one right now. But again, for Romulus to St. Louis, Asher up towards Avoca. Again, tornado shelter, innermost room of your house. Maud, same thing for you. Um, here we are now. Here's uh, Lake Thunderbird around the bend by the dam. Here's Little Axe. So there's Nick. There's Storm Command. Uh, there's Chris Lee uh, down by uh, down there. Michael, this this tornado warning, this area circulation is still going to be just down to your southwest. Michael, any more power flashes? Have you seen anything in the last uh, last couple of minutes since we last spoke? No, I haven't. Um, what I've seen, I, I have huge lowering right now. This is actually north of Highway 9, but I do see what you're talking about in that there's another area back to our left. So I'm going to come back and look to my southwest. I haven't seen any type of flashes or anything like that. Oh, man, there is, there is definitely a lowered area in there. Um, yeah. So kind of two different wall clouds with this storm right now um, and that's that's one of the things we've also seen with this today Damon is you just got lowerings kind of that, that just form uh, all over the place around these storms it's it's pretty crazy and it has really been one of those days a lot, a lot of storms and as we mentioned before this was gonna be a day where uh, as we went deeper into the night ingredients were gonna pick up a bit and so we're definitely seeing everything that we forecasted for the last couple of days it's coming together here it is right now. Tornado warning continues. Still watching this south of Lake Thunderbird.
moving up towards Pink, Little Axe, and eventually headed up towards Bethel Acres, Bethel High School, and eventually up towards Shawnee. I understand, Shawnee. Look, we don't want to do this again. I'm right there with you. So we're going we're gonna to do this scan by scan, and we'll watch it. Let's go down, check on, uh, we'll check in with Nick. Okay, we'll go to Nick, and then we'll check back in down by uh, Weston Noble. Nick, what do you see? Yeah, Damon, I just got in the pink right now, and I'm looking back off to the, um, just just to my due um, west right now, and I can see probably the thing that Michael's talking about, but man, it's got a lot, of, it looks like it has a, like a lot of rain around the bottom, like a rent like rain curtains wrapping around it but i cannot tell if it's on the ground but i mean it is it is hanging real low like what he was just talking about we can definitely see that and of course this time of the evening there nick as the sun is down the lightning you need lightning to be able to get uh, better visuals and a lot of trees out here as well so we're gonna we'll, we'll continue to watch it by the way for those in noble um here we are right now so tornado warning still remains still finding circulation very close to washington south of goldsby there's noble right here uh, not a very tight circulation, but it's still there. And so very close to Washington. So at this current track right now, moving about 20 miles per hour. Uh, we still have about, uh, I'd say about another 20 minutes or so to go with this one. Here we are. So uh, Washington 952 is about eight minutes from now. Slaughterville 1018. Uh, Lake Thunderbird again, 1041. We'll watch this one again for Thunderbird, but still continues. By the way, all these blue lines that you see, um, those are flood advisories. A lot of heavy rain out of these. Flooding threat continues. <clears throat> There's your area circulation on the west side of uh, uh, Thunderbird. South side of Norman, ton of rain coming down right now. That continues again. Matter of fact, look at these storm totals that we have seen here. Rain totals that we're picking up here. Uh, you can definitely see the tracks of these have been taken two inches plus from Cole to Goldsby, uh, up towards Riverwind Casino, uh, over an inch as you go out towards Thunderbird. Definitely a lot of rain out there. So these flood advisories continue. <clears throat> but by the time you go to work tomorrow, go to school, uh, any, any high water, out there should be coming down. Definitely a narrow path. Some of the heavier rain, uh, even you see up towards around uh, more as well. So uh, definitely, definitely quite the uh, heavy rain. Always nice to see out here, but sometimes you can get too much of a good thing out here. So in the meantime, still watching these storms as they're lifting up to the northeast. So two tornado warnings here, plus this one down by Winnet, headed up towards Seminole. So those are your three tornado warn storms that we have ongoing right now from McLean County, Cleveland, Potawatomi, in Seminole County right now. Uh, these are all set to go until 1015. May go a little bit later than that. We'll let you know. Right now, here's your area circulation that we see uh, south of Romulus, just on the northwest side of Asher, moving up to the northeast, headed towards the community there of St. Louis, and then Maud. So Maud, that's 1025. Wolf at 1040. Bowlegs at 1042. Right now, again, tornado warning for Pottawatomie County until 1015 as this moves up to northeast not exactly not th these are not storms that are moving at blazing speeds here we're going about 15 to 25 miles per hour with this we're still looking for debris uh, right now nothing that would say there's indeed debris inside this tornado but we'll uh we'll watch that one let's get an update let's go back out the storm command making his way around the southeastern side of lake thunderbird michael this tornado warning continues michael what do you see well, and I would say that, okay, just, Damon, if you look at it, basically, uh, south of Twin Lake radar site, there, there's some a new velocity picking up there. I think we're starting to get a little bit more of an enhancement in the velocities. This may try to spin up again, but this time further north from Highway 9, you can kind of see how it wraps all the way around into it. That's where I have my camera pointed. I know you're not getting a whole lot of lightning or a lot in the view uh, because of the trees out here, but um, this is what we can do in Storm Command. We can track it on radar just like you guys can in the studio as well. And I have that training as well. So that's three of us, and you know, and all of our meteorologists are doing this as well. So you know, we, we've got eyes on it. And what I would say is we need to monitor this area that's on the kind of on the north side of the of the tornado warning box right now because it seems like this storm is kind of surging a little bit more up to the north or the, the northeast rather than kind of moving to the east northeast like it did when it came out of noble toward highway nine does that make sense of course of, of course it does yeah so we're just watching as these winds surge out some other areas of circulation that try to spin up and again we're looking on the north side of this polygon right here so uh once again <clears throat> excuse me here we are right now thunderbird 
My Thunderbird kind of takes this, uh, this bend, this elbow right here, but here we are watching this area. That's going to be on the north side, and so that's going to head up towards Stella at 10.09 Bethel Acres, 10.43, and then uh, Bethel High School there at 10.46. Grand Casino up towards McLeod and Dale right around 10.45. That's still about another hour from now. Talk about some slow-moving storms. Not moving very quickly, you know, but we are watching these as they move up to the northeast here. So these tornado warnings remain. Now, tornado, these tornado warnings go until 10.15. We'll see, uh, we'll see if, they, if they go... Uh, if they get reissued. But at this point, at this current track right now, I mean, these tornado warnings still, they're still serious. Uh, and especially with the sun set, dark outside, uh, it, it, takes, uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of trends that we got to watch before we can drop these for good. And so these tornado warnings remain. Now, if you are watching in Oklahoma County, if you're watching in Edmond, uh, if you're west of I-35, you're doing much better now. So if, if you're wondering, hey, look, can I go to bed or can I not? Uh, you know, Oklahoma City out to the west, you're doing okay. So watching this storm though, uh, this will be crossing over I-35 soon. Still getting an inflow into this, still some rotation. Let's check in with Derek Klein right now. Derek, still watching this tornado warning continue. What do you see? Yeah, Damon, so we're here now. We, we're way out, well out in front of it in my stream here. You can see the lightning. You can see the rain-free base there. Uh, I don't see anything that looks like a tornado right now. Um, although the the radar um, the radar picture of the storm is look, looking a little bit better as it comes up on I-35, so we're definitely going to be curious here. So we're going to head up just to the north side of Slaughterville, somewhere between Slaughterville and Noble, and uh, we'll be able to watch this thing as it comes up across I-35. And we're in really really good position right now. So if this storm does produce a tornado, we will be able to see it uh, with all the lightning that's behind it. Uh, so we're, we're in good position to cover it. We'll let you know what we see. Back to you. Okay, we know you will there, Derek. Again, watching this cell real closely. Um, let's hope this is the last storm that we have to, to deal with tonight. Now, there, there's some high-resolution data coming in right now that does show at least the potential for uh, a flare-up of storms down by Wichita Falls and Lawton. Uh, that may impact us well after midnight tonight. We'll continue to watch it. Low chance for that, but we'll continue to watch it. In the meantime, though, uh, here's your inflow again with this cell, Washington to Goldsby, moving up to the northeast. Let's go down towards Winnet and Asher, get an update on this storm uh, that would impact those of us in towards around the Seminole area. And so, uh, Asher, you're okay now. Um, Avoca, you're okay as well. Winnet, you're okay. Uh, this storm's now northeast of you. Still watching this as it continues to move up to northeast. Some spin with this cell uh, down by Avoca. Uh, west of Sacred Heart, that's going to be northwest of Kanawha. Rotation tracker is not very strong with this. Some hail. By the way, we've really been uh, quite fortunate from a hail perspective today. Uh, the hail has not been very large. A lot, a lot of the data that we had earlier was showing us tennis ball size hail. Haven't seen any of that. So hail sizes have been have been uh, fairly low, quarters and half dollars max. The storm doesn't have much hail with it either, at least not very large hail. It has some hail, but not a lot of large hail. But Maud, it is headed up in your direction. So um, there is going to be Buck. He's out by Earlsboro. Uh, this headed up towards Seminole. Seminole, you're not technically in the tornado warning yet, but uh, be prepared for uh, extension of this should uh, this continue to strengthen as it goes to the east. We'll watch it. Seminole, technically, you're not in tornado warning yet, but we'll see how this all, we'll see how this all uh, kind of goes. Uh, as it moves up to the northeast again. Maud, watching it for you. Here's Buck, Earlsboro, and that tornado warning continues. Let's go out to, there's Chris, uh, there's Derek, we have Nick, we have Storm Command uh, up to the north. Uh, this cell uh, showing some rotation, not very strong, not very, not very strong uh, rotation at all from Goldsby down to Washington, but it's still there. Got to respect the tornado warning polygon here for sure. Slaughterville, 1019 Denver, 1046 Lake Thunderbird, again, at about 1047. Uh, let's hope that this will uh, weaken as it continues to make its way through uh, town here. And hopefully, again, Noble, I know there's some damage. Uh, our crews are down there. Uh, they went back up until the storm is out of here, uh, but we'll watch it. Still finding an air of rotation right here out by Little Axe. Again, out by Little Axe. So there's Nick, there's Storm Command. Uh, still finding some areas of rotation, especially there on the north side of Lake Thunderbird, uh, out by Thunderbird. As a matter of fact, putting a track on the northern extent of this, moving up to the northeast, it's going to come close to Stella, Bethel Acres at 1041, Bethel High, High School, 1044 Dale, 1048 uh, Grand Casino, uh, right around 1045 uh, with that storm moving up to the northeast. So check back in with Michael. Michael, 
Give us an update. I know a bit of a different chasing situation here as the sun is now set. But Michael, what do you see? Okay, we'll get Michael back on here in just a bit here. Again, Michael, uh, our, our crews are all, you can see all their locations. There's Nick, there's Storm Command, there's Chris, there's Derek. Okay, we'll go back out to Michael. Michael, now you're live on air. Michael, what do you see? Yeah, sorry, cell coverage gets a little spotty. And I don't know, I mean, I don't know how many storm chasers are still trying to chase this at night. It's crazy how many people are out here on the roads, Damon. I know Nick talked about that earlier, but it really is, um, it's just, wow. I mean, so we're looking at it right now. We see a big, like a broad lowering, like with a big bell shape to it that extends well north of Highway 9 up to the north and east of Lake Thunderbird and all the way back to the south right along this edge. And we'll see if it starts to tighten up again. There's The low-level jet has started to kick in, so the winds up above the ground are stronger. Sometimes at night, you know, as long as it, if it's still unstable, actually the tornado threat can even go up at night uh, in that situation, which I know that's not what anybody wants to hear because nobody wants to have a nighttime tornado. But uh, this storm continues to be very intense right now as it's moving here uh, from Cleveland County, getting ready to go into Pottawatomie County. It, it certainly is. And looking at some of the high-resolution data there, Michael, uh, it still appears that at least the threat's going to continue for at least the next 45 minutes. We have this brand new data that is is really helping us not only look at what the environment is right now with the storms, what it's going to look like 10 minutes from now, 15 minutes from now, and it updates every 15 minutes. And so looking at this high-resolution data still tells us that the, the storms are still going to be tornado warned even at 10, 15 uh, as they move to the east here. So uh, there should be a downward trend as we go right around, say, about 10.30 to 11 o'clock in that window. But at least we know for the short term, these tornado warnings are still going to be flashing on your screen, both here uh, and uh, down here as well, uh, down by Romulus. It's still rotating uh, very close to the community of St. Louis, southeast of Romulus. That's northeast of Avoca. These are not ex these are not very fast-moving storms, but Maud, Maud, tell you what, watching this cell, and it's, it, I know, Maud, it feels like it's taking a while for this storm to come in. These are not very fast-moving storms, bit of a different situation from what we've had before. With some of these storms, I feel like they come in here incredibly fast. These are moving much slower. But Maud, 1025. So right now it's 955. So we're still looking, oh, 20, 30 minutes from now, kind of in that ballpark uh, with this storm moving up to the northeast. So heavy rain coming up towards Seminole. Uh, this cell still continues. Little Axe, Stella, inflow into this cell. By the way, a narrow band of heavy rain, so just be prepared for that. Uh, coming in with this line of storms. We've had a lot of radar estimates of one to two inches of rain. Uh, the rotation is still there. Not very strong, but it's still there, especially on the north side of Thunderbird. Uh, tracking this one out. Uh, this one's going to spread up towards Bethel Acres, 1039. Bethel High School, 1041. Grand Casino, 1042. Dale Gaddy, 1045. With that cell moving up northeast. Jonathan, what are you seeing? Well, I... I I feel this storm that Michael's on, and I know he had said, hey, you know, he had a lowering and he, the velocities looked impressive to the north. Look how the radar beam just came by, and what I'm looking at it, it just, it looks a lot weaker. Yeah. It doesn't have that big, remember the big ball that we had with it? That was way back, you know, way back here. Yeah, that, yeah. that there you go. That's a very significant supercell. Big old hook. <sighs> Maybe it's going to cycle again. Michael's right there. Maybe, you know, new mezzo forms, but it looks a little detached. Now, the storm that Derek's on, I think, is looking a little bit more robust. The velocity <laughs> may not be as strong, but again, uh, of, of the three storms, uh, the Noble Storm may be the strongest right now. Yeah, I, I, def I definitely see that as well. Uh, and just looking at some of this high-resolution data coming in, um, this Noble cell that we have, there's still, a, there's still a, a, a chance that it might, for two or three minutes, pick up an intensity before it comes back down. Uh, as we've been watching all throughout the evening with these storms where they kind of ride this wave where it feels like they peak in their intensity and then it comes back down, this storm may have one more kind of rise, one more kind of increase before it comes back down. So we'll watch it right now coming back into Noble. I know... There's still a lot of search, uh, definitely a lot of uh, search and rescue going on right now. A lot of debris spread across the roads from the tornado warning earlier. 
but we're we're still we're still watching the storm come in so it's still it's still a serious storm so we're gonna watch it as it's moving through here after this one moves out of here hopefully things are gonna be improving much more as we go out to uh as we go out towards seminal oh, i'm sorry not seminal and to noble so here you go uh cancel the tornado warning for cleveland oklahoma and potawatomi county that's this one right here so this big warning shawnee that warning saw it live on air it just it just fizzled okay so now we're working two tornado worn storms i like the direction we're going here where we're we're finally i feel like two tornado warnings may be the fewest uh, number of tornado warnings we've had since about seven o'clock uh we've been working a handful of them it feels like throughout the evening so now that's two tornado warnings uh but they're still there uh they go until 10 15. here's one that we see right now so there's the town of avoca uh, we're gonna be over some some rural land but this land belongs to someone so near the community of, of st louis headed up towards maud uh, so there you go right there, uh, putting a track on that one up to the northeast. That's Maud at 1023, Seminole at 1054. We'll see if that one continues. Uh, but I like the trend that we've gone. Again, now we have two tornado warning storms. So that's an update to pass along. Again, now we're working two tornado warning storms. And uh, those two tornado warning storms uh, are still going to be for McLean and Cleveland County and then Seminole County and Pottawatomie County. So uh, we're still working the same, we're still working the same counties. Uh, we're just kind of trimming away some of these tornado warnings that we have right now. So once again, here we are near the community of St. Louis, headed up towards Maud, and eventually towards Seminole and Bow Lakes. This goes until 10, 15, another 15 minutes. Once again, you're watching KOCO 5 News at 10 o'clock. We've been in nonstop severe weather coverage, tornado coverage since these storms have uh, been developing during the six o'clock hour here, but Maud at 1023, Bow Lakes at 1043, Seminole, 1054, with this cell right here, moving up to northeast. Inflow into it doesn't look that exceptional. Um, hopefully these storms that we see down into Pontotoc County are kind of messing up the inflow with this. But at least from a, from a hook echo standpoint, this doesn't look like it's as nearly as intense. Now this one still has, this one still has legs to it. This one's still going from Noble. As a matter of fact, there's Derek Klein. If we can talk to Derek Klein, Derek, Still watching your storm, and by the way, Derek, with some of the high-resolution data we have coming in right now, still shows that this storm that you're on, this tornado warning, may have one more increase in velocity before it comes back down. So, Derek, give us an update on what you're seeing right now with this cell. Crazy with the lowering, but the hail size has actually jumped up, which could be an indication that the uh, storm is trying to intensify. Uh, we're actually getting isolated quarter size hail, which is some of the biggest hail we've seen all day uh, with these storms. So kind of interesting to see uh, if that's going to correlate to an increase in the possible rotation. So uh, we're going to continue to watch this here uh, as it moves to the east. But now the rotation again coming up on Slaughterville. It'll be either, it'll either go right over Slaughterville or about a half mile north of Slaughterville. So. Uh, we're going to continue to watch it as it moves off to the east-northeast. Back to you. Okay, we know you will. We see Derek, we see you, we see Chris Lee still watching this right here. And there's, here's the uh, circulation that we have. Again, very close to Noble and Slaughterville moving up to the northeast. And so we're going to continue to watch it. Again, this tornado warning for this part of Cleveland County goes until 1015, another 14 minutes from now. But tracking it to the east, need more, 1041, Etowah at 1050, Little Axe, 1054. Uh, I know there's some power outage situations going on here, and so this storm is going to delay some of the search and rescue, but um, it, it won't be over Noble for that much longer uh, as it's moving up to the northeast here. So uh, there's Chris, by the way. I haven't talked to Chris Lee in a little while. Uh, we'll get an update from him because he is going to be coming up on this storm as well. And so north of Slaughterville, you're in your tornado shelter right now, Noble Slaughterville. Uh, moving up to the northeast here with this tornado warning. Um, the one that we had up towards Thunderbird, we're doing better now. That's no longer in effect. Okay, let's check in with Chris Lee. Chris, another tornado warning that you're tracking. What do you see, Chris? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's really difficult in the in among the trees in the dark and and everything. I'm I'm really not. Uh, I'm just getting on this storm here that's coming over Slaughterville just right about now. So we're uh, we're downstream from a little ways. We're we're a couple miles north of Slaughterville right now. So um, we're looking. Uh, Hearing some, is that hail? I think we're getting some very small hail, maybe some of Derek's hail he was talking about, because uh, we have precipitation just started here, and we just heard a couple of things bounce off the truck, but uh, not seeing anything, yeah. 
definitely hail. Uh, probably dime size or so, just from the sound of it. Just uh, just falling here we are. Let me get our location here, just uh, exactly where we're at. Uh, at Cemetery Road and Seventy uh, Second Street. Um, yeah, we can definitely uh, quarter uh, size hail now. You got quarter size hail, okay? And Chris, we have you plotted up with our GPS too, uh, by the way, so we can see exactly your location. Here's a hail core that's coming. It's over Noble, and so Noble, this should be out of here in the next 15 minutes. Should just be east of you, so. Uh, we'll get some, uh, I know that there, there's been some damage in Noble. They had to put it on pause for just a little bit there uh, as this tornado warning cell is now going through. Although this one looks like it's on the south, southeast side of Noble, moving up to the northeast. Now this warning does not include Little Axe or Etowah. It is set to expire at 1015. We'll see if it's going to be extended or not right now. Again, it's 10.03, 10.04 to be exact. So we'll continue to watch this one. Moving up to the northeast, so tornado, tornado warning continues for Cleveland and McLean County, uh, picking up a little bit of speed, about 25 miles per hour. Definitely getting a little bit larger hailstones out of this uh, compared to what we have seen, although it's not very large. So you can see right here, about one inch quarter size hail. Uh, given what the atmosphere was capable of dropping on us earlier today, uh, a lot of the soundings that we saw uh, were showing tennis ball size hail, big hail. So. Oliver Hale has been saying in the coin size variety, not sporting ball variety. So uh, that's at least a kind of a step in the right direction as well. So quarter size hail right over Noble, uh, moving over. As you heard Derek mentioned, he's getting some hail. Chris Lee mentioned <coughs> getting some hail as well, moving up to the northeast here with this cell once again. Uh, so we'll watch this one. Kind of we've really trimmed, we've really trimmed this uh, this tornado warning down by quite a bit. Not very large. Let's check in with Michael. We see him on the top of the television screen here, up in pink. Michael, what do you see? Yeah, Damon. Um, as of right now, I mean the the lightning out ahead of us. We've we've got to get over here to this other storm that's further to the east. Uh, we need to get over here to cover kind of Seminole in that area, especially that the, that storm that was near Thunderbird has weakened some. Um, and so we're we're on our way over to that direction. And I will just tell you from just. From a storm chasing standpoint, when I see a storm produce as much lightning as that one is, it always gives me uh, some degree of concern. And I know those storms have been spinning there around uh, St. Louis, Maud, and over towards. We're making our way in from west of Tecumseh, all east on Highway 9 over that direction. We'll continue to bring you, you know, reports, and I'll give you an idea of, of just kind of how much lightning we're seeing with it. But it'll be a little bit before we can kind of see any more bases. But we just, uh, it's just really important for people over there to be able to, to get warning as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we do have Shane and we have Buck out on this storm as well right now that Michael's referring to. And so uh, there's Buck right here out by Maud. So he's looking right into this. Now, again, it is dark, but Maud, Buck is watching the storm closely for you. Shane's going to be up here and eventually looking outside of this, headed towards Seminole. Now, you heard Michael mention that the number of lightning strikes just in the last couple of minutes. We're looking at over 100 lightning strikes. That's a lot of lightning. Uh, it's going to light up the sky by quite a bit and be quite noisy. Okay, let's go out to Buck. So, Buck, you're in this tornado warning right now that's coming up towards Maud. Uh, Buck, how are things right now in the town of Maud? Now, when it's currently not raining, and honestly, it, it's dark. It's dark, and out here, there's so many trees along the highways. It's hard to get a good look at it. But I can confirm what Michael was saying about the lightning. Um, when we were in the teeth of this storm, it was the most lightning that we had seen today. So the to the storm is pretty strong. We just not be able to see any lowerings or any uh, uh, bases of the clouds. And what we can see is just a lot of lightning. And so we're trying to get outside of town a mod here as we work our way towards Seminole and maybe find a high point where we can get a better view of, of what's above us. Back to you. Okay. And so uh, information to pass along. So the tornado warning for Noble is going to be allowed to expire. Now, that, that will be replaced by a severe thunderstorm warning uh, with uh, the threat for some, some big hail up to the size of half dollars. But now we're working with just one, <clears throat> excuse me, one tornado warning now. So now it's going to be just one tornado warning, and this is going to be it. So this could be the, the, the lone tornado warning that we have. So for Maud, St. Louis, here we are now watching this closely for you. Seminole as well. The threat's not over. Now, again, we are, we are at least trending these, these tornado warnings down. So 
uh, what, about 10 minutes ago we had three, then we had two, now we just have one, <coughs> excuse me, one tornado warning, but this could be it. So definitely still seeing the inflow, and this storm is still, this storm is still going. It is still going. It's all about, it's all out by itself, has, has decent inflow, a lot of lightning. As a matter of fact, we've seen an increase in the lightning strikes there. You can see it going from 116 now to 117. So when you see lightning increasing, that is a sign of a strengthening storm. So for Maud, watching this, now we're at the 118. Yeah, it definitely feels like this is going up. So uh, Buck is watching it for you and Maud. Uh, Shane up towards around Seminole, and uh, we'll continue to watch this moving up to the northeast. It's set to expire in the next five minutes. Probably is going to be extended, I believe. We'll see. Uh, but we'll, we'll watch it as it continues to go up to northeast. Not moving very quickly, so Maud right now, 1024 is when it's projected to move in. Bow Legs at 1046, Seminole, 1057, uh, and then uh, making its way up towards around Lima there at about 11 o'clock with this cell. Again, with this storm moving up to the northeast once again. So uh, keeping a close eye on the circulation. Again, it's still sitting basically right over, uh, right over um, St. Louis. And that's, that is an uptick. You don't like to see that at all. Um, especially when you see that red and that green right here. That, that might be kind of displaced a little bit. We'll see. Um, but it kind of correlates where we see the inflow coming into the cell uh, right, over, uh, right over the town of, of St. Louis. So again, tornado warning that we have out here by Noble, Cleveland County, that's going to drop. Uh, it, again, it will be replaced though, by a severe thunderstorm warning for hail, uh, but otherwise tracking this cell as it's moving up towards Bowlegs and Seminole. Uh, other storms that we have, by the way, uh, down by Sasakwa, south of Holdenville, those are not severe. So uh, again, there you go. Uh, one, one tornado warned cell now uh, is, what we're, uh, is what we're working with. Um, let me go back out to Michael, if I can. Want to check in with Michael. So Michael, an update to pass along. So a tornado warning has been allowed to expire for Noble, uh, replaced with a severe thunderstorm warning he headed your way for a hail. Michael, give us an update on what you're seeing from Storm Command. Yeah, actually, we just got that warning uh, and uh, that it's the severe thunderstorm warning that's been issued for this area. And, you know, I'll tell you what, I know a lot of people out here would take quarter size hail over uh, a tornado warning any day, as many as we've had. I was kind of thinking about that, what you said earlier about, you know, you felt like this is the first time we've, you know, we've been down to that few tornado warnings in a long time. And, and uh, that is that is one thing that's a very uh, good sign. Uh, the problem is we still have this rotation area that I, I don't know, Damon, I'm, I, I see it. It got kind of tight right there around St. Louis headed up toward Maud, and that's going to be lifting toward Seminole. So, uh, I mean, we'll see. I mean, they, they haven't been long tracked, so for that circulation to maintain its intensity all the way to Seminole, I, you know, I kind of doubt it. But at the same time, I mean, we're, we're in this situation now. The low-level jet has increased, and you just, like, you know, until the storm is done, it's not done. So and that means that we're not done. No, you're, you're, you're right. You know, we're going to have to keep, we'll have to keep, uh, keep going on here with these storms here. Again, severe thunderstorm warning for this storm. And again, this, one's, this one has some hail on it. So we'll check in with Derek in just a little bit. But this is worn for a uh, uh, half dollar size hail with this cell. Um, and then this tornado warning that we have down here, uh, that's going to be down by St. Louis. So let's see here. We got a. Okay, so they've extended the tornado watch. Oh, here we go. Okay, let me pass this along. Um, tornado watch has now been extended until 2 a.m. for Carter, Cleveland, Garvin, Grady, Jefferson, Johnson, Lincoln, Love, Marshall, McLean, Murray, Oklahoma, Payne, Pontotoc, Pottawatomie, Seminole, and Stevens County. Tornado watch has been extended now until 2 a.m. Until 2 a.m. Uh, that's another four hours from now. So basically... This watch right here will update the banner, but it now goes until 2 a.m. Let's check in with Derek Klein if we can. Derek, give us an update on what you're seeing, Derek. Yeah, Damon, so we're kind of right out in front of the storm right now. We can see a rain-free base. There's maybe a little bit of a lowering, but it's not super low. Uh, I think we're probably about to get some more hail here. Uh, I'm not for sure. I've, I'm, I'm in near Etowah, so cell phone coverage is definitely going downhill, so we'll be... We'll be chasing this with our eyes and not with the radar going forward for the next little bit. But, uh, again, it, we did see some quarter size hail just uh, two miles south of Noble. Um, so we can confirm that there was severe hail in this storm. There wasn't a whole lot of it, uh, but it is, a, it is a severe thunderstorm. It does have a rain-free base. It does have a lowering. Um, 
again, rotation looks weak. Um, it's very difficult to see at night, but looks weak. So, But we'll continue to watch it because these storms have had a history of spinning up fairly quickly. So we'll be here, and if, if something happens, we'll be here covering it for you. Back to you. We know that you will. So brand new tornado warning, by the way, has just been issued. So um, new tornado warning. This is going to include Seminole as we expected that it would. So this Pottawatomie, Seminole County till 1045. Uh, not moving very quickly. Again, moving about 15 miles per hour. So we're only adding a little bit more. But yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. Mod, uh, you, need, you need to be, you have time, Mod, by the way. Moving about 15 miles per hour. Uh, but Mod, circulation's coming in right now. Um, definitely an, an increase in the velocity right there. So that storm, and then eventually after Mod, headed up towards Seminole. So Mod at 1028, Bow Lake 1053. <clears throat> Seminole at 11.02 with that storm. Again, with that storm uh, making its way from uh, St. Louis, southwest of Maud, moving up to the northeast. Again, Seminole, Maud, uh, Maud first, tornado shelter. Given the slow movement, Seminole, you have plenty of time. We'll let you know when it's time to go in there. <clears throat> if you were to go in right now, you'd probably be sitting in there for about an hour. Uh, but there's your circulation right now. Uh, not very tight, but it's definitely there. It is definitely there on the west southwest side of Maud, north of St. Louis, moving up to the northeast. Again, this new warning goes until 1045, uh, and it's going to be for this one that does include Seminole until, again, Seminole, you still have about 45 minutes, Seminole, before it's coming in, so you still have time. We'll continue to watch this one real closely. We have Buck, we have Shane, uh, Storm Command, watching this one right now as well. Let's go out the Buck. So, Buck, brand new tornado or brand new tornado warning has just been issued. This does include Seminole. Buck, give us an update on what you're seeing out there. Yeah, Damon, we're just seeing, uh, you know, a bunch of lightning right now. Kind of some moderate rainfall, not much wind, but we are now looking back to the southwest um, to where this hook is on the radar, and we need some lightning strikes to really illuminate uh, what what we're looking at. Um, but definitely on radar, there's something there, and it looks like it's really intensifying. Back to you. But, yeah, Buck, you're exactly right. There's something there, and it's definitely intensifying. We can definitely see that <clears throat> on the radar with the last scan that just came in just moments ago. That's it right there. So here's Maud, uh, about two miles southwest, west of Maud. That's your area of spin. We're east of Romulus, but really got to watch. That's the area that is of concern. It is picking up, by the way. Um, circulation, the couplet within that. So, Maud, you need to be in your shelter. Again, it's not moving very quickly, about 15 miles per hour, but it is coming into town uh, with that. And eventually, after Maud, then it will head up towards Seminole. Here's Seminole on the uh, top right hand portion of your television screen. It's going to take a little while. It's going to take a little while to come in, uh, but here we are right now. And by the way, uh, as we mentioned just moments ago, a, uh, the tornado watch has been extended until 2 a.m. Uh, that's to account for the possibility of more storms that are going to try to develop down by the Lawton area and move back up. So, again, here's the newest tornado watch that we now have until 2 a.m. <clears throat> and this does go all the way down to Norman, Purcell, Elmore City, Ardmore. Does include Stillwater. New tornado warnings. It's going to be for the severe thunderstorm warning that we had. Is it for this? Let's go back over to the radar. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I was just watching this, this right here. So... I tell you what, we're not done. So now we're back to two tornado warnings. Okay, now we're going back in the, the in the wrong direction here with these tornado warnings. But now we're going, we went from one, now we're back up to two. And I had a feeling this in the last couple of radar scans definitely has started to have an inflow. Uh, this is east of Slaughterville. This will not impact Noble. Noble, you're not included in this tornado warning. Uh, but here we are right now, new tornado warnings. Check in with Chris Lee. Chris Lee, back in the tornado warning once again uh, for Cleveland County and Pottawatomie County moving to the east at 25 miles per hour. Chris, give us an update on what you're seeing. Yeah, I'm not seeing a great deal on uh, rotation or anything like that. We have uh, we did see the hail uh, in, in this storm, um, but at this point, very difficult to see much. We're kind of, we're kind of the look out ahead of it, but we really haven't any definition or, or lowering or anything. Chris, definitely watching. Uh, Chris, you're, you're kind of coming in and out here. Uh, but brand new tornado warning just issued just moments ago. Let me show you right now where this area circulation is going to be. Uh, I'm going to show the shear on this. Again, it's going to be very close 
to the east northeast of Slaughterville, where we have uh, uh, Derek. There's gonna be Mark of a Noble, and then Chris Lee as well. So putting on a couple of tracks with this right here. Um, again, tracking this to the east. Uh, you can see right here. This will likely stay. This right here will likely stay just south. Of thunder, this will stay south of Thunderbird. So, you know, a couple of areas certainly are very concerned um, in the in the uh, Lake Thunderbird area. This will stay just south of you. Will continue to move to the east here. Now, as we go to the uh, as we go up to the east right now, uh, once again keeping a close eye on this. Let me check back in, by the way, with field meteorologist Michael Armstrong and Storm Command. Uh, Michael, give us an update on what you're seeing, Michael. Uh, yeah, so you're, I mean, both of these storms really, you're, I, Damon, they're just in an environment that's going to continue to support tornadoes. I know the sun is set, I know it's dark, folks, but we're just in a position tonight where there's just too much moisture in the atmosphere, and these storms are not going to weaken for a while. So for some of you, uh, south and east of Oklahoma City, I, I think in the metro, for the most part, we're done now, Damon, but areas east of I-35 is a totally different story. Uh, Etowah, Tribby, I mean, those are some of the same names we were calling out, right? I mean, we've been calling out Cole, Noble, Goldsby, Etowah, and now it's extending further east over into Seminole County, too. Uh, Maud, uh, please be in your shelter right now. Same thing for Etowah and Tribby. Is both of these storms look like they could potentially produce a tornado at any moment. Yeah, it's definitely going back in that direction. And so, can I give everybody an update right now as to what's happening? So, we have two tornado warnings ongoing right now. Seminole, I know the sirens are sounding. So, for Seminole, the rain's already started. The rain's going to come in first. The way that the storm is moving is that we're going to get the rain then we're going to get the circulation. Here it is right now, uh, about two miles west of Maud, moving up to the northeast at this current track. This may very well stay just barely northeast of Maud, but it will be close. We have Shane, we have Buck right now, currently in, uh, in Seminole, in between Seminole and Maud. But you can definitely see, here's your area of rotation right here with this cell uh, as it continues to move up to the northeast. So we are getting a low-level lock right now on our radar that is indicating exactly where the couple is going to be west of Maud. Let me go back out to Michael. Michael, what do you see? Well, Damon, one of the things that we always look for is what we call gate-to-gate -gate shear. And what that means, you know, is, is the velocities that are being detected by the Doppler radar. They're really strong right together. And just a few moments ago, right before you came to me, I did some quick radar uh, on it, and I, I calculated over 90 miles per hour of gate to gate shear with that mod storm that's pretty significant uh that it's it's rare that you have gate to gate velocity that strong and you don't have a tornado yeah this one is definitely the strongest michael that we have right now in the mod area um just on the west side of mod so uh definitely concerned again our radar we are getting a low level lock on this one which would indicate a fairly tight circulation uh circulation couplet right there on the west side uh, the west side of mod uh, as that one continues to make its way to the northeast. So uh, for Seminole, I know the sirens are sounding in Seminole. It's because of this right here in Maud moving up to the northeast. We have Buck. We have Shane. Shane Helton, let's check in with Buck right now. And then we'll go out to Shane after Buck. Uh, Buck, you first. Buck, what are you seeing right now uh, with the storm coming in? Well, we're still seeing in, in a lot of intensity in the lightning, and uh, we're fixing to kind of drive back into where this couplet is and try to get out of these trees that we're currently in where we have a better view, um, but it, it, this this storm just continues to get stronger as it uh, kind of, it's not moving very fast at all, Damon. It's, it's for quite some time, but it just continues to intensify. Back to you. You're exactly right, Buck. It's, it's not moving very quickly, but it's definitely still going. Let me check in with Shane right now. Shane, you're in Seminole. Shane, are the sirens, are the sirens going off in Seminole, Shane? coming into town i thought i heard the sirens but they are not sounding as of right this great minute i mean i'm listening real close here i don't hear them i i know when i first came into town i i hollered at charlie and i said is that the storm sirens and uh I, they must have turned off right about that time because we're not hearing them now but uh, if you are here in Seminole, i would definitely be taking your tornado precautions especially if you are uh older or something like that you know and you've got to take a while to get to your your storm shelter now 
I'm not going to say you have enough time to drive all the way across town and go to somebody else's house, but if you are in a trailer house or something, you definitely need to be thinking very clearly about what you're going to do because mobile homes and things like that are really, really bad when it comes to any high winds. Uh, now, as far as hail, I'm not seeing any. However, it is raining here in Seminole, and we're going to come out the south side of town, and we're going to try and get it where we can see the rain-free base of this storm. Damon, back to you. Okay, so looking right now at kind of a more of a, bi a bigger picture as to where the storms are, where we are with this storm. So this is what it's looking like right now is that OKC, uh, I know we do have now an extension of a tornado watch until 2 a.m., so about another uh, three and a half another three and a half hours with that. But right now, uh, all the storms <clears throat> are currently facing Cleveland County, going into Pottawatomie County, and then Seminole County. Strongest storm is going to be this one, by the way. Mod up to Seminole. Other scattered thunderstorms that we see right now, down by Sulphur, that's not severe. Scattered storms down by Ada, lifting up towards Holdenville, those are not severe. Even a couple cells here in eastern Payne County going out towards Cushing, those are not severe. Quite a few flood advisories here right now, but once again, uh, the strongest storm that we're finding right now is still going to be this one that we have down in the mod area. The latest radar scan, we just lost our low-level lock, so let's hope that this is kind of trending back down. But at this current this current track, though, uh, and zooming in, I mean, there's your inflow coming right into uh, coming right into mod, right into mod. I mean, that's been a, a bit of a, a jog there, mod. You need to be in your tornado shelter right now. Uh, with that, now there's your circulation again, right in mod as we speak. That's it, right there. That's your tornado warning. Uh, that's your tornado in mod. At this current track, it will be moving up towards Seminole. Not a very fast-moving storm. I do want to emphasize just how slow this is moving at about 15 miles per hour. But it's those slower-moving storms that are usually a sign that the storm may be strengthening. So, updated storm track here. Right now, it is 1024. At that current speed, it's not in Seminole for about another 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. Uh, so, bow legs at 1048, Seminole 1058. Uh, in Lima at 11.05. It'll take a little while for that storm to move in. Let's hope it weakens, but we know that this tornado warning continues. Let's check in with Buck right now. Buck, a couple it continues to be right on top of Maud. Buck, what are you seeing from your vantage point? Well, uh, Damon, I feel, like it's, I feel like I can see what we need to see, but I can't see it very well because I'm not getting enough lightning right now. I do have some trees that are obstructing my view. Um, so we're, we're trying to use our eyes as best as possible, but we're really relying on radar updates right now to give us an idea of where we need to be to see this. And I feel like we're in a pretty good spot. It's coming right directly at us. It's just a couple of miles to our south. And uh, we're going to stay right here because we think this is the best area we can get a view of the base of this storm. Back to you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you're, you're, you're in a spot. So, and, and Sabrina, uh, working with you there. So... Uh, she'll, she'll continue to pass uh, meteorology data to you. But uh, once again, that storm continues. Now, what's interesting to note about this cell that is east of Slaughterville, southwest of Etowah, from a reflectivity standpoint, it looks like you have a well-defined like a well -defined hook echo here. I mean, that looks really impressive. However, the winds inside the storm are not nearly as intense. So a little bit of a misleading storm. If you were to look at this right now, I know this looks like this should be the stronger storm. This Cleveland County storm, so the one that's east of Slaughterville, is the weaker of the two. This one for Maud continues to look to be <clears throat> the stronger of the two storms. And so just passing that along. Again, got to analyze a lot of things live on air. There's definitely inflow into that storm, but that one does appear to be a bit weaker. So right now, still working two tornado warnings uh, as we continue uh, late into the evening. Here it's about 1030 uh, with this storm, uh, but we are going to continue to at least watch these cells uh, as they as they move up to the uh, as they move up to the north or to the east northeast. Once again, tornado warning for Pottawatomie County until 1045. Let me check in with Chris Lee right now. Chris Lee is going to be in Cleveland County here, southeast of Lake Thunderbird, watching this storm closely. Chris, give us an update on what you're seeing just south of uh, Thunderbird. Yeah, not seeing any rotation with the storm. Heavy rain, and uh, we have seen some hail earlier, not seeing that right now. Uh, definitely a lot of lightning, and uh, it's difficult to, you know, we keep saying it's a difficult to see at, at, at night uh, what, uh, you know, and with the trees and everything. But uh, we are watching the area 
uh, as it's coming over south of Lake Thunderbird. Uh, looks like it's going to be going uh, and through maybe the Etowah area, and we headed towards Macomb and Brooksville here over the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. Damon. Okay, we'll continue to watch that again. Still working two tornado warnings. So the seminal tornado warning goes until 1045, as you see right there. The tornado warning that is Cleveland County, that still goes until 11 o'clock. We'll see if it continues from a strength standpoint, however, and looking at the winds and sides, both of these storms are rotating, but right now, from, a, uh, from an impact standpoint, this cell that I see currently over Maud continues to be uh, a little bit stronger. So again, there's your new uh, storm track uh, right there with that cell uh, that continues to move to the east. So once again, Maud headed up towards Seminole. There's Shane. There is going to be Buck. There's Storm Command, by the way, out near Earlsboro. Let me talk to Michael. So, Michael, it looks like this cell that's coming into Seminole County continues to be the stronger of the two. Michael, what do you see from Storm Command? Yeah, I, I think uh, what I've been watching, though, Damon, is that uh, that storm is starting to come down in terms of uh, the tops on it, in terms of how tall the storm is. Usually that's a sign that the storm may be weakening, and I actually show that lightning starting to decrease some with it. Uh, as a result, um, I I think I'm going to come back in and, and help with the Tribby and Macomb storm, the one that's heading toward them, that's over uh, southwest of Etowah, just because of that real pronounced hook. And I did hear you mention that, and uh, you, are, you are right on on that, that the velocities are not nearly as strong, and they weren't as strong as what we saw there west of Mod. One thing that was interesting, Damon, that I did want to note was that the – the, the tornado, I think there was a tornado, by the way, west of Maud, and it lifted due north, almost due north or north-northeast as it came through, but the main cell is kind of moving more to the northeast. So it's interesting because some of these tornadoes are, are deviant motion, motion tornadoes. They're moving in a different direction than the main cell is moving, and that, that, that even adds more to the chaos. Uh, as if we needed more at night over in the trees and in the dark. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a wild night. It, it, def it definitely is. It is, uh, it is definitely a wild night. So putting up some stats right now on this storm that we have in uh, for Maud, where Buck and Shane are. So right now, hail sizes inside of it are not very high. You can see our tornado index is not very high either. So it's, it's sitting at about a 4.9. Um, that's, on a, that's on a, by the way, a 1 to 10 scale. Um, so it's still rotating, um, but we'll we'll watch the uh, the tornado index uh, that we have coming in with this storm. Again, it's still rotating, and so still got to watch. Let's check in with Shane right now. Shane, a storm coming in towards Seminole should be in town in the next. Not a very fast moving storm, by the way, Shane. So it's going to take about 23 minutes or so, according to our storm track. Shane, what do you see in Seminole and just outside of town? You know, we're watching it really closely right now, but Damon, it's just. It's just far enough away that we're not able to see it. And I actually just got out of the rain. So while we were in the rain, we really couldn't see much. And that's right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to get a better view of it. I just, I'm kind of in a, I, I'm not going to say I'm in a bad spot. It's just a place where I just really can't see much yet. So we're, we're working on it here, trying to see what we can find here. But uh, so far we haven't seen any hail and, and uh, if they weren't paying attention and, what, and, you know, if somebody wasn't paying attention, they just think it was a rainstorm. So but we are going to tell you, you need to be watching closely if, you're, if you live in this area. So because it's, it's heading this way. So back to you, Damon. Yeah, it certainly is. And so as of right now, all the severe weather stats, Shane, and, uh, and, and all of our team out there on this cell that we have right now, let's go ahead and go full with the radar here and I'll show it to you. So. Uh, it's moving not very fast, northeast at about 17 miles per hour. Still a tall storm, not as tall as some of the storms that we have had here. Hail is not particularly large out of there, still sitting at, at about three quarters of an inch. Still finding at least some rotation within this. Again, right now we're kind of bouncing back and forth with the tornado index there, about 4.9 to 5. So, uh, again, on, on a 1 to 10 scale, it's, it's not very high. But still, tornado warning remains now. It does appear that at least... Uh, the storm is still rotating in the mid-levels. Doesn't look like anything's still uh, on the ground. So let's hope that it continues to go in that path. But updated storm track that we have here, Seminole, 1052. Same thing for Seminole State College. Otherwise, as we go out to the west with our other storm that we're seeing as well, um, as we go out towards Etowah, 
this storm as well continues to, it's still tornado warned in it, and it will be putting a track on this one right now to the east. Uh, this one is a little bit lower. You can see here the tops, only about 26,000 feet. Not a lot of hail on that too, by the way. Hail's only gonna be around the size of peas. And so tracking that to the east, Burnett, 1046, Tribby, and then Macomb at 1057 with that cell as it's continuing to move to the east. Pink, have a lot of uh, have a lot of heavy rain falling overhead. Now remember at one point this storm was dropping quite a bit of hail. Uh, it's been worn for up to uh, up to I believe half dollar size hail. So showing the big picture right now, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom on out. You can see we have quite a bit of a, a quite a large severe thunderstorm warning by the way that has been issued for eastern Pontotoc County going up in towards Hughes County. Um, by the way, that's going to be until 1115. That's for quarter size hail, this big cluster of storms that we see right here. Let me go ahead and just put this radar into lapse mode. You can, you can see how these storms are basically moving here. Um, again, the last five minutes, uh, let me go ahead and just kind of clean this radar up just for a bit so you can kind of get a better perspective. Again, we got a lot of our crews out. All of our crews are out tracking these storms. Uh, but you can see these are moving to the east. So hanging on to these two tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warning. Other cells that we see, by the way, going up in northern Pottawatomie County, even up towards Chandler, Cushing, eastern Payne County. Those are not severe, but some of the high-resolution data that we've been watching does show that these may flare up a bit as they make a run up towards Tulsa with a hail threat ongoing up there. Uh, and again, we do have a new tornado watch that has been issued that goes until 2, 2 a.m. for these storms as they continue to move to the east. You can basically see where we're concentrating a lot of our coverage uh, on these tornado warnings, rightfully so, too, by the way. Shawnee, right now, this tornado warning is south of you. Now, Shawnee, we do have some storms that are coming in, uh, but again, you can see right there, tornado warning flashing south of you. Uh, and then again, that warning goes until 11. And then this tornado warning that we have for Seminole uh, goes for another 10 minutes. Let me check back in with field meteorologist Michael Armstrong. Michael, you're in between two tornado warnings right now, south of the Kumsa. Michael, what do you see? Right, yeah, we're, we're transitioning back to the tornado warning that's back to the west. And that storm, you know, it was kind of optimistic, right? I mean, we got to go down to a severe thunderstorm warning, but it didn't last very long, and they had to put another tornado warning on it. Um, you know, I, I did... I did read some analysis actually just a moment ago um, from the weather service, and they did they did say that they believe that there's no tornado any longer with the storm that has just now moved through Maud. Um, but there were confirmed power flashes, and uh, Spotter did report a tornado that's about three miles west of Maud. Um, so there there was a tornado there, and uh, it, it may have done some damage. Uh, looks like it. It, you know, may have taken down some power lines at the very minimum, but uh, that storm is definitely weaker now, and I've got my attention focused on this storm that's headed up toward Trivia. I know Derek is right there close to it, but um, also I know that having been in this area multiple times that uh, there are some areas out here where you simply cannot get cell service. So I don't know if, if we can talk to Derek at some point or not, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stay over here a little bit further to the east that way we can keep good cell service on it. We can give you some reports, but we're gonna be on 177 um, east of Tribby and just east of Macomb watching it come this way. Yeah, and, and you're right, and Michael, that, that's a lot of Oklahoma, by the way, where cell coverage, they can be hit and miss. And so, uh, but here's what we know right now at 1036. So this storm has come down considerably, not ready to write it off yet, Seminole, but it has come down. So we're going to continue to watch this one real close. Again, we have Buck and we have Shane keeping a real close eye on this. And then we have this tornado warning right now. So for this cell, by the way, that's going to be in seminal circulation. Let me, I'm going to show you exactly what the circulation is looking like um, at this moment. Again, it's not very strong, uh, but it's, it's there, but it is, it is much, much weaker. You can see right here, it's basically going to be just about four, uh, I'd say three to four miles northwest of Bow Lake to be exact. Uh, four miles to be exact, northwest of Bowlegs um, at this current track. Let me track this out the last, uh, the last few minutes. You can see how it's moving. It is moving up to the north. And so at that path, I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, how it's looking. It's going gonna, it's gonna to basically come very close to Seminole, but it's not very strong now. It, it has come down. So tornado warning still remains, so we're not writing this off just quite yet, but getting real hyper-local on this. This is going to be right on top of State Highway 59, four miles northwest of Bowlegs. 
moving up towards Seminole State College. Seminole, Seminole State College, you are in the tornado warning still. Our other storm that we have ongoing, by the way, that's going to be out just in towards now Pottawatomie County. Um, that's going to be mainly out towards Etowah. Looking at our shear, the amount of rotation, not very strong. Neither of these storms right now are really showing an, any type of strong rotation. Again, you can see the rotation is low. It's there, but it's low. It's right on top of Buck, by the way. And then even as we go out to the west, not finding any type of significant rotation either. Now, here's, here's uh, I want to be very clear, is that the tornado threat is decreasing at this moment, going into Seminole. Um, it's not zero, but it is decreasing, which is good. Same thing as we go out towards Etowah and Tribute. You'll see here a rotation tracker. When you see this type of dark green, that is very weak rotation. Once you start getting into the yellows and the browns and the reds, that's when you start to look at some much stronger rotation. Neither of these storms right now are showing that. So that's a step in the right direction. We are going to watch it, but I know we have our news crews right now standing by with damage in the Noble areas. I want to send it over to the news desk for an update there. All right, Chief Meteorologist Damon Lane, we'll get back to you in just a moment, but we are hearing of damage in Noble there in Cleveland County. Several buildings have sustained damage. KOCO's Elise Jones is there live. Elise, what are you seeing off of Main Street and Etowah Road? Well, Abby, I'm going to show you over here first. This is the command post that's been set up on Main Street and Etowah Road for anyone who has any damage to their home or reports of damage. You can find police, fire, uh, Oklahoma Highway Patrol was here a little bit ago. But if you look this way, they have actually set up a full police perimeter all the way over to these buildings. And you can see some of this damage here. This is a gas station and donut shop um, and a house back here where you see that one way sign that is a house we're told that only one house has been damaged um, and four commercial buildings they say that there are no injuries no rescues and it's truly a miracle but you can see this damage especially to the roof of this gas station and it's interesting because you know, we were here in Noble before that tornado came through. We were able to get out and find a safe place. And there were people sitting here at this gas station, standing outside watching the storm. And our photojournalist, Mark Frickland, went up to them and told them to seek shelter, that a storm was coming through. And I mean, thank goodness that they did, because look at the damage right where they were standing. So truly just a remarkable that he was able to tell them to find a safe place. But you can see just all that's happened over here. But again, only four buildings, one home, no injuries, uh, no rescues. And it's just this one block. They also said there are a few power lines down here on this block, but they have no other reports of damage so far here in Noble. But if you are in the area or have family in the area and have reports of damage, again, the command post has been set up on Etowah Road and Main Street. For now, reporting live in Noble, Elise Jones, KOCO 5 News. Elise, thank you. And we've been in touch with several different departments as well as the McLean County Sheriff's Office. And we're just learning from them. In Cole, there's a report of significant damage to a home there. Remember, Cole was hit by a tornado just last month. Yeah, two were, people died. Yeah, at least two deaths. They had widespread damage there. The good news tonight is that uh, the damage is not um, widespread, although one home at least with significant damage. The crews are also doing a grid search. They're searching Cole and Goldsby just to make sure in one specific area where they're looking 74 B from May to 260th. But the good news with this is so far no reports of of any injuries there in McLean County. They say uh, power outages are minimal right now and all roads are open, but you can see from our crew catching this tornado earlier this evening. You know, and it's interesting, you're talking about how this is a community that was hit by a tornado not that long ago. The fact that when we were talking to these emergency responders, these management crews, they were saying, we're not sure if some of the damage that we're hearing about as we're driving around town is new tonight. Yeah. or if this was existing damage from before. So Cole, I've been in contact with emergency management out of Pottawatomie County, where of course they had that big tornado move through Shawnee. Uh, I know for a fact that they have their own spotters, their own emergency management team, basically out by Lake Thunderbird to walk those storms towards in case mm -hmm. they got in there. Of course, now with tornado warnings in Pot County and some other nearby areas, we'll see what comes of that. But all these emergency management crews 
It's been a busy spring already for them right now, and so they've gotten a lot of practice, sadly, at, yeah. at exactly how to respond to nights like these. So just quickly to recap, there in McLean County, one home with significant damage, and that is where they are doing the grid search at 260th and 74B. And that's what you were talking about. He said that there were two homes that they spotted with minor, in, minor damage, but they weren't sure if it was from tonight or if it was from back in April. Mm -hmm. So that's something they're also looking at. Uh, speaking of Cleveland County as well, we mentioned the, the buildings. You saw that there in the live shot in Noble. Norman Police, the Norman Mayor, also the Cleveland County Emergency Response, saying that there is no damage in Norman. It really seems like Noble at this time, at least for our viewing area and the tornadoes that we've been covering tonight, Noble is the area that has sustained the most damage. Right, and we're also checking power outages for you. Damon, we've seen um, a significant drop in power outages, so that's good. Uh, we're looking at a little over 2,000 across the state. Most of those looks like with og &E, and most of them are in Norman, Noble, and Oklahoma City as well. At one point, I believe I saw it over 11,000 mm -hmm. statewide, so now we're down to about 2,100 right now. Uh, Damon, we're going to continue to um, look for any more damage reports and any more information, but we'll send it back to you for now. Okay, so we have an up, uh, important update to pass along. So, by the way, this tornado warning for Seminole has been canceled, so that's good. That was set to expire, by the way, in about two minutes. So, heavy rain, some gusty winds coming in the Seminole right now, but this warning, again, this tornado warning that we have right here for Seminole, that has been expired. It's been dropped a couple minutes early, so that's good. So now we're just working this one out towards uh, uh, out towards Burnett, coming in towards Pottawatomie County. Let me check in with Storm Command right now. So Michael, tornado warning for Seminole has been dropped. This one still continues from now another 15 minutes. Coming in the Pottawatomie County, Michael, what do you see from Storm Command? Well, I like the trends on these storms. So I know I know there's some warnings of that, like some of them are expiring, like you mentioned, and so. And that's that's good, I, Damon. I think one of the things, uh, kind of a use a little cliche here, but I I think that the storms down east of Ada and southwest of Ada are stealing these storms thunder. I really do. They 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 look like they're they've dramatically decreased. So either the cap is getting stronger, or or they've just kind of met their match. They're but they they just don't look nearly as strong as what they did. We'll keep our eye on them just in case, especially the one here near Tribby and Macomb. We've got, I think Derek and, and uh, Chris Lee and I are all three on this one now, so we've got it surrounded. If it does anything, we'll know it. But uh, I do like the trends that I'm seeing, and I'm not seeing nearly as much lightning with these storms either. That makes it hard on us because we can't see the lowered areas as well. But I'm looking, I'm looking right back toward the storm. I'm east of Macomb, and I'm looking due west. And I think I've seen one lightning flash in like two minutes or something. I mean, it's it's just it's crazy how how quickly these storms are kind of decreasing. And, and Michael, you're right. As I'm looking at all the data coming into our uh, into our radar right now, you're talking about a decrease. In not really sure if we Damon, can. Uh, Damon, I'm not sure if your mic's on. Is your mic? Is your If we can go okay. back to field meteorologist Michael Armstrong. Michael, can you hear us? Yeah, I can still hear you. I, th I think, Damon, uh, it's, we've been going a long time. So he probably needs a new battery there. But, yeah, uh, so one of the things we're seeing is that the storm that's near Trivi, there, there is a new core that's up above the ground several thousand feet. And so that's it, it even has prompted a hail marker very near Trivi. So there could be, I don't think it's very big hail. But um, uh, Derek, if if you're nearby and you can hear me, or Chris, have you guys had any hail with that storm that's near Tribby? I'm curious. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm near Macomb. I have not seen uh, hail uh, since it was over by Noble. Okay. Okay. So uh, I mean, by the it way, gentlemen, it so, looks a lot weaker. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Chris and, and, and Michael, Derek, and, and our teams out there, so we're good now. So uh, what I'm looking like, look, what I'm looking at right now on the radar, circulation's much lower. And Michael, you're right. When you talk about the lightning strikes coming down, in the last five minutes, Michael, I've only counted 13 lightning strikes. So uh, if you recall what we were looking at earlier with the storm, about 30 minutes ago, uh, we are uh, we had about 115 to 125 lightning strikes. So you're right. Definitely the lightning is decreasing with this. 
And when you see it decreasing, that's usually a good indication that the storm itself is decreasing as well. So again, total strikes in just the last couple of minutes, not very high there. Again, 13 lightning strikes. And even looking at our rotation tracker right now as well, it's not very high as well. Again, you see a little bit of weak rotation alongside this east of pink. I'll switch the radar back into our reflectivity mode. Uh, that's usually what a lot of us are, are used to seeing. And you can see here, I mean, you have some rain that's going to be tied to this. But I think probably uh, I, th I think probably what we know so far is that we are we are at least looking at a better at a better radar scenario. Now, recapping what we have seen so far this evening, I would say we probably had about 10 or 15 tornadoes uh, based off of the pictures that all of our storm chasers were bringing you from Nick to Derek to Buck to Shane to Chris to Storm Command Sky 5. I mean, our crews have been out. Every single tornado that has uh, been recorded today, our crews have been all over it. And we know just how important that means to you in helping plan whether or not you're, you're going into a tornado shelter, if it looks like you have some room to breathe for a little bit there. And definitely, uh, you know, these, these, uh, these tornado warnings, we take them seriously. But as you can see right here, Seminole, you're no longer in a tornado warning. This one barely has legs on it right now. I mean, it's set to expire in the next uh, 12 minutes or so. Uh, so we'll continue to see if, uh, if, if that is going to be dropped early or not. But just looking at the winds inside of it, the hail is not very large at all. Uh, and even looking at the shear, there's a little bit of, at least a little bit of rotation that we can see up near the Bethel Acres uh, and towards around the Shawnee, uh, west of Shawnee area. Uh, but right now, looking at it from a radar standpoint, there's definitely some rain, not a lot of lightning within this. I mean, you can see now we're going down to six lightning strikes. We have Nick Smith up in the Shawnee Mall area. Uh, and then looking at our crews, again, there's Buck and Shane down towards Seminole. And then we have Chris, Derek, and Storm Command basically kind of around the Macomb area as well, uh, moving up to the northeast. So we're going to continue to watch this, by the way. Let me send it back over to the news desk for an update. All right, Damon, thank you. Let's go out to one of our crews live right now in Cleveland County. Elise Jones standing by in Noble. And Elise, there was a, a block there in town that was hit by this tornado and uh, commercial businesses, but also a home as well. Yeah, you can see the home here behind me. We're told this is the only house that was damaged, but you can see just how damaged it was the roof this here on the side now we showed you this just a minute ago if you've been if you've been with us these are the two commercial businesses one is a donut shop one's a gas station that were hit and you could see some of this damage from that shot but this is just a better look at what really happened here now we haven't been able to find the homeowners um, and check on them and see if they're okay but you can see that their roof has just been torn off and even over here some just trash cans flipped over you can see the power lines are down here in the street um, this is the only block we're told that is without power and that has power lines down again this was the only home that has been reported to have damage um, but there is a command post here in the area for anyone who had damage and needs to report it there's firefighters police oklahoma highway patrol were here um, just ready to help anyone who maybe has reports of damage but again in noble power is out on main street and etowah road that's where the command post is set up this one home has been damaged as well as four commercial buildings. They've been told that there were no injuries and no rescues. Guys, back to you. KOC is Elise Jones live there in Noble. Great news, nobody was hurt. You do hate to see anybody lose their homes yeah. or, or property, which unfortunately we know happened tonight. We wanna now take you to McLean County. We're talking live with Deputy Scott Gibbons. Deputy, if you can hear us, uh, first of all, thank you for the time. Thank you for keeping us posted throughout the evening. I know you have one home with significant damage and you all just went through this uh, there in Cole on April 19th. So what is the latest there in the, the Cole area and the Goldsby area? Well, unfortunately, coal has been hit again. Uh, we're still doing initial assessments. We do look like we're in a lot better condition than we were uh, last time we spoke. We do have one confirmed house that has some pretty significant damage. We've got crews on the scene there. Um, outside of that one structure, um, most of the countywide damage that we've been reported uh, thus far has been minimal. All of our roadways are clear. Uh, power outages are minimal. Um, our OEC, our local utility company, has been on scene almost from um, the minute the storm went through. Uh, so we've been very fortunate there. Deputy Gibbons, the fact that 
these communities have been hit before this spring. It's been a busy spring by any metric. How has that changed the preparation from, from your department and also the preparation and the awareness of the people living in your county? Well, I believe that um, the local news and, and the weather alerts that our citizens have been uh, heating has helped us quite a bit. Um, my understanding is the house that our crews are responding to tonight uh, did have a situation where a, a person was in their shelter. Um, so we're fortunate to hear that. Um, as far as our agencies, um, we have been very fortunate that our local partners have collaborated with us throughout this. Uh, they were we had multiple agencies from state level to local level that immediately responded to the scene. So all of our resources, excuse me, were pulled together almost instantaneously. And we had a, a pretty smooth transition from, from storm to uh, recovery and search. And, and Deputy Gibbons, as we're talking to you, we're looking at video from earlier of the tornado in the area. We understand that you guys were doing grid searches. Are you still doing that this evening? I believe that they've completed um, roughly 90 plus percent of those searches. Um, so basically what happens is once a storm goes through, <clears throat> excuse me, our crews will follow that path and just check um, structures as they go through. They will check addresses one by one uh, to see if there's any damage or anything we need to respond to. Deputy, it's Abigail again here. You know, I was talking with you back on April 19th when unfortunately you were the one to confirm that residents in, in your town had, had passed away in these tornadoes. And when we heard the words Cole and Goldsby and McLean County again tonight, um, our stomachs just dropped for you guys knowing that cleanup is still very much underway right now. You were talking earlier when, when I was texting with you about information that there were some homes that you weren't sure if they were damaged tonight or if they were damaged a month ago. So how has that convoluted the response? Because I know there's still so much damage left over from a few weeks ago. Uh, that, that does make it challenging because again, this hit us at nightfall. Um, we had some follow-up storms that came through that. So when our crews began the searches from the first event, um, we were hit with secondary events um, that made it real challenging. We've got some folks that are here assisting from other agencies that weren't here the first round. Um, so when they get to addresses, they're not sure if that happened today or if that was from the 19th. Um, so that in and of itself has been challenging, but our primary focus was to, uh, to rescue people if that was the need. Um, we will assess the, the damage part of it um, at daybreak, probably. Sure, of course, first and foremost, making sure everyone there is okay tonight. Quickly, who are some of the agencies that are, that are helping you guys this evening? Uh, I've seen uh, Light Horse PD, uh, Oklahoma Highway Patrol, uh, Newcastle PD um, here at the command center, um, and I believe we've had a couple of uh, state-level search and rescue teams that showed up, um, but luckily for us we didn't need to send them out deputy scott gibbons with the mclean county sheriff's office we appreciate you all the hard work and we are are grateful that this time the news is a little bit different than what yeah. we were unfortunately reporting back in april so deputy we appreciate you stay safe and he will continue to keep us posted especially after dealing with that widespread yeah. damage just a month ago they've already been through so much there yeah. I um, want to take a live picture now from Noble. We know it seems like Noble has been the hardest hit this yes. evening yes. after we've had several tornadoes tonight. Um, when our crews first arrived on scene after the tornado hit there in the downtown area of Noble, they spotted, you know, power lines over a road. I believe we have a live picture from that scene. Our crew has been standing by talking to people, and this is actually the one home that was hit in Noble. This is in a, a one block area um, over at Maine and Etowah. One home that was hit, but also some businesses hit in this one block area. At least that's what we're hearing from the police chief on scene. The good news is that no one was hurt. Um, and there have been no rescues, but as our crew um, kind of just pans across, you can see some of the emergency lights and really tomorrow. I mean, it's, it's late. It's evening time. It's dark. Tomorrow we'll better have a better idea of what the damage really looks like there. But you can certainly see some of the yeah. debris from this live picture.
So the Cleveland County, again, Noble is there in Cleveland County. The emergency manager told me that there were maybe a couple of homes that received damage. This, of course, looks to be the most significant. He also said at least two commercial buildings. That could mean a multitude of things, uh, you know, a shop, a restaurant, an office, commercial buildings, but no injuries reported in all of Cleveland County. That also includes Norman. We talked about those storms that were circulating over the Lake Thunderbird area, but no injuries and really no significant damage really reported at all in Norman. So for Cleveland County and for really most of the state, it appears there to be in Noble to be the worst of the damage minus that one house in coal that we just heard about. Which is, you know, it's it's actually amazing because it was, as we just heard Damon telling us uh, just a couple minutes ago, he's saying possibly 10, 15 tornadoes tonight. And it just shows how random they can be, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you could have one tornado that causes one way more damage than you have 10 to 15 uh, tornadoes that just doesn't do the same amount of damage. And as we are going around, we have crews, just so you know, if you're just joining us right now, we have crews stationed all over this this area from McLean County. I know that we have we have somebody that was uh, now moving into coal and was in a nearby town just before that looking for damage and and it's just not as widespread this yeah. time well and one thing that damon mentioned earlier the these were quick tornadoes they, they were on the down. ground and then they popped back up yeah. they may not have been on the ground as long as what we saw yeah. uh, last month when we also had what was it mm -hmm. 18 tornadoes officially i think yes. it was 12 at one point it went up to 18. and it took a long time to get to that number right? yeah. yeah and so now damon's already saying we, you know several tornadoes uh, this evening and, and good news this evening that we don't have significant damage sad for the people who do have damage to their their businesses mm -hmm. and their homes but it's not widespread absolutely and as as of right now no no loss of life right. and even no serious injuries that we've been told yeah. which is is quite remarkable when mm -hmm. we've had 10 to 15 tornadoes in the state here in Oklahoma um, chief meteorologist Damon Lane I know you're continuing to to watch these storms it sounds like we still have some tornado warnings firing in different parts of the state what are you seeing right now from from radar so what we see right now is so this tornado warning that we have right now that's going to be for for Pottawatomie County. That will drop off the map here in about the next 30 seconds or so. Now, happening just in the last minute, a brand new tornado warning was issued. However, it's moving away from all of us. It's going to be in extreme eastern Pontotoc County, and it's headed down to the east. And so that's going to stay well south of Holdenville, well south of Calvin. Now, Calvin, severe thunderstorm warning here, but this storm is going to make its way away from us. So, um, again, the, watching that cell right there, uh, making a run closer towards Kiowa and down towards McAllister. But otherwise, um, in the next couple seconds or so, probably no more than a minute, we'll see this tornado warning drop off. And so, again, the Weather Service uh, confirming that they are going to let this expire. However, we saw some storms that are ongoing out there, and we do still technically have a tornado watch that is in effect until 2 a.m. So definitely a, a the threat continues for a little while longer, but at least the the tornado watch and the reason for its extension was that there was at least one weather model that came in here not that long ago that said, hey, there might be some redevelopment down towards Lawton. It's a low chance, but it's still there, which is why the extension of the tornado watch now goes until 2 o'clock. So there you go. That tornado watch, or that tornado warning just dropped. It's now 11 o'clock. So uh, we are now at least in the KOCO5 viewing area. Tornado warning free for the first time since about 7 o'clock this evening. So this is the first time in four hours that in the KOCO5 viewing area, we are now tornado warning free. Still finding a little cluster of storms there. Some Shawnee down towards Brooksville and then a little bit of rain. That's not really much left out towards Seminole. But otherwise, storm down towards uh, south of Sasakwa. And that storm, I'll show you how that one is moving. Uh, so for those of you that are watching in extreme southern Seminole County, and even as you go in towards extreme southern uh, Hughes County, you can see... Uh, overall motion with that storm. I'll put it a little bit longer there. Um, you can see how that one continues to move to the east and uh, for the most part again will be moving away from us uh, as it continues to move uh, eventually towards the uh, Stonewall area and then down towards Colgate. And that right there is at least probably about it for the next little while. We'll continue to watch the threat closely but otherwise here we are watching these storms slowly dissipating across central Oklahoma. Back to you. All right, Damon, thanks very much. Let's check in once again with Elise Jones. She's uh, live for us tonight. And uh, Elise, you are there with some of the biggest uh, damage amounts that we've seen. Where are you right now? Well, we're told that this is the only home that was damaged here in Noble. You can see that the roof has just been torn apart. Some of that damage over here by these commercial buildings. One of them is a donut shop. 
One is a gas station. The roofs of both of those buildings also damaged. Now, those are two of four com commercial buildings that we're told were damaged, and we're told that this was the only home in the area that has been reported damaged, but it's unclear right now if there are more. They said that they um, have this command post set up for anyone to come report damage. Now, our photojournalist, Mark Frickland, actually spoke with the homeowner here right after the storm passed through, and he told him that his wife and his children were inside whenever the storm hit, but that nobody was injured. They all made it out safely. Now, they haven't been back here since we came back into town after uh, the second storm had passed through Noble, so we haven't been able to check on them, but he said that they were all safe and were okay, so that's just great news, especially considering, you know, just the damage done here. Now, there are some power lines down here. This is on Etowah Road and Main Street. Some power lines down, but we're told that this is the only block in Noble that has been affected um, with having no power. So also just great news. The police chief said that that truly is a miracle that they've had no injuries and that the damage here is just so minimal. So um, we'll just we'll stick around here and any other damage that we see, of course, we'll be sure to report to you and bring you the latest for now. Reporting live in Noble, Elise Jones, KOCO 5 News. At least thanks so much. And of course, as the sun comes up in the morning, as it always happens, we will see yeah. more damage than what we are seeing tonight. And obviously, we'll get a better idea of exactly the scope of tonight's weather event. Yeah, our crews will be out early in the morning. Our news gets underway at 430 and we'll have Sky 5 up uh, giving you the bird's eye view as well. So make sure you're with us and you also have the KSU app on your phone because we do still have the threat for storms into the overnight hours. We have had several tornadoes in the state of Oklahoma today. McLean County sustaining damage once again. Also Cleveland County there in Noble. You just saw our live shot. One home with significant damage and some commercial buildings as well. As Damon says, keep it with KOCO 5 News. We'll bring you the first alert. We'll be back. Did they huddle and go, wow, we're kind of getting into different territory here? And uh, yeah, apparently, uh, from my understanding, the story goes that uh, Kevin Feige talked to James Gunn and said, listen, you don't want